that it's trademarks? one of the best. Yeah. Uh, it Tra may be. The title is invalid. Try changing a bit. Might have hit the character limit. Maybe. Maybe they don't like ISIS. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me replace it with Diash and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that might work. Uh, my monitor feedback. Did it work? Uh, hang on. I don't have my headphones in yet. I said, no, Diash, fine. Hilarious. Change it everywhere then. Just change it. Oh, more people will be looking up ISIS though. That's a fair point. Oh, well, you could put, if we put, actually, if we put on. Um, ISK. No, no, no. Um, Russia uh, attack. Mm. That's better. I'm putting just putting Russia terrorist attack. At least for YouTube. I'm not going to go through and change it on all of them. Fair enough. You... Oh, we need to see what that says. Highest quality sport fucking potato. You will, you will not have peace. I have a piece of that. No, that's not my type. She's pretty. It's just my type is men. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. I'm, I'm not letting you pick out the opening it. videos anymore. Mm -hmm. You put that on there. <laughs> I did not put that on there. Just so we're clear. Huh. Look, that was that was shit. Because I've never seen it. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William. Kirk. It must this have been how... something that I um uh, right click added by accident or something. Maybe, maybe it might have been it. Uh, bad pick. Lucky there weren't many people here. <laughs> Kirk, thanks for joining us. Hey, earlier today, I sent a little uh, tweet out about this incident that's been hey, running rampant but out there in the Twitter. Hmm? Um, I said it does better when we open with Jenny Milk. Sphere, X Sphere, whatever we're calling it this week. Guy. And it involved these two female police. Fine, oh, you want to put whoa, Jenny whoa. Milk on? Yeah, yeah. Jen Jenny Milk, this is U.S. stuff. Mm-hmm. Without shit. Well, there's yeah, other police it. stories if we want to do police stuff. Oh, this was just more for the, because of the title. Oh, I I know. That's why I put it there. I didn't know oh. it was going to be this story, though. Um, mm. This is that one oh. where the sheriffs. This was a sheriff. Yes, that, that is actually pretty through. interesting. I was expecting I it to be. The, it uh, th this might the acting reel actually might have stuff that's claimed. Cool. So make Wait, sure just... make sure it's not TV or movie I, scenes just... he's doing, but like commercials. Mm -hmm. I'm just picking a different one. Yeah, yeah. Nine thirty-eight. Do you guys notice I'm on camera right now? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Why is it doing Where's this? Jenny? Where's Jenny? Jesus Christ! Do you guys notice I'm on camera right now? Yeah, for sure. That. I know. Just look closely. I have makeup free today. I have a red eye. I decided to grace you guys with my makeup myself, <laughs> you know. Here. Camera just cracked. Hurt? No, I, yeah, I mean, it does. Look closer. It's a little bit red there. Uh, I don't know what I did. Yeah. I just, like, smushed it. So I didn't yeah. want to put context in. Yeah. yeah. Well, enough that about me. <laughs> and then it was, like, pussing a little bit, oh, you know. jeez. I know, so I just didn't. This guy's a little bit too far. Yeah. This sure. isn't Jenny Milk. That's her son. Hey guys, I'm Kay. I am the former three-time champion of the Chicago League of Lady Arm Wrestlers. Uh, I'm going to show you what's up. Uh, hey she's Jenny. Arm wrestle, a traffic anchor. <laughs> Here we go. Let's do it. I'll <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to flip you over the counter. <laughs> oh, what's your secret? 
Alright, okay, so the secret is, as opposed to going right to push your opponent down, pull him in close. Because a shorter lover is stronger than a longer lover. So this is very homoerotic, I'm taking it. <laughs> See, this is a pretty dramatic place to this work. work. But to answer your question, I don't. Right. I think we will solve this one, actually. Gloria Alvarez. <laughs> no, that's too much, I think. It's not a clippy video, I think. Maybe we just go on to... Straight into the first one. And we'll do that. Um, let's do this one. Go away. Technical difficulties. Here we go. We're getting live updates from inside the courtroom, and it's actually getting quite testy in there, where the judge has just testy. raised his voice for the first time as he is pressing Trump's legal team about what is a pretty extraordinary allegation that they're the district attorney. Smug looking lady. Right. They have accused the district attorney's office oh, they're of outside. professional Good for misconduct, them. prosecutorial misconduct. They've even suggested Touch that they should be sanctioned. Work. And the judge said, look, that's a, quote, incredibly serious, unbelievably serious accusation. Not only are you accusing the prosecutor's office of misconduct, but you're also trying to make me, the judge, complicit in it. And he pressed the Trump legal team to come up with some case law, some specifics to support this allegation. Because the reason we're here today uh, for this hearing and not for the first day of the trial is that federal prosecutors handed over hundreds of thousands, or, excuse me, 100,000 documents. Now, that was not the Manhattan district attorney that did that. Those are federal prosecutors. So the judge here is pressing uh, the Trump attorneys on why you can accuse the Manhattan District Attorney's Office of prosecutorial misconduct because the Justice Department didn't hand something over. Now, the Trump attorneys argue that the District Attorney's Office should have pushed for these documents themselves. They should have asked for these specific materials, and they're having a pretty intense exchange now with the judge. Now, again, this is the first time the judge has really raised his voice, saying the fact that they don't even have any case law to support this very serious accusation is, quote, really disconcerting. So our colleagues tell us that the judge, Judge Juan Machan, he has been pretty level throughout the hearing, but he's gotten a lot more animated. And it's interesting because this shows that he's not going to tolerate just these throwaway accusations that someone is corrupt, Good. right, or that they're uh, engaging in misconduct. And he is holding their feet to the fire, asking for actual proof, support, case law for this accusation. So this is significant and maybe a preview of how the judge will handle this trial. And when Trump's legal team... I mean, that's pretty good sign. They, they All things don't considered. seem to actually think they're going to get it dismissed, even though they are asking for that and a, a delay if they don't get it dismissed. Uh, what was their tactic kind of going into this today when it came to uh, these documents? Because right now they haven't been able what to I tell miss. the judge. I had my volume down because I was catching the chinchilla. They'll have to review mm -hmm. before this case can proceed. What they wanted to do here is to try and explain that every single document that was turned over was relevant in some way. Because the more documents that are relevant of this 100,000, the longer that this trial will be delayed because then the legal team will have to actually Got the wrong to logo. that. So really the strategy here is how can we draw this out as long and as possible? As we've talked about, too. part of that is also, yeah. can we push this up close to the November election? They believe the closer this gets to November, the more difficult it's going to be to have a trial at that time, the more politically explosive it's going to be at that time. Really the other much. thing I wanted to point out here is one of the things that our colleagues These, are saying- uh, It's so funny how much they're milking this. Leaning back in his chair for <laughs> arms and looking at Todd Blanche. Todd Blanche has really become Donald Trump's favorite. The one interesting part was that they were talking about how the judge, <clears throat> every time Trump would do one of his stupid accusations or far-flung claims, he would be like, all right, prove it to everything, flip it or not. And I love that. Because <laughs> you're in a courtroom, you say something, fucking prove it. It'll shut him the fuck up, that's for sure, or it'll make him lose. So I support this. Yeah, that was what was funny with Alex Jones. She was like, "You need to stop lying. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a courtroom. This is real life." <laughs> lawyer of the lawyers that he has he believes that he's a fighter yeah, he believes that he's out there but this is interesting to see todd blanche having essentially a very tense moment with this judge donald trump really wants to see his lawyers pushing the envelope pushing for yeah. sanctions pushing yeah that's why they all go to jail really getting from mm -hmm. witnessing this right now listening to what questions the judge is asking is he is very skeptical of trump's yeah. allegations against uh, trump's legal team's allegations against the district attorney's office and, and essentially what he seems to be asking is is it the district attorney alan bragg's obligation to to get the Southern District of New York to get them to turn over 
these documents. And that's the heart of the disagreement here because the Trump no attorneys way. are saying, look, this was the district attorney's job. Yeah, I was trying to, I guess because that's a default one, I can't edit it. The judge is pushing back on it. that, saying, no, it's actually right. not. It tells them the people. You to represent make one the people like and it. Not, it's the people's job to do this. Um, and I think this is important because this is showing that the judge, not only is he upset at the fact that they made this accusation and cannot support it, uh, he's really showing how he's going to handle a criminal All right, ladies, come on. Trump legal team's eyes. Well, I'll tell you that they thought this was a huge win. I mean, just this delay till April 15th. They were fully 100% planning to start their trial today. They believe they were going to. They were planning a campaign schedule around it. They still are telling me that they're going to probably likely start the campaign for just Wednesdays and Saturdays, the days that they're not in court, because eventually this trial mm -hmm. is going to start. This was huge for them. They were happy about it. Now you're saying they're kind of pushing the envelope, and it sounds like the judge believes they're pushing the envelope here. Uh, but this was good for them, and they want to continue to do that because the whole goal is to push all those other trials past the election. All right, Kristen Holmes, Paula Reed, Jim, obviously what is clear and what we are getting out of the courtroom right now is that this judge is deeply skeptical about the claims being made by the Trump legal team. The big question, of yeah. course, is whether or not that affects when he sets that trial date and if he does so by the time they leave this courtroom today. Yeah, absolutely, Caitlin. Uh, let's continue to talk about this. Uh, here with me now, CNN Chief Legal Analyst Laura Coates, CNN Chief Domestic Correspondent uh, Phil Mattingly, and CNN Senior Legal Analyst and former federal prosecutor Ellie Honig. I mean, Laura, I mean, just to dive into what they were talking about a few moments ago, I mean, the judge kind of going after the defense team a few moments ago, saying you are literally accusing the Manhattan DA's. All right, we're, we're done with this one. What a doofus. In a win for former case. President Donald Trump in New York appeals court sharply reduced the nearly half a billion dollar bond in a civil fraud case to $175 million. And the former president now has 10 days to come up with that money. The ruling comes on the same day that the former president was in court as a judge set an April 15th trial date in the criminal hush money case against Mr. Trump. NBC's Alice Barr has the new details. A victory and a setback today for Donald Trump in his New York legal fights. A judge ruling jury selection can begin April 15th in the hush money case against the former <laughs> president, rejecting his legal team's request for another delay and setting him on track for his first criminal trial, just as the 2024 campaign is ramping up. What they do is they do election interference, which is court cases and... Wait, is that... Did they say criminal? Is it the, these are the first of the criminal ones? Um, I think so. I'm I'm doing an edit layout. My contract okay. is really it's irritating. <laughs> yeah, let's try and tie him up and let's take as much of his money as possible. Legal analysts say the case is about election interference, but that former President Trump is not the victim. Rather, he's accused of falsifying business records to hide a hush money payment to cover up an alleged affair with a porn star before the 2016 <laughs> election. It's about an effort to pull the wool over the eyes of, of voters. Why would you cover that, that they up? didn't have access to important information about a candidate. Mr. Trump denies the allegations. I would have no problem testifying. I didn't do anything wrong. Hoggers! An appeals court reduced the bond. Former President Trump has to pay in his New York civil fraud case for more than $450 million down to $175 million. And instead of paying up today or risking having his assets seized, he has an extra 10 days to come up with the money. The former president said he will pay it. And we'll post whatever is necessary, whether it be cash or security or bonds. The Trump legal team working to appeal a judge's ruling from February that found Mr. Trump liable for lying about his wealth to get better deals from hmm. lenders. In I did everything Bar right and they indicted me. When pressed by reporters, the former president says that he thought it would be possible to borrow the money from a foreign entity, but that he wouldn't need to because he says he has plenty of cash. <laughs> You mentioned the cash you have instead of finding something like 500 million. You intend yeah. to put some of that in the campaign. Now the bond's been reduced. Are you going to start putting money in your campaign? Yeah. Since yeah. 2016? Well, first of all, it's none of your business. I mean, frankly, but uh, I'm not, I might not your do business. I'd have the option. But if I have to spend 500 million on a bond, I wouldn't have that option. I'd have to start selling things. I don't have to Why sell is anything. he? Is it only me or does he look like he's I'd wearing have... very pale lipstick? <laughs> He's just a bizarre looking guy, man. <laughs> Spend a lot of money on my campaign, but I should have that option. A crooked judge shouldn't say, we're going to have you post the bond and take all of that money that I could be spending on the campaign or other things if I want to do other things. Uh -huh. We want to bring in CNN's Kristen Holmes uh, to fact check that because, Kristen, when Trump first made that claim on social media last week, saying that he had enough money to cover at the time, the four hundred and sixty plus million dollar bond. Oh my God! Is this really what they're fact checking? That, saying he's not exactly that liquid, right? 
Yeah, look, he, he actually is liquid enough for the $175 million. As far as we can tell from every assessment we've seen of his finances, all the records that he's had, uh, he is roughly 300 to $400 million. But that, a lot of that is still not completely liquid, uh, but mm -hmm. it would likely cover this $175 million. The other part of this is the underwriters who said that they would only qualify, they would only underwrite a bond for $100 million. A lot of that because of precedent. Well. People did not have or had never underwritten a bond that was half a billion dollars. That is an enormous amount. Uh, what I want to specify here and point out, one of the things we've been talking about about this New York civil fraud case for the last several months has been how critical this is and how much this really plays to who Donald Trump is. The reason he's been there is because it goes to his identity, his core, his brand. You have never heard him be so personal, so angry, and so public about that until today. Today, over and over and over again, saying that he was rich enough, that he built a great company. One day, someone reported how great his company is, saying he had so much cash on hand, how good his brand was, several times saying how many different properties he had, how in New York he had built up an entire a conglomerate. He is defending what he believes is the core of his identity and being. It is what he ran on in 2016. It is what uh, helped propel him to the White House, this idea that he was this billionaire, this wealthy businessman. And you heard him tripling down on that today. That is the kind of stuff when we are reporting that he is privately angry, that he has been ranting about this. What you saw today was that. he just mm -hmm. Trump's always angry. He's always mad. Fucking hell. Why? CNN is just annoying. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Gorka. Talking of your, your picks, I've been told who you are considering as vice president. I've been told I can't announce it until it's official. Uh, when are you thinking of making that announcement, sir? No hurry. And, and it, there is no one person. I mean, I, I'll say it, there are numerous people. Donald Trump insinuated that right wing interviewer Sebastian Gorka is lying about knowing who Trump is going to select for his vice president. This is absolutely fascinating to hear. Once again, for those who are not familiar with Sebastian Gorka, I envy you. I wish. How does he get a seven minute video from a five second clip? I oh, really shit, hope there's more. I really hope there's more. Uh, I mean, I David familiar with some talks a lot. Mm. Sebastian Gorka, but I am. Sebastian Gorka has been saying for weeks that he has been told who Trump's vice presidential running mate is going to be. He sort of tries to mention that as a flex during an interview with Trump on the Salem News Network. And Trump effectively says that it's a lie by saying, I haven't decided yet. There's no way you could possibly know that. I know we Trump got politely that. saying to Gorka, but there is a but here. Let's take a listen to this clip first, and then I'll, I'll tell you more about it. Uh, talking of your, your picks, I've been told who you are considering as vice president. I've been told I can't announce it until it's official. Uh, when are you thinking of making that announcement, sir? In no hurry. And, and it, there is no one person. I mean, I, I'll tell you, it, there are numerous people. But uh, we have a lot of great people in the Republican Party. We have a lot of great people that nobody ever heard of in the Republican Party. Uh, so Gorka says, I've been told who it is. We and got Trump that. says, there isn't a who it is because I haven't uh -huh. actually decided. Now, the only problem with this God, man, is Trump also has politics, said he already decided. Bro. Can we go back to I, the I, CNN? I back to this God January, damn. <laughs> because when Trump said it, I said to you. Whoa, Trump this, said it. Crazy. Because Trump may be lying here because later on, after this January 10th moment, Trump said, I'm considering lots of people. But Trump did say on Fox News months ago that he knew who it was going to be. I guess that was a lie. Remember this? Let me just ask you a follow up on that about who would be in your in your cabinet, in your administration. Mm -hmm. If you are the nominee, which I know you expect to be, who would be in the running for a vice president? Well, I can't tell you that, really. I mean, I know who it's going to be. Give us a hand. I'll give you. We'll do another show sometime. Well, I know who it's going to be. Yeah. Trump well, now denies it. So was Gorka told something crazy? I don't know. Had that Trump chosen Trump someone in January, but making shit up on the spot to make him seem like he always has a plan and always has it figured out. Crazy. He's folding steps ahead. Oh my God. He's playing 1, 2, 3, oh D my chip. God. This changed like, his this mind. Really, was... like, you know, the George Carlin joke where he's like, think of the dumbest guy you know. And like half of the people are dumber than that guy. <laughs> You know, like that's the old joke is like how stupid people truly are. Yeah. Trump lying in January. I don't know. But in any case, Trump insinuating there that Gorka is just making it up. Trump continuing the fear mongering. Trump saying if he does not become the next president of the United States, the United States is going to end. It will no longer be a country. Oh, you know, is it hang on. Day, in my opinion, you know who said that? Jack, you know uh -huh. who said something exactly like that? Huh? Charlie Cook, wasn't it? No, come on. Where is it? I can't even remember what it's called. 
what? Head to barbarism if the left wins. Oh my you god! You okay. will live uh, in barbarism. Period. Oh. It is a fight for civilization. Whoa! I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, it's still yeah. on the same sentiment. But now, mm. who who said if I'm not president, there is no country? Oh, Hitler. Yeah. Mm. Correct. Pretty cool. Country. If we don't win this election, we don't win it. We are going to. I think possibly cease to be a country. I think it's going to be just some mm-hmm. really horrible things. It's going to be over, folks. If Trump doesn't win, the country is over. Now, it just so happens <clears throat> that in the first term, let's see if Pacman picks up on this. Of Joe Biden, we have low unemployment. No, because he won't do. So he he's like uh, because he s- swings to the specific catering of liberal that just is like, mm. oh, these lefties, they call everyone they don't like fascist, you know, mm. which is like an intro to the alt right pipeline. Mm-hmm. So, like, for him, he refuses to call people, like, bad names or fascists or things like that. So he's not going to connect it to Hitler because Hitler, yeah. he's so good faith about everything and, mm-hmm. like, how he does his th- thing. Naivety. Intentional naivety, it seems. Uh-huh. Sure projects generating new jobs, record Arguably job creation. Well. More Americans have health care than ever before. GDP growth looks good. Wage growth is outpacing inflation. That's the first term of Biden. For some reason, we are to believe that a second Biden term would effectively end the United States. Pretty wild. <laughs> yes, because Trump the, then because he's because because the blood of the country will be tainted with the migrant influx that the Republicans mm-hmm. are currently stalling and making the worse. Spirit, the spirit of the country will be dead. It will no longer yeah. be the United States. <laughs> Union workers, if you vote against Trump. You aren't. Smart. Oh no! You mean the <laughs> nation that you United stole Order from Order other Order people Order. is going to get stolen <laughs> from you? <laughs> Hell, I run it. Oh, <laughs> and are they closer related to descendants of uh, the people who first inhabited these countries? <laughs> My bay. If any auto worker voted against Trump, they are they are not the smartest people. Is this a good strategy? If Jews vote for Democrats, right. Trump recently Strategy. said they are voting for their own destruction. If union members vote for Democrats, they're dumb. If black people vote for Democrats, they're ignoring how great things were for black people. You remember when Biden was like, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. That was fun. That was pretty funny. <laughs> That's basically what Trump's doing, but with everything. <laughs> Under Donald Trump. And then we get to. This is the this is what we've been building towards. Uh-huh. He did it in 2020 and he's doing it again. I'm so excited, David. Democrats built will try it to for steal so long. 2024. <laughs> Haven't we heard this already? Are you confident that this election at least will be secure and fair? So they're going to try and rig it. I have no doubt about it. Uh, they've been doing it for years. And and look, how can you win an open borders, high interest rates, a woke military, all the things that they talk woke about? Military, all, bro. All all electric cars. How about all, all electric cars? Oh, woke military. So much of them made in China. How do you do that? So how can they win with what they do? The policies are so bad. The thing they do best is cheating at elections and misinformation. So listen, in 2020, <laughs> starting over the summer. You see this comment? Donald Trump what started the saying, fuck? I don't even. Can you, can you process what this even says? There will be no elections. Lefties will create another crisis canceling to resume the evil power they possess. Okay, bro. Like what? So we can start killing this, the process. No, my God, that's not what this is about. Hang on, is this supposed to be a riddle? <laughs> is this is, that's why it's phrased <laughs> like this? I know. My resolution: airstrikes, bomb them, bomb them, keep bombing them, bomb them again Work. and again. Democrats, I have no idea. Steal this election. And it was Trump who tried to steal the election and thankfully he failed. (laughs) Now he's starting with Democrats are going to try to rig the election. We should understand that as I am going to try to rig the election, (laughs) I being Donald Trump. That's the message I'm getting from this. And the allegations are admissions Mm. seemingly. And he's telling it to us again. And by the way, what a wacky interviewer that Sebastian Gorka just teeing up easy questions. Oh my God, I Trump fucking hate this easier. guy so much. And Trump's bro. still managing to mangle the responses in such a way that he comes off as a clueless dictator. He implied that he's going to the, the election's going to be Let's take a very again. quick break. Okay. What's going on? Just keep going with Packham. 
Welcome, everybody. No. We had more primary <laughs> yes. elections last night. They are wholly irrelevant to who will be the nominee for each of the two parties. We know this? that Joe Biden and Donald Trump will be the nominees. But there was Five a very, days. very cool. interesting data point yesterday in Florida. Despite dropping out of the Republican primary race weeks ago, Nikki Haley still got more than 150,000 votes in the Florida Republican. Here's something, current. Let's watch. Is Joe Biden's bid for re-election in trouble? At the time for old men, it just isn't. I definitely think they overlook the achievements of the Biden administration. What is happening right now is an act of genocide. I feel like it's, it's time for something new, but it is what it is. With a seismic election looming, there's growing unease in the Democratic it's Party. It's time for Early something new. Wavering support for Joe mm -hmm. Biden. Concerning to be behind Donald Trump at all, certainly by five points. God, his face is years okay. wing. And there's an electorate tied of the same yeah. two older men. Well, this it's might be a Hassan re-uploader. Yeah. I've come to Michigan, a vital swing state, to see for myself. And he's is gone. Biden's coalition of voters faltering. Epic. Layla El Abed is one of the founders of the uncommitted campaign. See, it's definitely edited. He's already just back. Just a few weeks ago, <laughs> they were aiming for 10,000 uncommitted votes, roughly Trump's margin of victory here in 2016. And they got it. We're here to tell Joe Biden that we do not want our American taxpayer dollars funding the bombs that are killing. <laughs> we have a state the torture Trump. background. Cease fire what now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. We went for coffee in her home suburb of Dearborn. 55% of residents are Arab American. So you guys put a lot of faith in your vote last time, and if I'm getting it right, feels like that didn't necessarily pay off. No, not at all. Um, I remember in 2020 asking my family members, asking my friends, um, really pushing the support around Biden. But right now, our American taxpayer dollars going to to support weapons that are killing Palestinians every single day in the thousands, and we need to put that pressure on Joe. Biden. Question. If their arms sales is a taxpayer dollars? Uh, yes, because we still do the like relief funding, right? Because like there's already stockpiles, like uh, like because like sure. money they it's money they money they can spend on those missiles are money that we already uh, paid for interceptors with, right? It's right. just freeing up capital at one one link down the chain. Right. Any type of aid is uh, inevitably enabling. Mm -hmm. So it's a laundering scheme. America. I mean, yeah. I mean, is, look, you know, like uh, Israel. Israel buys weapons from America and gets the money back, and then endless circle. You know, like when they um they just did the uh unfrozen assets for Iran. That was mm -hmm. oil assets, mm -hmm. right? And they said that's pretty. That's pretty we have funny ways idea. to make sure they won't spend it on weapons, but have to spend it on like food and stuff. And like mm -hmm. I was like explaining then how stupid that line is from the state department because it's mm -hmm. just freeing up dollars that they would have spent on food mm. to go to weapons like yeah like how do you like money is like liquid like <laughs> it doesn't just replace it or go away right to, to change course right now if the uncommitted vote continues into november during a general election could well hand Donald Trump Michigan and maybe even the White House. How would you feel if that happened? We know that Donald Trump is not a friend to our community, but right now Joe Biden is in a place of power to change course. And we are not the ones that should be held accountable for that. It is Joe Biden and his administration. And right. We will have to answer to that question come November if that's the case. She's right. This whole thing Back in where Flint, it's like, came to meet the local county. The, if it's people who don't vote, or people who vote third party, it's their fault the candidate lost. Oh, you know, people voted for the Green Party and yet Hillary lost. No. Mm -hmm. Hillary wasn't a good enough candidate to win. Period. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden, if, if Joe Biden wants the votes, he's got to get them. Yeah, he's got to make the decisions and the changes. But we'll see. Tea Party at a union hall where members were holding a chilly cook-off. Biden took an unprecedented step last year and joined Michigan auto workers on the picket lines calling yeah, for fairer wages. Huge. Many mm. people here Getting are long-time union workers. Is, is, so we came expecting real enthusiasm. Was a big this is not the time for all coalition to get behind him. Yeah, it's massive. And especially going over on over the, the train workers. Mm. Old men. It just isn't. It's dangerous to anoint somebody. Damn. That's what Damn. we did with the Hillary campaign. And Damn. there again, I feel like that's what we've been doing again. We need more voices to combat. Damn, him. they're a cooking them. Man. I feel like it's it's time for something new, but it, it is what it is. So it's like I think I saw online many Arab Americans talking about voting for Trump because they think that Trump would help the Palestinians with what's going on. Yeah, um, I don't 
I don't know if this is like I don't I haven't seen this uh, translated to like real results because if that was the case they wouldn't have done Twitter's not a real place moving on uh, voted for Trump in these like what they said Twitter's not a real place moving on anecdotal I saw online uh, shit is what we're discussing mm -hmm. now example take a hardline position on israel trump has said a bunch of stuff about how biden doesn't love israel no longer for example in recent days he started taking a more active role as right. chuck schumer he came literally out said out against benjamin if, Netanyahu. if you don't trump vote for me you're not trump. jewish to the news media to be like biden doesn't love israel as much as i do however the greatest way to showcase the differences between Joseph Robin and Biden and Donald Trump so would be annoying, to take an active mm -hmm. stance to show the people that you are in favor of a ceasefire, for example, or just like, you know, to, to genuinely take actions. See, that's, uh, that honestly, are here's the thing, Israel like phrasing it that campaign. way. Of course, he's in favor of a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. He's like, come on, do you really think he's up there like, I want the war to continue? Like, that's not the issue. The issue is not his support for the ceasefire. Like, he, like they yeah. obviously support it. It's what they are willing to sideline as their own, like, position just to, like, maintain, like, a fucking friendly mm -hmm. relationship with somebody. Because ultimately, they're just going to say whatever, you know, Whatever they're yeah. supposed to say. They, they have to fucking tiptoe around to all that shit all the time. They can't just fucking say shit. So that the Unless Trump it's campaign Russia. can turn around and say, well, yeah. our position is different. That's the issue here. So I don't even know if this is real because, you know, you saw online. No. I don't know if this is a real thing that is happening. But if it was real, okay, if it was real, then it is still the fault of the Democratic Party because thinking that the voters are making like reasonable decisions i know who can fix the problem and that Actually, dynamo the of energy and excitement is jared stupid. kushner That's not why or how people buy cereal even okay you have to sell We're talking about cereal why people should vote for you i already we said this completely remember when i said this way long ago politically and to sons cereal. just getting there no, 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 no. Just it's the it's Joe Biden's fault if people don't vote for, uh, him, for him. Yeah, yeah. Declined audiences, especially. He, this is he's a like phenomenon that I see me. in these circles <laughs> more than anywhere else. We've dropped the notion the Democratic Party is supposed to try to win your vote. We are so used to people voting for the Democratic Party uh, as a, as a matter of harm reduction. It's a matter of principle. I, th I this so is another thing. They continually the say this is a thing. Mm. Harm reduction. Meaningless nonsense term. Meaningless. Like the Republican Party, even under Bush, was not terrible, and they invaded mm. a, a fucking Iraq. You know. Yeah. Like the party itself was not that bad. Hmm under bush and like the government was fairly functional yeah it's just become idolatry at this point it's the, because not even Trump. politicians it not started even with the politicians it was literally you know what it is it's because we got a black president and it really broke mm. racists right because mm. that's how the tea party came in response to obama right yes. and that's when you get the ted cruises in there mm-hmm which it starts that starts getting fringe and then Ted Cruz opens up the pathway to Trump. Yeah. Like Ted Cruz was the top of the party and got usurped at the last second by Trump. Mm -hmm. That was pretty funny. Imagine Ted Cruz as president. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. Like I don't like I don't think he would be bad and when I mean when I say that it's like I think it would just he, be another president. I wouldn't. It's not that I would agree with his decisions. 
but he would, I think he would be at least be, you know, he's the type of guy who's going to go golfing when the nation's at crisis, you know, like he goes <laughs> to Cancun when his state's in a crisis. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we know what we're going to see. We're going to see like big tax, tax cuts for the rich, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. The Democratic Party, what the f do you mean that people just don't even consider how people vote anymore in a country where the plurality doesn't vote for either party? They just don't vote. You can't force Trump into taking a position. Trump will merely say this would have never nice. happened if I were president. And mm -hmm. I could end this in a day with a phone call without specifying how and his vote or followers would eat it up. Yes. The difference, however, is that if Trump does start making more and more statements about how different his opinion is from the Biden campaign and Biden actually shows the Arab like for example, in America if he does care about them at like all. Like uh, Biden does. McCain, I wasn't old enough to vote back then. Mm. Or not Biden McCain, Obama McCain, right? Mm. I wasn't mm. old enough to vote back then. But I thought McCain was the better choice. I fucking hate John McCain. <laughs> and I still stand by he would have been the better choice than Obama. Obama was awful. Awful. The things he did in foreign policy yeah, the more you learn about him, the worse. The yeah, worse it gets. Trump's Trump's incompetence really held him back. <laughs> the voters will make and like up the their fact own that I minds. think Obama's worse than you can cannot... tortured people. Mm. <laughs> Continued on Bush, what Bush started <laughs> made it worse, escalated, it. created ISIS. Yeah, well, no, he did what he basically pulled out. That was the. He pulled mm. out and said, okay, fuck you. Goodbye. Did he fuck over the Kurds as well? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm. all everyone out has. There's, there's, everyone? Oh, oh yeah, they? they always do. The Kurds are not technically our allies. Yeah, they're just, you know, a they're just like for the American I mean, Empire. If you think about like militia groups that like the U.S. Mm. backs, it's very rare that they do it. Okay. Right? But like there are ones that they do. Mm-hmm. There are, you know, those state dollars do go to some of these groups. Uh, he's not so going to lose any property voters. as of right 2020 now. 2020 had the highest voter turnout in almost 100 um, years. Oh, hmm, I wonder if they were going to, the thing that they were going to take first was one of his like 50 golf courses in New York City. <laughs> there was uh, another thing that happened in 2020. That uh, called... It would have been great if they took his golf courses and turned them into public lands. <laughs> just completely re pulled them up from being golf courses and just turned them into public land. That'd be great. <laughs> public park land. <laughs> Universal ballot access and mail-in votes that may have greatly improved the number of people that ended up voting because the number of people that ended up voting was also much higher on uh republican side too trump literally had a muslim ban oh my god i'm losing my mind trump is not currently the president brandon is brandon is the one that is responsible for the genocide in gaza no, His he's not. issues are that he is directly continuing trump it's so crazy on israel it's like they have to like make everything it's like america did this they have to tie it because they can't think they're so restrained in their thinking that they literally can only process things in like an American centric lens where America is so what stupid. does everything. This is why it was so easy for Asadis to convince people mm -hmm. that the destruction yep. of the country was caused by America. Mm -hmm. When you told my rat Marguerite that she was probably the greatest rat of all time. Well, her self-confidence has been way up since then. Thanks. I would like to reaffirm my commitment to the rat Marguerite as possibly the greatest rat of all time congratulations uh now a couple months in a row you have been declared possibly the greatest rat of all time i'm talking like what's that like higher than charles who cares and cheese higher than mickey mouse higher i hold you to a higher you esteem than Chuck e. cheese's government uh, name than ratatouille <laughs> maybe not stuart he has little the best stuart little's kind of the goat 
He's yes. a mouse. I think it's difficult to have a unknown name and a grassroots campaign. You named all and those rats that ended with a seeking. fucking mouse. You I think idiot. there's just, just barriers in place that make it difficult. Fragile coalition, right? You ever forget that frogs are not reptiles and they're amphibians? Shown age numbers that is Trump leading they're amphibians. No, I never forget that. Poll, <laughs> like I've had one of those blank moments moly. of you, like I'm thinking of toads. You know, I'm thinking of toads and I'm like, oh wait, toads are amphibians. Yeah. One, I don't really know what other animals are amphibians, though. It's only really frog. I don't know what the other ones are. Uh, newts. Sure. Axolotls. Okay. It's very random. Amphibians have, like... Um... Gills and lungs, I think. No, they, if they have a porous skin. They absorb anything through their skin. Ah, uh, okay. So they're, like, extremely susceptible to toxins. That's mm -hmm. why the that's why the frogs turn gay, because they're so susceptible to the, being affected by toxins. And uh, you know, Jurassic Park, they put frog yes. DNA in there, which is mm -hmm. an amphibian. They mixed an amphibian with a reptile. That doesn't seem yeah. very smart. Well, the new ones that they they put cuttlefish DNA in now it um it camouflages. That's, well, that's stupid. Yeah, it is dumb. <laughs> it's a it's a pretty entertaining movie though because uh, they engineer dinosaurs and shit and kills people. Salamanders are also amphibians. Uh, salamanders are cool. That's what we were. That's what we were forgetting about them. I, you okay. get the big ones. Yeah, giant salamanders. All young people aren't in line with the prevailing research in the field. Most individuals. What is this? FAU mainstream happiness thermometer. They, uh, yeah, Gender with our country, pretty much. Ain't changing with our country. They're um, they're gay filters. What are gay filters? <laughs> frogs. Oh yeah, because they turn gay. Mm -hmm. Frogs are gay filters. They get the gay out of your water. <laughs> Bro, what <laughs> the fuck is Ashley this Pruitt, frog that I just found? Was counting up the final votes for the cookout. Oh, Bro. This 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 is one of those animals that you know it's a rare once in a lifetime you know <laughs> like it's like a blobfish you know it's like there's only like yes. one fish that's that stupid looking right mm -hmm. this frog is the dumbest looking frog I have ever seen ever <laughs> it looks like a um uh, mall. I think they that's probably they, what they are. They're underground frog frogs. Mall. Frog mall. Mall frog. Put mine back up. Put mine back up. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, sorry. You can't do it yourself. I am just starting nope. to I was looking at, at the videos. You do the background. Can I ask you about stuff? another Well, I was looking at other amphibians. Uh, in November. Because I don't know what uh, this thing is. I don't here. know how to say its <laughs> name, right? But it's like... Spell it? Uh, C-A-E-C-I-L-I-N. Oh, it's a, a, a quell account or something like that. It's a, like a rockfish, basically. It's super interesting. There's no fucking way that's an amphibian. Yeah, this worm looking thing. What the fuck? Crazy. So there actually seems to be quite a lot of ambivalence about his candidacy. I just wonder if you're bracing for an uphill battle in November. I am aware of the, you know, the current kind of pushback that he's getting. Um, I'm aware of the, you know, the push to vote uncommitted by some. I don't think um, for certain demographics he's not. I think their favorite choice, but I'm hoping that people will understand that if and when Joe Biden. It's cool. That it is basically the basically the same energy as the Biden campaign, which is very dangerous. Biden gets the nomination that he's going to be our candidate, and I'm hoping that they realize that the alternative is just not not feasible. And I just want to say, everybody's chili here is somebody's favorite. It looks like so. Every, every chili got at least some point. So. Yeah. <laughs> All my Michigan Muslim friends are voting Trump because of genocide. Well, good luck uh, if they think that Trump is going to be better on. Um, yeah, that's a bad choice uh, on the issue of, of Palestine or just Muslims in general. They're just wrong. Objectively, I'm not going to sit here Bro, and tell you. You mean you to say to that genocide. you doubted, no, but make no mistake.
that this was an amphibian? That is not what I was thinking. You were thinking of a coelacanthus, the fish. Sure. Yeah. The ancient fish. Yeah. No, this is the penis snake thing. Oh, okay. I mean, look at that thing. Yeah. Yuck. It's exactly like a penis. Absorbs shit through the skin. <laughs> Infections and shit. Poison. <laughs> Devil. Definitely <laughs> the fault of Joseph Robinette Brandon, but it is there's another party involved there that is infinitely more responsible, and that is the people who did it. Donald Trump. How will Biden be better? This doesn't mean this is a really is bad take be per se. I'm just simply stating that Donald expert, Trump's bro. actions. This might be one of his worst Brandon takes. Administration this is really bad. On, as it pertains to this Israel, is really bad. I've been listening. Exactly I was learning about how we amphibians. Got to begin with. It's really the bad. Is, it's real bad. The Democratic Party is not doing enough to showcase the differences between Joseph Robinette Biden and Donald Trump. Maybe you're just and more too French for them to even appeal for exactly your votes. Exactly how. They will because what, this, what, but actually, what you, you people know, like Hassan actions, need to realize is party's... that you know they say it all the time it's like both parties are liberal, mm. yeah. So, who do you think is easier for the fucking Democrats to get you or another liberal? Probably the regular libs, right? Like, the, the people who are deciding election aren't fucking communists, they're like a few thousand people in like Michigan. Actually, yeah. Minnesota, you know, they're definitely going to go blue. So you could say there's some, mm. they're communists who vote there. <laughs> but like, it's going to go blue regardless. It's not a deciding yeah. state. When's that Civil War movie coming out? Oh, it's already out in, because uh, um, it's at South by. So I've oh. already uh, looked at reviews and stuff for it. Mm. Um, good. Or... That's good, but um, it's, uh, suffers uh, uh, with something that Alex Garland tends to suffer with too okay. too many like characters because remember how like I, that's the thing that I was criticizing about Annihilation how the one mm -hmm. girl um, she like spelt stuff out that she like cut herself and stuff yeah and I'm like it should have been implied and the other one who's gay right they, I was mm -hmm. like she was clearly already implying that she was gay it didn't need to be spelt out mm -hmm. and just say, things like that like the the way they developed characters i thought was a little too obvious in annihilation so i guess there's some of that type of stuff that it's it's interesting you say that because um uh um what's the, the, the ai movie. one what's the ai movie uh ex machina a ex machina stop fighting characters yeah and it is one I mean, of well, the best so, movies like, i've 20, ever seen 28 days later that he wrote also, also has same. very limited yeah. characters yeah and they're both fantastic what? movies. So that's very he, interesting that you say that. Uh, he also did Sunshine, which only is like mm. on a ship, right? Yeah. Because they're going to restart the sun. Man. I haven't seen it. God, if the, he did Halo like he was meant to, that would have been so good. There's like four characters in Halo, realistically. <laughs> so that would have been fantastic. Oh, that's so disappointing. But also, just the fact that just... like... Um, was it? It's it Jackson and Del Toro who are also going to be attached. I know it's Jackson. I just yeah, it was someone, someone like that. I think it was Del Toro directing. No, no, no. It's um Neil Blomkamp. He was That's the one right. who directed and just did District Nine, and yeah. Garland was writing. God, that would have been so good. Oh, it would have been so good. It would have been so good. And because they also have that level in Africa as well, that would have been perfect. He's based in South Africa. They could have gotten um, what, the what's Battle the of New Mombasa. M Mombasa, yeah. They could have done that. That would have been, that just, would have been sick. Yeah, because like um, you know what's interesting is like in the game, like doesn't does the battle just like it continues when the ship leaves? Like the Covenant are still invading Earth. No, I'm pretty sure they gloss it. <laughs> Earth? 
No, just that city. I'm pretty sure they glassed the well, city. Well, no, like, the, like ship the, the, the ship warped. The ship warped. Ah, that's right. Remember? And, sorry, and... I'm thinking of Reach. Reach is the one where you're in the helicopter and they're glassing the city. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I'm so like, yeah. Reach. So the thing is, is that, but I think like it was just that ship though, the the mm -hmm. capital ship. But I think they were still invading Earth. Yeah, they were trying to. I think they actually fought them off. If I'm thinking about it. Well, that's what you're kind of doing. Yeah. But I thought they kept fighting on Earth, and like you do the whole story and come back to Earth, and it's that's when you're coming back. To Halo Earth Three, to yes. So yes, I think yes, the Kevin are still on Earth by the end of yes. two. So you, so if that's the case, you could basically make it where it's not even about Master Chief, but the Marines that are still on Earth holding the Covenant mm. back because they did yeah. that little movie for it onto Dawn. So good. Oh, I didn't see it, but I loved and, it. it like, they also have a little movie. They have a little live action movie short that they do about um, Nightfall. Yeah, Sergeant Johnson when they do in the third game. It wasn't Johnson. They... It was um, Locke. Okay. Lock. So he like sees him, you know, but he gets him. Like he detects him falling to earth, and they find the armor lock on him. Oh, you mean in the game? Yeah. No, there's a yeah, live right. action thing. Oh, that they shot it's a short that. yeah there's tons of halo shorts and stuff interesting okay so it, it's like it's actually really good like uh mm. like it's done like um on a low budget with like practical effects and stuff <laughs> and they acquire them at, it's like rogue one they require them at the last yeah. second and die basically and that's like and that's like it in because like Halo three kind of just starts and you're like wait what's going on yeah, they kind of so just like there. this little thing was like an uh intro thing that like ah, a pre interesting story, but like there's that whole section that you could mm -hmm. do. True, there, there's so much, even just from the core games, there's so much that they could do. I mean, well, the majority of the two and three game companies, Earth, they're the worst companies yeah. that exist, bro. They really All right, let's move on from Hassan because we paused on him long enough, yeah. It's Microsoft's fault that it didn't. Um, what do we got? Where's the Russia stuff in Globe? No, it's in Russia. Okay. It's in Russia and Ukraine. There's a lot of stuff in there. Okay. I will give it a search. Okay. Haunted objects all around the globby. Okay, then. Way to go, bro. Across Russia, a national day of mourning, following what President Vladimir Putin now calls Careful. a total bloodbath. <laughs> At least 137 Nothing happening here. <laughs> with mounting questions about the group who claimed responsibility, the Islamic State Khorasan, known as ISIS-K. And the risk of attack emanating from Afghanistan is increasing. No. I no, hang ISIS on. Corson retains Who the is capability. Doing this report? The National Desk. Okay, first of all, why would it be the Islamic State of the Iraq of Iraq and Syria or Iraq and Levant? Mm. Khorasan. It's just Islamic State of Khorasan. It's I S K, not ISIS K. It's either, yeah, they, yeah. You know, like yeah, it's I S K. Yeah, like even at like um, the Daesh, it's specifically mainly the Syrian and Iraq version. Mm. And the will to attack U.S. and Western interests abroad in as little as six months with little to no warning. An eerie warning from the commander ah, of U.S. Central Command. Nothing Command happening here. Just before nothing the happened. massacre Fuck. in Russia. But after U.S. shared intelligence That's with fine. Russia, advising residents to stay away from large gatherings, including concert venues. Which it was initially a dismissed. Kia. Lawmakers warning the next ISIS-K attack could hit much closer to home. You mean CIA? Beyond Russia and Iran, they would love to do what they did in Moscow here inside the United States. The home base of the terror group. I love this. You see, it's cut. It's cut. Uh, cut out paper. Their flag. 
Mm, yes. Right? Because they, they can import a fucking flag and get caught. So they literally fucking did... Like imagine, mm-hmm. imagine these guys going to the craft store and buying the black construction paper and the white construction paper and cutting out all the shapes to make their flag. It's so funny. It's very, very funny. Who is? Who oh, are they? Hang on. They... Because I, I, I know who this flag is. I want to see who they're identifying these guys as in the B roll. The whole. You were saying though before we continue. I can't remember. Okay, it's fine. Okay, go for it. Great flag. Home base of the terror group, also back in the spotlight with multiple. Oh, that's right. The the guys they got are they the actual people? We reckon, or we sus? It's just a couple of random. Well, they arrested ten people, and four are supposed to be the terrorists. Cool themselves, but they they even arrested the guy who sold them the van, Mm. right? And then they can just be like, "Are these the guys you sold it to?" And he's going to say yes. Well, it does, even if it's not under duress, if he he can say no, it, this guy is mm. yes, that guy, but this guy's this guy wasn't involved. Yeah, right. Because that's what you do is like you arrest him being implicated, right? And you give him basically, like that's it, yeah. If you're yeah. doing a rational, I don't know how Russia wants to do their trials, but if you're rational, you basically are like you know that this like happened to be a, like a terrorist attack you have to offer him basically a, a bargain plea deal mm. and then get him to um come forward as a witness against those people and then you pretty much have yeah. a closed case if you have somebody who sold yeah. them the getaway vehicle that's tied to them and he can identify all four of them true but he could also be like oh fuck the russian security forces have got me i'm just gonna say whatever four brown guys with beards are the guys and just get the fuck out of here and it's also Russia, so they're not going to have any due diligence. They just they just want to head. To anyway, roll. I want to see if they name what this group is, or if they just keep so I'm uh, I'm a little sus. It's launched against the Taliban by ISIS K, okay. which was also behind the August 2021 attack. Because I believe that was the TTP. It looked like the TTP flag, the not the Taliban. Afghanistan. That withdrawal, which was agreed to by former President Trump and executed by President mm-hmm. Biden also assessed on Capitol Hill this week. I mean, it was executed by the military. The State Department for mm-hmm. poor planning. Some lawmakers drawing a direct line between well, the, the military planned something poorly. And ISIS-K crazy. ISK. There. The fall of Afghanistan, the way it was done, and the way we East. left it with no ISR capability that intelligence, surveillance, or cognizance puts us in danger uh, where this is a new battleground training ground for ISIS. One other warning we're hearing where? about is the situation Afghanistan? at our borders. The latest numbers reveal one other. Danger, they were in Turkey, bro. Uh, where this is a new battleground training ground for ISIS. These guys one came from. One other warning we're hearing about is they're the not even. They didn't like borders. just because they're Tajik doesn't mean they came from Afghanistan. Hmm. Like right away they were saying they came from like the specific republic. I don't know. I haven't looked that much into it. Mm. The latest numbers reveal there were nearly 190,000 migrant encounters, a record for the month of February. And of grave concern right now, there have been 69 migrants apprehended just this fiscal year with affiliations to the terror watch list. Compare that to zero in 2019 and three in 2020. Crazy, 2019? Reporting. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Did you see that? As rest. See how long that fucking out thing was? She was sitting there for a while. <laughs> 2020. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. That's unsettling. <laughs> Something like, a, you know, you got that delay. All right. Russia on Sunday charged four men it says are responsible for gunning down scores of people at a concert outside Moscow days earlier. The deadliest attack inside Russia in two decades. Russian media previously identified the men as citizens of the ex-Soviet Republic of Tajikistan living in Russia. After unverified and brutal videos of the suspects interrogation circulated on social media, Courtroom images and video published by Russian media showed the suspects bandaged, swollen, and so bruised. this one guy in the one lower right hand corner struggling to mm-hmm. this guy in the chair. 
the first reports that came out about him said he was dead. And then it's like, oh, he's alive. He just needed surgery on his eye. The picture I saw, his eye is literally popping out of his head. Oh, cool. And it's like him on the ground. So they fucking like knocked his eye out that they fucking like. Do you expect so, anything less from Russia? Yeah. But like the dude is literally in a coma on trial. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. It's Russia. The suspects bandaged, swollen and bruised with one man disoriented and struggling to keep his eyes open. A Moscow court said the four suspects charged with acts of terrorism would be remanded in pretrial custody until late May adding that three of the four had pleaded guilty to all charges. The attack has prompted some Russian lawmakers... I, to let me guess, the fourth one is in a coma, so he didn't boost. plead guilty. <laughs> Earlier in the day, Russia lowered flags oh, to I did for a day of mourning, and people continued to lay flowers in memory of those killed. By Sunday night, the death toll had risen to 137, with over 100 still in the hospital, and some in serious condition. The Islamic militant group Islamic State has claimed responsibility and released footage of the attack. Oh, ah! of which Reuters was able to confirm. Don't play it. Russian Do not play it. Okay, the gunmen not. were captured near the Ukrainian border after fleeing the concert venue on Friday. And Putin, who has not yet publicly mentioned Islamic State in connection with the attack, said that some on the quote Ukrainian side had been prepared to spirit the gunmen across the border. Ukraine has denied any role in the attack. The U.S. has also denied Ukrainian involvement, saying that Islamic State bore sole responsibility. What would have been the funny White House is said if Ukraine ferried them across the border and then gave them gave it back to Russia, it was just like, "Hey guys, I got this dude. He did this. You want him? <laughs> Give us the town back." <laughs> that the U.S. government shared information with Russia earlier this month about a planned attack in Moscow and had <laughs> issued a public advisory to Americans in Russia. Russian officials have bristled at the U.S. comments on the attack and say Russian investigators must be allowed to make their own findings. Uh -huh. Today, suspects appear in a Russian court after the deadly concert hall attack. Oh, it's a podcast. Right here. Yeah, that's a little speaky one. Oh, see, I figured I'd put a positive story about this attack, mm -hmm. right? And like, it, crazy Damn. because like he's he's uh you know like clearly from like more of a Central Asian place, just like the guys who were mm. attacking. Yeah, you know? kind of ironic. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, that's the thing. Do we think that the U.S. knows more than what Russia thinks is going on? Um, I mean, they they are really good at, like, Russia stuff now. Like, they knew they were going to invade. They know what their submarine loadouts are. Like, um, the question is, is, like, if Russia actually looked at the threat and cared enough because like mm -hmm. uh russia actually um uh a few hours before 9 11 called bush and said like al-qaeda is planning something hmm. so you know like this you know oh at least we did the return the favor and he also failed to stop it just like when he warned us Iran warned us too. Actually, Iran actually wanted to warn us through Russia. It was on Iran's behalf. Oh, interesting. Okay, it's obvious. We obviously won't be able to say this, but this guy who's literally 15 and like, God damn, child labor, right? He like led mm -hmm. people through an evacuation tunnel. Yeah. His he, he's his life is he's young enough that his life hasn't been ruined by the state yet. Mm -hmm. uh, That's what, yeah, yeah, we don't it's, it's not it's not in English, so obviously we don't need to look at it. I just wanted to highlight something positive at least. As rescue crews continued the search for the missing Monday, pro Kremlin media ignored reports that the Islamic State group was responsible for the attack. 
The director of the propaganda channel, RT, hmm. claims on social media that the Islamic State group's claim of responsibility is false. I don't give a fuck because Twitter's not a real time, place. An editorial on the state-run Ria Novosti says, quote, the Kiev Caliphate is launching a campaign of terror against Russia, unquote. Russian authorities have shown several men whom President Vladimir Putin himself alleges were caught trying to flee to Ukraine. Analysts have cast doubts on the allegation. The border with Ukraine is fundamentally a front line. There are no crossing points uh, from Bryansk region into Ukraine. Uh, the border has been thoroughly mili militarized. Uh, there is very heavy presence of the Russian armed forces and the FSB. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has dismissed Putin's claim of Ukrainian involvement. In blaming Kyiv for the attack, the Russian media deny that Islamist <laughs> objective in Russia. Okay. Some observers disagree. The Islamic State considers Russia one of its main enemies, along with the United States and Iran, due to the wars that ISIS considers holy. Russia was in Afghanistan. It is in Syria alongside Bashar al-Assad until today, Hi, and the wars against the Muslims in the Caucasus. Others say the attack will help the Kremlin justify arguments for carrying out a new mobilization and buildup of its forces, which are under pressure after two years of full-scale war. With this more than 130 me, I, I, I dead, the attack on March 22nd... That was so funny. Uh, the pettiness behind it. I don't give a fuck because Twitter's not a real place. The, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> is, is so crazy. Like... Well, like, why, well, like, why go through the effort? Well, because, like, uh, here I am using it as a resource. So it says, <laughs> for current and future reference, a threat on Islamic state attacks in different countries and targets: Algeria, Australia, Austria, <laughs> Bangladesh, Belgium, Turkey, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Canada, Caucasus, Chad, China. Democratic Republic of Congo, Denmark, Egypt, France, Germany, mm -hmm. India, Indonesia, Iran. <laughs> like, does that seem like enemies? You're like, oh, they only attack enemies in the U.S. They only attack enemies in the U.S. They only attack Israel. That's because Israel, they don't give a fuck about Israel. Mm-hmm. Goes down as one of the bloodiest in the Russian Federation's recent history. Israel Some doesn't worry, fuck with ISIS. Use it as an excuse for Moscow to step up its assault on Ukraine. For the VOA Moscow Bureau, Elizabeth Chernev, VOA News. Well, there's a VOA Bureau in Moscow. That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, Down this one. This will be the last one for this one. You was warned about an attack a few weeks ago from fighters. Oh U.S. Embassy alert in, in Russia two weeks ago. Warning this attacks on large gatherings so in Moscow. The embassy is monitoring reports this. that extremists have imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow to include concerts. And U.S. Sh citizens should be advised to avoid large gatherings over the next forty-eight hours. Look, I don't know anything about. Bro, what they happened. literally said uh, concerts. Okay. I don't know anything about what happened plan. so far. Yeah. Convenient. Very, very convenient. Uh, the timing of it, everything. Uh, shooting and blast reported. Here's what we know so far about it. Shooting and blast reported at concert hall near Moscow. RIA agency says at least three people in camouflage gear opened fire while TASS reports a blast and a fire. Redditors are losing their minds on all these posts calling for even more war crimes. I don't get it. Are they saying that like, like are they happy that Russian civilians are being slaughtered in a terror attack? Like, I don't get it. Yeah, dude. The random Russians that went to a concert are like responsible for Putin's invasion of Ukraine. It's great. I just, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say about it. It's just so crazy. Crazy. Broke his city music hall, engulfed in flames. Yeah, crazy. Hall, I'm sure. You, like, opening. where isn't there people like that though? <laughs> Nowhere. Fire from automatic weapons. Panic Russians fled for their so lives. In one video, three minutes, he's carrying rifles fired at point blank range in a body strewn about the lobby of the concert hall. The attackers also apparently detonated explosives, as the sounds of blast could be heard in other videos from the attack. Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin called the attack a great tragedy. At least 50 ambulances have been dispatched to the site of the attack. The attackers presumably opened fire at the entrance of the building during a concert using automatic weapons, and then a fire began in the building, said emergency services. Authorities said up to five people took part in the attack. Russian media reports that riot police units were sent to the area as people were being evacuated. Likely, they had signals, intercept indications from ISIS K of an attack similar as in Iran. They warned them just before that attack too dude i am trying so hard not to do conspiracy theories on this. oh my god okay, I think pause. pause is just like 
pause. So all so what triggered this is somebody just asking, oh, surely they monitor their communications. Russia or America? America monitoring ISIS communications. Surely. Yes, they do. Like I like like I was there for when this infrastructure was getting established. Okay. You know, like yes, they do. They know everything they're gonna do. I don't know. I I, just, I feel I'm not gonna say anything. I don't know. I don't know what ISIS Khorasan's backing, where it comes from. Ah, it's yes. just very strange. Yeah. The Islamic State of the Khorasan province, right? That's what the K stands for. Uh, very weird. Very weird that they're just popping now. Exactly why you say you don't want to cover breaking news. The worst people what do take you mean? any conspiracy you even mentioned and blow it up as your take. Yeah, I have what no do you mean? On very this. weird I that they're just popping now. What is that supposed to have... hang on? What does that mean? Why is that weird? It's ISIS. Mm. Like the that one the one Belgian shooting was huge. And remember, uh Hassan, you should know this. A Turk is the guy who saved the day. A regular MMA fighter from Turkey <laughs> subdued the shooter. He like snuck up on him. And oh, on, okay. and this is on the street in the open what this guy was going off on people, right? And he like snuck up on him and fucking Yeah, yeah, him. yeah. He like choked him out. Oh, that's hilarious. Save the <laughs> day. There's it's um that's another one that's like um has a really scary moment for me. Like mm. the the truck, obviously in Nice and France, is one of the ones yeah. that really gets to me. But in this Belgian attack, he's like running down an alleyway, and like there's nowhere. It's like straight walls on either side, and there's like a woman who's trying to hide, but basically she it's like a outcrop, right? Like it's like a pillar she's behind, and mm -hmm. the guy like runs by, looks at her, and shoots her. You know, just that feeling of knowing that you can't even run. Yeah, you know, at least people in the theater they had the chance to run. Well, not so True. much the people at the beginning, but yeah, yeah, it's always the people at the beginning that that feeling obviously would probably. But that happen. that one also it has a lot of footage of a lot of footage oh, of really? the Belgium attack. Yeah, because there's like security cameras and stuff uh, on the street. I don't think I've seen any of the footage of that one. Uh, that was an interesting one. Hmm. So, you know, it's a it's another mass shooting. Yeah. Uh, but he like it's like he he's killing while moving. So they oh. so uh, like he like went to a specific like district and was shooting people. And again, it's so funny that people are like scared of guns in America and stuff. Like anyone hmm. is it's like thinking that you don't have guns in your country. Yeah, it's much scarier in a country where the only thing that can save you is the police. In America, any random can have a gun that can stop it. Well, not in this case, a Turk, a Turkish guy. To save yeah. People. And yeah. like Erdogan, like gave him a medal, I want to say. <laughs> for like representing Turkey, you know, be yeah, like yeah. er Erdogan got to claim it as being the one who stopped it while funding them. Unless it's like literally ongoing like Israel pummeling Gaza. Obviously, I'm not going to cover something that is like completely new. My money's also pissed off Ukrainians, to be honest. Pff, no, I don't think that this is uh, like Ukrainian dudes at all. I think it's no. I think in the grand scheme of things, like the in the likelihood spectrum, it would be false flag before it would be Ukrainians that are able to like grab a hold of weapons and like facilitate such a massive operation like this. As Honestly, as so here's the thing: concisely debunk common misinformation going around about this. You think story. it's like Hassan okay, at least he's at I, least he's not be being that dumb, recognizing that it's not Ukraine. But his solution uh -huh. is that he thinks Ukraine can't attack inside of Russia while there's an active like insurgency in <laughs> inside Russia. Inside being led Russia, by the Chechen yeah. Republic, <laughs> right? So there's literally you like they're not—they're you know. like they're not technically Ukrainians, but they're like affiliated with the Ukrainian armed forces, mm. right? The Chechen, so yeah. they could do this, but they're not terrorists, so they're not going no. to do it. They could do it on a military target. <laughs> well, I mean, these guys—that's the thing. I mean, they had fucking the guy had fucking rocket launchers on him, mm. you know, yeah. like. Uh, he had a scar. Like he's ready to go. He's ready to fight. Yeah. These guys had like a weirdly spray painted rifle, and I think they only had one rifle between them all. You know, I've only seen mm. the one rifle. It was an AK-12 as well, which is yeah. Very I've seen. I've. It's like where's the other rifles? They also found a Makarov. Ah, interesting. 
can't tell if people are going to be anti-Russian or anti-Muslim on this one, Lamau, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The shooting at the concert hall was reminiscent of some of Europe's worst terrorist incidents, such as the attack on the Bataclan in Paris in November 2015. Remember when I said that? The Nord Remember when I Moscow said that? I compared this attack the to that attack in, the in uh, history. The Russian news agency France, 112, Paris. which specialized the shooting in crime reporting, where they were at Vegas, yeah. open fired at cafes. Mm-hmm. Injured. It was unclear if police had managed to neutralize the attackers by Friday evening, as emergency workers said they had evacuated 100 people who had been sheltering in the building's basement. An eyewitness told the MASH Telegram channel that there were at least five attackers and that they were bearded. They act like trained and trained fighters, bearded. the account read. At the moment of entering the building, Did the they? guards and people standing at the door were killed. Then like they, they would the know. Entrance. The terrorists are armed with AKM assault rifles, the person said. Some carry unloads with various ammunition. At least two of the attackers are carrying backpacks, possibly with Molotov cocktails. Russian authorities had recently carried out a series of raids against armed Islamist militants in the region of Ingusheta, Ingushetia, leading to pitched firefights between police and the fighters. Earlier this month, Western countries led by the United States had issued a number of warnings for their citizens not to join public gatherings in Russia. On March 8th, the embassy wrote, it was monitoring reports that extremists have imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow to include concerts, and U.S. citizens should be advised to avoid large gatherings over the next 48 hours. The warnings came shortly after Russia said it had foiled a planned shooting by an Afghan mm -hmm. group linked to the Islamic State. It was unclear if this was the attack referred to in the warning. More details soon. It absolutely was Ukraine. You cannot say that with a certainty. Oh, Ukraine these people has infinitely are stupid. more significant things to worry about currently, and I don't don't know if they have the capability of pulling this off whereas a third party in the realm of likelihood in the realm that's of the possibility thing. the Anyone most likely would be yeah the in thing. the realm of yeah like anyone not... can do a mass shooting if, if, like yeah. do, is the ukraine doing the mass shootings here bro it's a mass shooting it's like what do we mean it's not a fucking complex ambush with fucking like landmines yeah like, it's not like the fucking uh, El Shabaab attack on the fucking hotel in Mogadishu that was like an organized, like, triple car bomb, or like yeah, uh, Al Qaeda attacks in Mali dudes. with the triple car bomb, mm -hmm. you know? It's five dudes in an enclosed space going ham. Like, what the fuck? Literally, basically, the no Russian mission from. <laughs> I love how he reads it like it's his own brain saying it. <laughs> possibility the most likely scenario would be an bro i do not understand like it like group that isn't hurts my brain with being ukrainian and being blown to bits by the russian forces and more so like a third party that has a uh, genuine interest in opening up pressure to russia just like iran you know a third party that has uh that always somehow suspiciously aligns against america's foreign adversaries even though uh they are a terror cell designated See? as a terror cell i don't what a the reason shit, why I don't bro. ukraine is because this mm -hmm. is very different than taking bro, shots let me like, like literally literally we just like uh bombed a isis commander right and yeah. russia nearly took out the drone that was doing that up <laughs> like oh. russia almost saved this commander from dying like what oh, a nice. fucking moron <laughs> saying that isis attacks the fucking the interest of the united states the enemies of the united states There's people. There's no saving them. They're, they're just fucked. They're broken. Defective. You yeah. know where it comes from? Mm -hmm. It's because they, they, cause like, uh, ISIS sprung up in all these countries that were unstable from the war on terror. So mm -hmm. because their brain is rotted, that's what they associate that, um, that's America doing that. Yeah. Right. That these countries aren't just unstable. That, you know, like Al Qaeda didn't have a plan to destabilize the entire region. Yeah creates more sympathy and gives Putin more of an opportunity to be even more restricted than he has been thus far, be even more violent than he has thus far. That's why I don't think it would be something that Ukraine would do unless it's like a direct target, like Dugan's daughter. You know what I mean? Like that's that's an assassination that makes sense, right? Uh -huh. It's like a, I agree. we can reach you in your own home. I think that that makes sense. This, on the other hand, does not. Ukraine GR GUR's military intelligence says today's terrorist attacks in Moscow is a deliberate provocation of Putin's security services. We don't talk about it a lot, but since the invasion of Ukraine, many previously invaded regions of Russia have been more difficult for Russians to manage. Relevant? Yeah, I mean, the 1999 Russian apartment bombings are relevant. Oh my God, no. No, 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 no. There is one source for this, and it's fucking Litvinenko. The dude has not told the truth ever. He was the Navalny of that time. He told the United States whatever they wanted to hear. It's like falling gong. Like, no, mm -hmm. no.
operation, as that one was. But you have to look at what the goal. No, it wasn't. Here. You have to There's look at no what evidence like, of this. potential goals might be. Literal but no evidence. In a situation it's like this, you just have to look at who's the who's the party that benefits, who wins, who loses. What are the the mechanisms of control? This is how I cover. This is how I analyze. This is how I look at things when they happen immediately. Like my first. This is me being is unbiased go, uh, and not fucking being conspiracy brained about fucking play, other rational shit actors too. Involved. And looking so at the rational fucking the evidence. Reason? Russia has not been able to focus on the caucus in general, like losing control of the Armenia Azerbaijan situation. I don't even know if they lost control of it, quote unquote, and instead just said to Israel and to Azerbaijan, "Go off, kings." I think they just more so were like, "Yeah, fuck it, YOLO." YOLO mode. What they, about they Tajikistan? Just, they were just at a, they literally days, just had a no, no, no. like Even fucking skirmish. Like overall... Do you remember this? That there was a skirmish between those Central Asian countries where they were firing like it was a border skirmish with Tajikistan? And yes, it was a few months ago, maybe a year ago, right? Yes. Like, what about that one? Russia, did Russia help there? I think they did. Actually. I think they did help mediate something. Yeah. You know why? Goals you, you know why Russia can't do anything because it's Azerbaijan is actually backed by Turkey, idiot. Aerosol comes across as irrational. There is a rationale behind it. You might not agree with it, and I certainly don't in many of these circumstances. But like, there's still an action and a reaction, and something that is basically like motivating people to to behave in a certain way. Um, part of me thought this could be like the 2004 Beslan school seizure. Putin uses to seize more power, but like, what is there to left to seize? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like if it's a false flag, the most likely scenario is oh my god, they brought up what the was saying as well. Shut up. Losing control mm -hmm. over a lot of the territories that where there is a lot of dissent. I said long-standing aims to attack Russia since it intervened in Syria and bombed them alongside Assad. ISIS K is now their Thank you. Thank you. This this person knows what they're talking about among central asian vulnerable groups i mean look they have is their name literally news can we get that person's name up on up on the screen is it literally news mm -hmm. this person is who people should be watching instead of hassan they were <laughs> yes like come on large outside pressure and actively recruit among central asian vulnerable groups i mean there is motivation i'm just i'm just saying there's definitely motivation there's motivation from vulnerable Central Asian groups and, and dissatisfaction for True. living under Russian uh, rule. There is uh, certainly motivation for ISIS-K. I think, like, if Putin were to turn around and be like, this is definitely Ukraine, then you know it's probably not Ukraine. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I don't think it's likely <laughs> that Ukraine would do something like this, considering that like, this is I, his, I don't like, see one of his least bad for takes yet like, because he's partially right on some moment. stuff. I think that's, like, the maximum <laughs> allotment that they have that they, can, that they can give to, like, offensive campaigns inside of Russian boundaries. State Department says it's not Ukraine, so it was definitely I liked, Ukraine. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know who it, wrote oh, it. Look. But somebody wrote an article where it's like, why Putin will have no choice but to blame new Ukraine for the attack. Mm. And it's just about like, um, basically, like terrorist attacks are they're made to like they do it to make the government look weak. Yeah. And uh, so Russia either is going to commit to like, you know, people's fear of ISIS inside the country. Or he's going to which will pull away from Ukraine. Or he's just going to commit, you know, or something. I didn't really read it, but I don't know. It seemed like an interesting perspective. It's an old story. How old's this one? We haven't done China in a while. Uh, 13 days. 13 okay. days. Damn. Next. Split. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Maybe. I mean, it's up to you. It's old. Hey, thank you. New details this morning. Today, Scottsdale police will answer questions about more arrests known as the dinner time burglaries. We've covered this extensively. This comes to several East Valley cities are working together to curb this crime. A one sided hey, show. Johnny Gizzo, what side? This with more on this. What side, I'm Johnny so Gizzo? Confused. What you is the one side? Tell me, what's the one side we're on? Whose side? Just... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jordan, these latest arrests uh, took place took police several hours so talk if you missed it on friday we he came on the i still show. have no idea what he said <laughs> we had a lot of people watching too yeah i i had this no you funny out. so funny <laughs> Yeah, this is over the weekend going into the new week here. It was on Sunday, one of the female suspects arrested around 9 o'clock. And then hours later, Scottsdale police, they were using a chopper to find two additional okay. young so, male suspects. Uh, that they found. This isn't that important, but this is a little mm -hmm. bit of pretext for an anti-immigration narrative that's going on. So Fox oh, that News story. is like, 
Fox News is for, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got it. But there was people from they were a string of burglaries yeah. that was associated Chilean. with Chil Chileans, right? Which mm -hmm. are like, you know, they're the white migrants of South America. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You know what I mean by that? Like they're they're like very very always like U.S. prone. Like they're mm. like totally whatever U.S. says that's us. Um, sure. But the the Fox News is reporting this narrative that like migrants are being trained to come here and like invade your home and rob oh, you epic. now, right? That's because of this. Epic. So they're saying that they uh, they're being trained to do burglaries and then go cross the border where they can't be caught for it. That's awesome. Imagine crossing a border just to rob some white people. <laughs> you know, they're like, why would they West come here to work? Like, honest, legal migrants, <laughs> you know? I haven't looked at it, but I was like, oh, God, no. Hilarious. The Somali parliament ratified a 10-year defense agreement with Turkey this month. Under okay. the deal, the Turkish Navy will help protect Somalia's yeah, territorial this is not waters a surprise. and facilitate the training um, and equipping of the Somali Navy. With Turkey already having oh, a military okay. base I mean, in that's Somalia, cool. naval analysts say the deal mm -hmm. is another step in projecting Turkish influence. This yeah, will provide Turkey yep, yep, yep. an opportunity. I got a little, um, I got a little picture. I stole it from um, TLDR. I'm mm. gonna, I'm gonna send it to you because it's on my phone. I'm gonna send it to you on Instagram real quick. Okay. Um, this is a great thumbnail. <laughs> that is a good thumbnail. Yeah. So, like, pull that up real quick. For fuck's sake, it's so just, much effort. Oh, bro, you just press share screen and click it. What are you talking about? So much effort. I have to open up a different internet browser, get Instagram up, change the screen share. And Jesus Christ, bro. You, bro, just open a new tab. I'll get it. It's not that fucking complicated. I'll get it. Jeez. I didn't know Come opening on. tabs was so hard for you. It's not just tabs. I'm trying to find it on Google. Why are you on Google? I already got it. Right. So um, I think this is just because I, I was talking um, with Pega about the lynchings in, in uh, mm. Belgium by Turkish Grey Wolves. Right. And uh, just like I was talking about how they're sim the Grey Wolves are similar to the IRGC in the aspect that they project the country's power, but they're a gang. Mm -hmm. They're not a terrorist network. I mean, they are and they yeah. are because, like, um, so I gave her the example in France. They killed the co-founder of the PKK, the girl, right, and two other PKK mm. commanders. And then on the ten-year yep. anniversary, they killed three more people. Mm -hmm. Right, just to, like that's that's terrorism for sure. So the Grey Wolves yeah. help extend Turkey's influence in a subterfuge way. They always are doing at the something at the interest of the state they do a political assassinations okay. around the world and stuff but as far as like mm. their hard point military like i th i think this is like something that seriously like needs to be talked about nobody talks about this how many tur countries turkey is in like do they even have like they lit it like it's hard to see they even got a little dot on northern cyprus of course <laughs> there well they're occupying it aren't they yeah the northern part yeah right Like, and and like you know how they always say, "Why well, is the U.S. base surrounding Iran?" Right? But if you look here, where where Turkey has its strategic setup, it's opposing the powers of the region. You got Egypt, Saudi yes. Arabia, and Iran there. I mean, and I guess Israel too, but you know, so they literally have those uh, force projections. Mm -hmm. Was that uh, Armenia and? Yeah, they're in Azerbaijan, up there. Okay. And, then and what, what about region. Europe? Is that um, Albania and Bosnia, Albania and... or maybe ah. Cro Croatia? Is Cro okay. Croatia is the Bosnia is Bosnia is the one that's eats. I Croatia. think Bosnia is below. Yeah. Bosnia is the Pac Man, right? Or is Croatia I, the Pac Man? I can't remember. That's eating I, one's I eating know. the other country. I, I anyway, think, I think that's Bosnia. Point is, is that the the force protection projection that these mm. people have is worrisome. I, it's just as worrisome as Russia. And if anything, they're competing with Russia in a lot of these regions. Mm -hmm. 
all those external countries, Gulf countries, the Western countries, even Japan. Was that one sided? They are all vying to increase their in the region, especially for economic purposes. So this is a this is an opportunity for Turkey as well. The Somali naval deal comes as Ankara rapidly expands its navy to have a so-called blue water capability okay. or the ability to operate on the ocean Ankara, far from the country's home the ports. Capital. It focuses the on the projection capital. of uh, Turkish uh, capacity, Turkish military capacity. Uh, in the uh, it might be the name of the council. Uh, they just say Ankara when they're talking, like they say the White House. Zones. You mm. know, like okay. it might be a building or something. I just know mm. they mean the Turkish government when they say Ankara. Yeah. Uh, waters and also helping its allies, its partners, uh, to do the same. And as you know, like Somalia, for example, has been fighting a increasing, um, actually, threat of like piracy. Turkey's deepening military ties with Somalia come as the Horn of Africa nation faces ongoing tensions with its neighbor. Turkey, Ethiopia. let me talk about this. And I'll say with Ankara is well placed to contain with in Somalia. Fallout. Turkey yes. has like a commando squad that's like uh, Somalia's highest like ranking counterterrorism team. They're all trained by Turkey. Turkish mercenaries. Out, given its good ties with Ethiopia. Uh, military cooperation, personal cooperation, I mean, personal relations between, between the leaders. I think uh, I think it, the relations are pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. I mean, uh, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Seeks, uh, seeks for, um, everybody looks for a sort of security cooperation. And it's the same for Ethiopia. And Turkey is a security provider for Ethiopia as well. I can't understand. Turkish made military drones yeah. being widely used by both Ethiopian and Somali militaries True. in their wars against True. insurgencies. Ankara has, until now, maintained good ties with both countries. But they analysts warn Ankara needs to tread carefully people. given the region's volatility. In the long run, this might lead to Turkey's involvement in regional conflicts. So, this was what Turkey was trying to avoid. Uh, in its Africa policy, it does not want to be a part of African conflicts, but it might be dragged into. Yeah, it Africa. just wants to force protection naval with deal projection Somalia, without getting fucking involved. In they want fucking all the glory for the like, world. no and work, this... right? Yeah. So, what, what, well, why is this important that they brokered a deal between Somalia and Ethiopia that Turkey came in and did this? Why is this important? What was Ethiopia? Why was there a deal uh, the to port, be made? port access, right? So yeah, ah, uh, so it's it's a counter deal to stop Ethiopia from just, yeah, being yeah, well, counted. it's yeah, Somaliland. They're fucking over Somaliland. Yeah. So uh, Turkey, Turkey is in is already invested with Somalia. Mm -hmm. So it's in Turkey's interest. It's in the United States interest as well. That's why the United yes. States uh, hates Somaliland as well. Cause they're, they want to back the Somali government, which is just crazy because Somaliland is the better government. They're more democratic. Yeah. 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 It doesn't make any sense, but neither do the decisions of the United States. So yeah, let's live in a clown world. Shall we? Yeah. But who's not going to be operating? The A's are 75. Africa? The nays are 22. The motion is agreed to. With this vote in the U.S. Senate, partial funding flows Trying to, to the U.S. government. For the tiny Pacific nation of Palau, a U.S. ally, it's a lifeline. It's not October 1st, but it's at least within this fiscal year and, and really uh, just in time. Palau maintains diplomatic relations with Taiwan, but its economy relies on Chinese tourists, who dropped by more than 50 percent in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, tanking the nation's economy. Whip says he recently met with investors from Singapore and Japan to chart a more sustainable direction. Opening up new markets. Uh, so that we're diversified and more resilient, not so dependent on the Chinese tourism, which could be weaponized. Palau's funds come through an agreement that provides Love $7 that. billion dollars in economic yeah. aid over 20 years to Palau, Micronesia, and the Marshall Islands. In exchange, oh, um, the U.S. gets exclusive access to a broad swath a of the Pacific Micronesian and the right to turn others away, might, including... It's, it's full coming up. The, you know the, biggest, the biggest island in Micronesia, okay. they are, like, not happy right now so they're pressuring for a breakaway of micronesia where they'll uh, basically nobody can stop them right because it's the mm. most populated island it's where most of the population in micronesia yeah. is so they will go um they'll break away from the united states and they'll go like cool. uh, independent good for them i mean it's I not going to happen. The United States is going to fold and give them what they need, but it, yeah. it's one of those countries that could spring up. A tiny, yeah. irrelevant country that will have no backing, yeah. basically. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what happens to them after they do leave. But Well, it's only one island in, like... Sure. 
China. Simply having the freedom of navigate, navigation through this area of the Pacific is really critical. And if we lose Weird. that, we Nothing also on that lose shelf direct access you. to our allies mm. in the Philippines and Australia. Oh, there is the agreement was renewed and signed last fall, but Congress took five months to fund it. The delay raised doubts about Washington's commitment to the Pacific, warned Marshall Islands President Hilda Hine. Our nation has been Crazy. a steadfast ally of the United States, but that should not be taken for granted. In a video message on Facebook, Wesley Simina, president Congress, of the bro. Federated States of Micronesia, mm -hmm. or FSM, acknowledged the long wait. This understandably makes absurd doubt and uncertainty. Remember, in this, you can be like uh, our the the intro day, to politics, the and like the we did this a year ago, where we mm. introed all these states and their relationship and, yes. and how it matters with the Pacific Alliance. Mm -hmm. And Congress is just sidelining it because they don't yeah. because the fucking GOP just does not care about any because they're idiots. The U.S. reached an agreement out. Going on an outcome wacko. that I am confident will benefit both our nations. It's an agreement these leaders say that provides new motivation to deepen economic and security cooperation in a part of the world that's critical. This to lady sounds security. like Montreco. Jessica Stone, VOA mm -hmm. News, Washington. A little bit. Joy and relief as 11 Filipino seafarers arrive in Manila after what they described as a near-death experience. I really thought I was going to die because I knew the blast wasn't just a machine that may have exploded, but a missile that targeted us. Not everyone on board survived the attack by Houthi rebel forces in Yemen, however. Three crew members of the cargo vessel True Confidence died in the missile strike, oh, shit. including two Filipinos. The first deaths that have occurred since Houthis started attacking shipping in the Red Sea. Filipinos make up a third of all seafarers worldwide. That's close to half a million, so much. making them disproportionately at risk of attacks, including ones that are being launched by Houthis off the coast of Yemen. The Houthis say they're seizing and firing at commercial shipping vessels to protest against Israel's war on Gaza. With 17 Filipino sailors being held by the Houthis, the Philippine government has called on shipping companies that have called social partners to better protect commercial sailors. What we have called for, and we've done this since the conflict started, is for the social partners to consider rerouting and provision of security personnel. Seafarers can also refuse to sail through sea lanes near Yemen after international maritime organizations and unions announced the expansion of high-risk areas in February. But crew members of the True Confidence say they chose to waive this right. It was necessary for trade. There was no other route to take. This is the type of stuff I think a lot of people who like, you know, that are like super pro Houthi and stuff, mm. think that they're like doing based things to defend Palestine and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, they, and it's like, oh, it's only hurting Israel and the United States. It's like, it's very, it's very, again, too centralized. Yeah. Did you uh, do the narrow? Post, did Sorry. Did you Instagram post? Yes. Okay. You tag me? No. And jobs continue now. to be on offer in Manila and elsewhere in the Philippines, with many Filipinos still willing to take the risk to be able to provide for their families. Far below Al Jazeera, Manila. I think we already looked at this market. No, we didn't say it explodes. Hell yeah. They let up. Poor Japan. Damn. Did anybody die? Uh, so they uh, apparently so because of this pressure that's about to be put on Mike Johnson like mm -hmm. how Green wants to oust him, this is um, extremely important when it comes to Ukraine aid. Okay. So if... This is Japan. Yes, but somebody's asking a question ah, about it. Ah, I didn't say that. So um... There is cons like the Democrats have to vote on that to oust him. They have to agree to oust him, right? So Democrats will keep him in if that Ukraine aid comes. So they're looking at potentially mm -hmm. after Easter. So maybe like two, three weeks. And then, it, you know, it's only that it was supposed to be there in November. Mm -hmm. They can weaponize the division in the party. Interesting. Well, it's actually, that's a really good idea. Further divide yeah. them. Yeah. That'll be funny. Uh, well, I mean, that's kind of what they did already with uh, agreeing to oust the previous speaker. Mm. Uh, 
And they all got behind Hakeem Jeffries because Hake- Hakeem Jeffries was the one who like was going to decide it to happen. Yeah, it actually solidified their power of with their new minority leader. Mm-hmm. Like many Filipino nurses, Kate Orendes wants to work in the United States. She's one step closer after passing the license exam. The grass is greener and the house is bigger, like that. But what many call the American dream has turned out to be a nightmare for Ariel. He's asked us to conceal his identity for fear of repercussions. He says Filipino nurses have heavier workloads than local staff. They're treating us like a slave and then like for us, we are like a cheap labor. Say for example, you have four or five patients and then you'll see those who are working here. I mean, those people who are from here and they were just sitting in the station. If a patient dies, nurses risk losing their license to practice in the U.S. Ariel says he wanted out but couldn't leave because his contract required him to pay $40,000 in damages if he quit early, even though he covered his own immigration and travel expenses. He also says his recruiter, Ray Raval of Professionals to USA, threatened him. The company refused our request for common. Activists say these practices amount to uh, human He said it felt like slavery. I got news that's for you. That's, that's slavery. <laughs> okay, you have a few things that prove that it's slavery, the one thing. Mm-hmm. So the biggest thing is if they hold on to your documents, 100 mm-hmm. percent you're a slave yeah but the way that they basically blocked him you know like yeah from being like they they didn't it wasn't a direct hold on to your documents which would be something that would be in constitute with slavery it's like a loophole mm-hmm. to physically hold his documents with cash and capitalism that's slavery yeah mutational damage all of those uh, threats of serious harm can be enough to compel somebody to continue to provide those services. Ariel isn't alone. In recent years, recruitment agencies have filed lawsuits against Filipino nurses for breach of contract, but the nurses are fighting back. Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare, where Ariel worked, told us it's aware of the case involving professionals to USA and is reviewing its relationships with recruiters. The U.S. Labor Department has sued at least one agency for forcing nurses to pay for projected future profits. Professional what? nurse recruiters say a breach fee is standard in contracts, as it's for recouping expenses incurred by the recruitment agency or healthcare facility. But that amount has to be reasonable. One study in 2022 predicted the U.S. will need an additional 450,000 nurses by 2025, a gap Filipinos are eager to fill, but one that could leave them vulnerable to abuse. Barn below Al Jazeera, Manila. Hmm. And then Alaska. Just remember, this is one of those things. Just remember when we're talking about migrant labor. Mm. You know, like this, is, like people aren't thinking about how they only think about the food. Mm. Yeah, they don't think about all the other industries that have all this labor behind it. Even in Australia, there's so many Filipino nurses. <laughs> like they're everywhere, everywhere. Um, uh, because my mum is a nurse, and a lot of the people that she works with are Filipinos or they're um, a lot of Indian nurses as well. Sri Lankan in Australia. I don't know about America, but there's not, there doesn't seem to be that many uh, yeah, domestically. You're very, you're very close to Sri Lanka though. Yeah I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I've never met a Sri Lankan person. So I have to say that it's probably mm. they're more rare to go to the U S than other. Group. possibly I, w- I wonder why though but it's also very hard to tell them apart beyond them actually telling you mm-hmm. <laughs> like they're very similar just like bangladesh i think is also very similar as well where it's very hard to tell them apart um well it's that's just because people look so different regionally yeah so, um like but yeah there, there are a lot of sri lankans here it's um it's definitely a, a bigger portion Girls from Bangladesh can be real pretty. Let me tell you. <laughs> More protests in India. Huh? Who are they oppressing now? Anti-Muslim censorship. Yeah, I know. The fundamental thing is that you can't make a religion on the basis of religion. 
Nice helmet, girl. Interesting. The blue. The AA gives oh, you rest. Ooh, you know who those are? Bro, 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 do you know? Do you see the flags? Ah, uh, is it Rohingya? No, no, no. Let it play. Look at the flags. Oh my God, they're communists. They're terrorists. This is the terrorist group. Is it really? Yeah, this is that. They, we literally ranked them on the terror tier list. I'm pretty sure. Huh. I didn't even see the comedy. Um, I might just be using the same flag. उनकी संस्कृति, उनकी भाषा, उनका धर्म, उनके परिवार की महिलाओं का सम्मान, उसका रक्षा करने का काम किया है, और आज से, कल से, कल से इस देश में आया हुआ हर एक सरनाथी मेरे और आपके जितना ही अधिकारी है। Protecting minorities from abroad. I think the Philippine branch won the terrorist group. Oh, the malice. Yeah. Was wait? Mm. Did they have? Was it what color was it? Was it white flags, red sickles? No, it was a red flag, yellow sickle. I think. No, no red flag, yellow. white sickle. Yeah, white. Mm. This is the first time buildings. that into the principle of citizenship. You are finding a law being brought in that actually discriminates by excluding people of one particular faith. Porch burnings. Cringe. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not the terrorist group I was thinking of. I think it is. This is this is India's Charlottesville. Okay. Well, here we go. This one. So I did find one that was Maoist. Because the one that's like connected is the Maoist group that has the like mm. insurgency stuff that they've they've done attacks and stuff. And they all have a, like they they both have the same flag. <laughs> Qatar, I think I think you might be correct. Didn't they build the World Cup stadiums with migrant slaves? Yeah. Did Al Jazeera cover that? India has more slaves than anywhere else. No, I know. One thing is very clear that Ta is communal, unconstitutional, anti Indian, anti Nautis, violated the Assam Accord. We cannot yeah. accept that. I agree. They don't like the CAA. Okay, I guess so. Okay, next. At an undisclosed location in South Fucking Africa's rhinos, province, mate. these rhinos are being prepared for life in the wild. That's under a scheme by oh, the C I was thinking the CAA was the party. Okay, the CIA rhinos. expedites Indian citizenship the applications the of Hindus, Parisi, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jans, and Christians who escaped to India from religious persecution in Muslim-majority Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Pakistan before December 31st, 2014. They become eligible for citizenship in five years. And they oppose this. Weird. Rhino population by up to 15%. African Parks project manager Donovan Juice said the aim is to rewild around 200 rhinos per year over the next 10 years to That's various sick. protected areas across Africa. So once in a lifetime, uh, de risk. Give them. Um, put. Put uh, fifty thousand dollar bounties on poacher heads, and set people loose. Um, then you okay, so okay, the reason why the reason mm -hmm. why they don't like this thing is because it basically makes it so that when people declare asylum. The CAA, because it protects those people who are fleeing Muslim countries, it establishes them to a religion, right? And because India is already a Hindu nationalist state, it I then labels them. 
Well, it, it's still uh, they they can they'll give them citizenship because they're not Muslim. They especially it, it, they get cast into the caste system. Yeah. Well. Well. Yeah. There is like it's not it's like a archaic caste system now. It's just mm. like how the, the the thing is is that it's added adding somebody requiring a religious verification for people who are refugees. Yeah. From these countries. Okay. And and so that's not a... I guess what the main problem is that people see with it. So the policy itself is not necessarily bad. And, and the, well, the, the Muslims are excluded from the policy. It's everyone oh, but Muslims. So that's why the Muslims are mad. Okay, that so, that makes a lot more sense. Asking if it from a conservation initiative at scale that's never happened before. So I think neither for happened. for the species, it's a um, it's a massive opportunity. The rhinos were bought from private breeder John Hume. He sold the animals because of the high cost of protecting them. Poaching remains a severe threat in South Africa. 499 were poached in 2023, according to government data, an increase from the year before. Yeah. Hire American ex-military people and stick them in outposts around the fucking place. Pay them $250,000 to sit in a sniper's nest and just hunt poachers. Problem solved. Fighting continues in Sudan despite a United Nations Security Council call for a ceasefire during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. On Tuesday, the army regained control of the symbolically important state television studios. The Rapid Sport Forces used the building for military operations and there are reports that it was also used as a detention center. Libba Morgan reports from Omdurma. This is the premises of Sudan's National Corporation for Radio and Television, or at least it used to be. Because of the fighting between the RSF and the Sudanese army, this is what now it looks like. There are signs of the fighting that took place between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid support forces. The RSF was uh, in control of this building since April 15th when fighting broke out. Okay, let me explain something Sudanese about army, conservation. Okay, mm -hmm. and how the scam works. Okay, so... When you go on safari or to hunt these animals, you pay mm. a lot of money, right? That money, they then hire poachers to stop poachers. So literally the only reason people turn to poaching is because that conservation money dries up. The industry stays in a full circle. Ideally, mm. you buy out all the poachers to stop the poaching. You just pay them better than what they make from poaching. Yes. And 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 that's all it is. That's that's all. That's yeah. all you have to um, do. There's a really really good documentary on this by Louis Theroux. He goes to I think a South African game safari where they actually saved a species a species from extinction. And uh, what they do is also, they uh, that documentary Virunga about the Congo gorillas. Yeah. yeah. That's have you yes. seen that? That's really good. They, it's I've like there's a, bits the girl is like it. an undercover journalist that exposes this whole like industry that's okay. going to be on the preserve, mm. and she like basically honeypots them to get information from them <laughs> and has so like funny. a hidden camera and stuff. And the head of like the rangers who take care of the gorillas mm. is like a prince from like Belgium or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so like what, what they'll do. So let's say you are some rich wanker dentist that wants I'm listening, a I'm lion's standing. head, like a lion's head on your wall. Right. Um, so you, let, let's say you, you hey, look whoa, up, don't, it's don't Johnny Dizzo. Do it. I'm look, talking. It's Johnny Dizzo. Ignore How's it one-sided? How's it one-sided, Johnny? What side are we That's on? Safe. I literally just was getting up to take medication. Johnny Dizzo. What is what? Ooh, no, what's which side we gave you the opportunity my guy you you blew your chance this is new which side now. which side is one-sided what side are we on <laughs> huh where's the one side he doesn't know whose side <laughs> no i'm i'm busy we've, we've got shit to do we don't have time for you um so what what you would do is you would like go and pay this game safari hundred and fifty thousand dollars for this to go hunt this captive lion. I say captive, but it's like in a, a pretty wide ranging uh, field park, whatever you want to call it. You go, they set it up. You take the shot. They cut the head off. You take the head. They skin the animal. They use the skins 
to make clothing and materials and stuff for local tribes. The meat gets cut up and distributed amongst local tribes. Uh, the money goes into conservation and paying anti-poaching. Um, there's actually a lot to it, a lot that a lot of people like Peter, like animal, um, animal people that like to whinge and cry about animal rights and whatnot. Like it's not, it's not a pretty reality, um, but they have literally brought species back from extinction doing this. Um, and as long as people who have money and capitalism exists and rich egotistical wankers want animal heads plastered all over their wall for some reason, game hunting is going to exist. So why not utilize the fact that most of these people have way too much money, use the money and the resources from these animals to help people and the local area and the local economy the and give back. It just makes sense, you know. Don't don't be so anti game hunting. Like it's not a great thing to be like, I'm a game hunter, but it's a pretty crucial part of their economy. So yeah, Johnny Jizzo didn't tell us what side we're on. No, he no, didn't. no. We brought on Johnny Jizzo on Friday Fun Day. He, I said if Johnny Jizzo shows up today, we're posting the link, and he showed up, and we we gave him the link, and he came on. <laughs> And he was, it was, it was five o'clock in the morning where he was because he was British, right? And he was hammered. And I could not understand anything mm -hmm. that he said. But it was very it's funny. Just, it's even funnier that he was British. It's just made everything so much funnier. <laughs> it's Al Khartoum. The premises is also home to Sudan's oldest and largest collection of archives, and that includes archives from Sudan's independence up to just before the conflict began in oh, April. Oh, shit. Now, over the past few months, the Sudanese army laid siege to the premises that the fuck of out of the there. Broadcasting Corporation and for weeks has been tightening the siege around the paramilitary rapid support forces. And That's in the early child. hours of Tuesday morning, the Sudanese army was able to around the paramilitary rapid yep. support forces. And in the early hours of Tuesday morning, the Sudanese army was able to regain control of this premises. That's now, child. this is significant for two reasons. Historically, <laughs> whoever controls Sudan and its government One controls sided. the state television. So symbolically, this gives the Sudanese army an upper hand. It's also shows how far the Sudanese army has come over the past few months of fighting between oh, it and the RSF. Lady. Sudan's army has been regaining ground and territories from the paramilitary RSF in the city of Umdurman and in other parts of the capital as well. Now, the United Nations Security Council has called for a ceasefire to be observed during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan for relief. Yeah, uh, Al Jazeera reporters were badass when this war broke out. You know, literally, they were oh, like, really? still out right there. In the middle. Like, oh, yeah. And they're like, Crazy. are you okay? Do you need shelter? No, I'm good. I'm, I'm good, bruv. ...by the conflict, but fighting continues between the army and the RSF. The Sudanese army says that there will be no ceasefire unless the, the RSF withdraws from civilian facilities and from cities it took over since May last year. The RSF has refused to do so, so fighting continues with no ceasefire to be observed, at least yeah, for the time the, being. This is, in Sudan, the demand is stupid. The demand is they have to lose for us to make a true steal where we both walk away. Prisons across Italy are facing protest action, including beating on cell bars or refusing to work or eat. But Georgia Maloney's hard right government has responded by There's some protest. to make protesting a criminal offence, which could double their it's jail time. It's an offence. draconian <laughs> crackdown that experts say has no parallel in any other Can't Western understand democracy. This guy. The prospect Those troubles fucking experts, experts like University of Milan's Angela Della Bella, who say the real problem is overcrowding and understaffing, making it difficult for inmates to access help, psychiatric and educational services. Especially in overcrowded prisons with no opportunities for rehabilitation, it does not reduce You went from Africa to this? I'm just going the list. I told you, make sure if you're... I don't know stay on, you wanted to stay on Africa, didn't you? No, I said if you pick something, make sure you stay on the region so it's easier for you to cut later. We're not going to cut new stuff. Yeah, it, no, we are. If it's relevant, yes. Fine. Uh, it at least still kind of that area. It's Mediterranean. That counts. We'll stay there. Yes. Yeah. To continue or even commit more crimes. Yeah, the cultural message that needs to be conveyed is that more prisons do not equal more security. True. 
In Milan's main San Vittore prison, built in the 1800s, a guard with 35 years experience said problems were growing in managing inmates who are mostly migrants, unable to speak Italian, and still awaiting trial. Italy's prison Fuck off, bro. Are you fucking kidding me? Wow, what a turn for that story. Wait, also, what are those keys? Still awaiting trial. There Italy's were migrants who couldn't even speak Italian at the end of January. Most that. of the population in their prisons. Epic keys. Awaiting trial. Yeah, it's fucking more Willy Wonka. Capacity, fucking according key, to data right? from Antigon, a prisoner's welfare organization. At the same time, there is a shortfall of almost 7,000 guards. Meanwhile, suicides in Italy's prisons have increased to 21 this year, up guard. from nine at the same stage of 2023. Antigon's 20. data shows. Here's their president, Patrizio Gonella, on the new Ooh, security bill. Well. It is essentially a constitutional setback. It is a return to the past, an erosion of the rule of law slowly progressing. Oh my god, every time something happens in Italy, these motherfuckers in immigration say this shit. Mussolini again. <laughs> What began as peaceful protests in Syria in early 2011 quickly became. Wait. No, that's not Africa. People in rural communities in Nigeria's Karuna state are scared. Days after the kidnap of more than 280 school children in Kuriga, what they call bandits, have struck again in Buddha village. Dozens of people were taken. Jamila Nuhu narrowly escaped. <laughs> They ordered me out of the house to carry their loot. It was heavy. I also had my baby on my back. When soldiers arrived, the bandits panicked. I you seized the opportunity see, like, to drop the loot. The village the that's targeted here, you can see it's way more remote than places that we normally see in Nigeria. Mm. Right? No paved roads. There's cars in Nigeria? What I mean, the there's hell? Yeah, there's still a car, but, you know, <laughs> no, absolutely no paving on the roads and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can tell no, that's no, going to be more I was remote. making a joke because yeah. Africa doesn't have civilization. I know. know. That's because I always point that out. Like when Sudan <laughs> broke out, I would kept going, I want to keep hey, one of out. This is a modern country. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking people when it comes to Africa. A few others. Yeah, it's insane. Also got free. <laughs> they drove us out like cattle like to the outskirts of the village the when the military they arrived. They're like longhouses. Mm. We ran into an orchard. That's how some of us escaped, but my wife and stepmother did not. They're being held by bandits along with 58 others. People here say if the soldiers had not arrived, everyone in the village could have been abducted. Villagers say dozens of attackers arrived just before midnight and went from house to house seizing men, women, and children. This is the third attack in Kaduna no, State I mean, more than one week that, and follows no. the kidnap of no, 280. No, like Nigeria is a very powerful military, but the state's so big, right? So this is like kind of like a sheriff thing, you know, like it takes so long for the law enforcement to respond. They're so far out. Like these people ultimately don't live under any law. Yeah, true. Now, I wouldn't need a sheriff thing. So now, I like. think what Nigeria should do is uh, train these people and, and you know, our warrior them. villages. Warrior, well, warrior you know, village. like, uh, like there's like, uh, like for example, in Israel, there was like kibbutz defense forces, and the mm. one person who like successfully followed procedure, like handed out weapons to defend the kibbutz <laughs> in one of them, while other ones got like just massacred because nobody was out there to respond because the kibbutz are so far out on October 7th, yeah, right? So, like, they have like the kibbutz have themselves have their own police force, it's a volunteer, like, uh, mm. um like home guard um like neighborhood watch thing but yeah. they, they so the guns are in um like they're at the main base right mm -hmm. so they the like leader is the only one with the key so like they immediately organized and were able to get their whole team to yeah. their weapons and there's only like six of them but the kibbutz are like they're little small farms you know yeah yeah, yeah. so it they like they like killed like a bunch of guys defending mm -hmm. their this one this one specifically so that's what i'm saying is like you have villages like this. You just give them mm. one AK. Give them the AK guy, the sheriff. You know, the AK guy. <laughs> yeah, just give him an AK guy. I say AKs for all men, women, and children. Well, they don't have the budget village. for that. <laughs> They're like three hundred bucks an AK. Yeah. Well, I mean, what? these people are pretty remote. The government ultimately doesn't care about them either. Yeah, but true. I'm just saying, if they want to, like, it would help their insurgency problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. What country is it? Nigeria? Yeah, I'll so they have they, they have they have Boko Haram and iSwap. iSwap, that's so weird. Lena was joking how iSwap kills more people weekly than mm-hmm. uh ISK just did in Moscow. Yes. And like nobody cares about that. Mm-hmm. And like it's like uh just like you know, the jealous neighbor type thing yeah. where like you're doing all this work and nobody recognizes it. Just have a school children. The number of abductions in Nigeria's north has increased. At least 600 people have been hey, kidnapped in the region this month. An overstretched security service is struggling to contain the lawlessness sweeping across many Nigerian states. The government. Oh is my God, that is the best no Nigerian fucking hide. military drip. Did you see that? Look <laughs> at those fucking sunglasses, bro. That is everything. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> The government is keen to reassure people. <laughs> there will be no place to hide for the, uh, for the corporate. I'm going to bring... The government are doing everything for money. Oh, man, to look make at sure how nice the fabric he has on it. Mm. That's the key to... But villagers say that... Africa. The fabrics. Mm-hmm. Is it really? For the most part, yes. Interesting. Fabrics are huge in Africa. Like the ECOWAS, right? Nigeria is, um, is a big fabric exporter, right? So mm-hmm. all those um, countries that are um, in the... Oh, uh, by the way, I found a, a real-life lore or someone... Or Caspian Report did a really good video on the um, alliance in the Shahal. That's really good. That we I watched watch it. Today. I watched it. So I put it on there to watch today. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. We but, can close with it, maybe. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But basically, I also wanted to look at that PBS thing on... Uh, child tax credit Mm -hmm. but the nigerian fabric exports they depend on like like ecowas the economic organization allows them to buy the fabrics that they need from nigeria in those countries yeah i also need to find that thing where it's the guy who can listen literally showing his corruption awards talking about how he's a humanitarian that documentary is so funny Hmm. And men roam freely in many parts of northern Nigeria, imposing what they call taxes and their own laws on helpless villagers. And it seems yeah. there is little to stop them. Yeah. Oh, Mohammed oh. Idris, Al Jazeera, Buddha, This is an Nigeria. ISIS thing, an mm-hmm. uh, Al Qaeda thing. They'll, they'll literally. So it's that's that's the mafia shit. You know, they tax the, the tax yeah. the population. After weeks of being cut off from mobile networks due to war, some residents in Sudan's Omdurman are back online thanks to Starlink satellite connections. The mobile blackout began in early February amid conflicts between rival military factions, Sudan's army, and the paramilitary rapid support forces. Could, it's the, cut people you off could, this is how you can tell it's a modern country. They all went to the satellite and they're all just looking at their phones. Mm-hmm. Keeping in touch with displaced relatives. It's also hampered aid deliveries. Sudan's army provided some satellite access to residents in this district in Omdurman, where they made recent advances against the RSF. Mohammed was among those crowded around an access point. The connection has been lost for more than a month, and people every day are hopeful. The latest thing we tried is startling, but there are a lot of people, and there's a lot of pressure on it. Not everyone manages to get a connection. Fighting has caused extensive damage to the banking system, and many people have depended on the Bank of Cartoon mobile app to transfer money and make payments. There's more in the countries like developing countries. Yeah. Right? Because they literally have the code now that you're supposed to call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like literally a letter code that they'll sneak in there when they're talking about developing countries. Do adding that she wants to use the app but can't log in. Telecom industry sources said previously that the RSF had shut down networks after threatening to do so unless the army restored disabled connections in the western region of Darfur. State-owned Sudani has restored coverage in parts of Sudan, but swaths of the country, including the capital okay, and most of Darfur, N E E. What is that? Newly emerging economy. Uh, it's it's the World Bank awesome. who made these. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's also tested with the Human Development Index. Will hold a delayed election on March 24th with President Macky Sall stepping down after two terms. These are some of the main issues are likely to be on voters' minds. Successive administrations have struggled to curb youth unemployment. That's especially urgent in a fast-growing population, more than 60% of whom are now under 25. 
Frustration at a lack of opportunities, particularly among the young, has spurred support for opposition leader Usman Sonko. He's not running in this election, but called for supporters to back Basaru DMI Fai, seen as a strong contender. The share of young Senegalese not in employment, education or training stood at 35% in 2019. The lack of jobs was further exacerbated by the global health crisis. The economic fallout from the pandemic also contributed to a rising cost of living, in addition to Russia's war in Ukraine and the appreciation of the dollar. Inflation's declined slower than expected from a peak of 14% in late 2022. That's in a country where a third of the 17 million population lives in poverty, according to World Bank data. Economic hardships have undermined support for the current authorities, despite <laughs> subsidies for poor families. New there's something really dumb. I was reading the Wikipedia on it, right? Economy. And it uh -huh. says there's controversies over the terms used because it perpetuates an outdated concept of us and them. In 2015, World Bank declared that the developing developed uh, world categorization had become less relevant and that they will phase out the use of that descriptor. Instead, their reports will present data, aggregations for regions, and income groups. The term Global South is used by some as an alternative term to developing countries. <laughs> According to a 2023 poll by Afrobarometer. If whoever wins can tackle unemployment and the high cost of living, then many voters hope that that will curb the number of Senegalese risking their lives to seek better opportunities abroad. Migration from West Africa to Europe via the dangerous Atlantic route more than doubled in 2023 compared with the previous year, according to Spanish Interior Ministry figures. More than 39,900 people reached Spain's Canary Islands last year, mostly from Senegal and neighbouring Gambia. There is no reliable data on the number of people who did not survive the perilous journey by wooden boat on the open ocean. One boost to the economy is set to come from the launch of oil and gas production later in 2024. Oh, God. That's raised questions about whether natural resource wealth can benefit the wider population. Candidates' campaigns have targeted this concern. The Sonko-backed coalition promised to renegotiate energy contracts to maximize revenues. The ruling one sided one sided candidate Amadou Bar is running on a slogan this channel's of one -sided. prosperity shared. But then there's the issue of the delayed election itself. Recent political turmoil linked to the authorities' unsuccessful Doesn't matter, it happened. vote by 10 months How made story. damage support for Benno Bokyakar. The move provoked 11 widespread days. protests. Fairly old. All right, do we want to update this one? The I elections mean, yeah. happened. I mean, elections <laughs> happened. Yeah. So the elections happened. Um, I don't think we have results yet. Opposition won. Okay, opposition won. There mm -hmm. we go. And I'm assuming that the Mackie Soul guy is not there. He's well, gone. he was. It was uh, the end of his term anyway. That was the end of his term. Yes. Yeah. So okay. that's that's one of the reasons why he was okay. arguing. Yeah. That he wasn't extending. Okay. So Senegal seems to be all good again. So we have one win this year. <laughs> this is good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Very very open, free, and fair election. Mm -hmm. Even though there was some drama delaying it. Yes. But successful. What is next? This guy is in No, uh, yeah. So this it the yeah. So the the basically the one opposition guy who is against Mackey Cell, he's in jail and um he organized a coalition with another party. So they ran on a combined ticket. So his face is on it, but it's really the other guy in the party. His face is on there just because people recognize him. And they're doing a joint ticket to uh, get the majority. Yeah, set to win. They might need a coalition. They already are a coalition themselves, too. So they could break apart themselves. 13-year-old daughter, Precious Sim, was kidnapped from her high school in northern Nigeria in 2020. Oh, what happened to the election? Esther Joseph says she went almost mad with anguish. Was the end of it. She says her daughter... I know, says there's updates. It's in there. It's just not organized. Because there's old stories. And Sometimes stuff. she jerks up in her sleep and runs to hold me. She is scared of the light bulb. The fear seems to be reducing a little, but she gets agitated at any loud sound. If I shout at her, she gets scared, and it is because of the experience in the bush, like how they were shooting or treating them. She is still scared. How do they do? So the fear is big. With Nigeria's economy and poverty levels worsening, abductions have become almost a daily occurrence in the country. They were first carried out by jihadist group Boko Haram a decade ago. But the tactic has since been adopted by criminal gangs without ideological affiliation, seeking ransom. Hair crime nexus. And authorities seem unable mm. to stop them. 
On March 7th, 286 students and school staff were kidnapped by gunmen in Kuriga, a town in Kaduna state. Local authorities told Reuters on Wednesday that they had demanded a total ransom of 1 billion naira, or just over $620,000, for their release. On March 11, around 60 people were abducted in Buda, in the same state, residents said. These kidnappings are tearing families and communities apart who have to pool their savings to pay the ransoms. Parents are often forced to sell their most prized possessions, like land, cattle and grain, to secure their children's release. Precious returned to school after her mother sold her meager possessions and got help from family and church members to pay her ransom. But many other victims of kidnapping drop out after being released out of fear they might be abducted again. UNICEF estimates that at least 10.5 million children are out of school in Nigeria, the highest number in the world. Kidnappings are a major also, I think Nigeria children from schools. has the youngest UNICEF average UNICEF age per marriage in the world. In Nigeria. Going to school now is Nigeria now does? In many parts of yes. The world in Nigeria. Mm. And many teachers are but it's 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 posts. seven it's like they're 17 or 18 or, actually it might be 19 i think it's a legal age but there's so mm. much marriage at 16 and 17 that it pulls yeah. it down lower than other states even though marriage can be even lower in other states like mm -hmm. yemen nigeria it's yeah. more customary to marry at like 16 right but they are cracking down on it in a lot of these places where they this the mm. age is still 16 and stuff yeah so that they might be abducted and their, uh, their student might be abducted. In remote rural areas, unfenced schools are an easy target. Sanusi said it was difficult to get accurate figures for school kidnappings. But according to Amnesty International, nearly 750 people have been kidnapped in the first two weeks of March alone. Successive Nigerian governments have deployed soldiers and bombed suspect hideouts used by armed groups. But that has not stopped the kidnappings. Bomb. The country's information minister said on Wednesday that the government's position is that security forces should secure the hostages' release Bomb without them. paying for ransom. Since 2022, paying to free hostages is a crime in Nigeria and carries <laughs> a jail sentence of at least 15 years. <laughs> South Africans are heading to the polls on May 29th to elect a new yeah, national Africa. assembly. And South Africa's ruling party, the African National Congress, is betting on retaining its parliamentary majority. Nomvula Mokonyane is the ANC's deputy secretary general. We will not go to war having accepted defeat. We've never done it. We won't do it. Um, we're going to war to win. But economic stagnation, unemployment and corruption scandals have tarnished the party's reputation in the past decade. Surveys show that the party is likely to lose its parliamentary majority for the first time since Nelson Mandela led it to power at the fall of apartheid 30 years ago. This would open up the prospect of a coalition rule, which the ANC says it's currently not looking at. If you know what South Africa has gone through, coalitions will not work unless those coalitions are regularized. We've seen how nations that are administered through coalition governments also battle in terms of policy control. Could be loud. Keep Could keep, just keep going. There's a lot of uh, okay, stuff in the our, that we have to catch up on. You know, a lot of stuff that's over a week old. Mm. Just crank through some of it. A sect leader and self-styled prophet appeared in a Zimbabwe court on Thursday, charged with child abuse after police raided his farm and rescued 251 children. One point five. Police said the children quote were subjected to abuse as cheap labor, doing manual work in the name of being taught life skills. Police found the children on the farm were not attending uh, school, and most did not have birth certificates. They also found oh 16 my God. graves, including seven for infants, all of which were unregistered, police said. 56-year-old Ishmael Chogorange was arrested this week, along with seven of his church members, following a raid on their farm about 18 miles west of the a capital church. of Mare. State media outlet H Metro Why said that Chogorange and his accomplices had been oh. remanded in custody for a bail ruling, and are facing two counts of violating the Burial and Cremation Act. And 250 kids. Oh my God. Children backed. No pleas were taken. One of the church leaders told H Metro they do not seek out medical treatment. If anyone here falls ill, we leave their healing to God because he has his own ways and means to heal Jesus. the sick, he said. <laughs> Video from the raid showed dozens of women and children dressed in white, sitting under a tree and singing. Some were later taken away in buses, escorted by police. Zimbabwe is a majority Christian country where apostolic sects are common. Chogarange was identified by police as a leader in the so-called White Garment Church. Look what that is. Look up what that is. What they say? Apostolic. Uh, a po it's like probably something apostolic. The Christian country where apostolic sects are common. Apostolic. What is that? I've never I'll heard look. that word before. I'll look it up.
Somali security forces have neutralized all those who attacked a hotel near the president's office in the capital, Mogadishu, national television said on Friday. That's after Al-Qaeda-linked group Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for the assault on the Sil Hotel, a popular gathering place for politicians that began on Thursday evening. On Friday morning, Somali security officers could be seen taking positions on the hotel's roof. Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for an attack on the same hotel in 2019. The jihadist group has for years been trying to overthrow Somalia's government and establish its own rule based on a strict interpretation of Sharia law. Cool. Thousands celebrated in the streets of Dakar on Thursday night. Oh, yeah. They've heard the news that Senegalese opposition leader Usman Sonko and the candidate he is backing to be president had been released from prison. <laughs> Only Sonko can do this. Everyone is behind Sonko. Let's stay focused. He's clear. It's crazy. They've pinned all sorts of things on him, but today mm. he's clear. No, 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 no. The release of Sonko and Vassarou Diamai Faye had been expected after Parliament passed an amnesty law on March the 6th. That's as authorities seek to ease tensions following their thwarted bid to postpone an election by 10 months. It's now taking place on March 24th. Sonko was disqualified okay. from the vote it's, over uh, it's like election. a Pentecostal type thing. Ah, uh, okay. So it's a... Uh, this one is like a... Then British Empire. So... This video is brought to you um, the by Apocalys Britain. the Apocalypse Church of Nigeria is a Pentecostal Christian denomination in Nigeria. Now, the first thing to say is that obviously talking about Africa's debt crisis is a massive generalization. Oh, shit, Adamar, this, of course, this is just too old. We don't got time. Okay. Yeah, we don't got time for this shit. Too old. It's just down there for like context stuff. Niger's ruling junta has ended an accord that allowed U.S. Department of Defense military personnel. This is an Altec. We don't need to report soil. it here. Spokesperson Colonel Amadou Abdraman okay. said on Saturday that the agreement. I mean, it's only two minutes. Whatever, doesn't matter. Was being terminated with immediate effect. La présence américaine sur le territoire. The U.S. presence on the territory of the Republic of Niger is illegal and violates all the constitutional and democratic rules which would require the sovereign people, in particular through its elected representatives, to be consulted on the installation of a foreign army on its territory. <laughs> In the middle-class suburb of Johannesburg, clean water is being lost through burst pipes. Experts say South Africa's commercial capital is losing 25% of clean drinking water through leaks. Jesus. Parts of the city can go for days and weeks without a drop to drink. We're seeing the result of over 10 to 15 years of neglect uh, on maintenance of our infrastructure. Well, so from the pipes to wastewater treatment works to pump stations... Organization, water can? Like, it's like, Must we be, can yeah. do it? Or is that a job title? No, like, I the think water that's... technician is a water commission, you know? Mm-hmm. That would be funny. Not enough money was being spent on the maintenance. Supplies are also erratic in poorer neighborhoods. In Soweto Township, one area can have water, while elsewhere it's dry. People without water ask neighbors for help. We have to uh, fetch water for the kids, they must wash and go to school. We have to cook for them and they have to party. So this is stressful for us. And our councillors are doing nothing about this thing. Empty buckets, we have no water! With a general election due in May, frustration and anger over failing public services is a big issue for voters. Some analysts say the governing African National Congress could lose its parliamentary majority for the first time since apartheid ended in 1994. Ooh, Businesses are also struggling with the water, water crisis. This is a restaurant in the community, and that's the owner over there. She says she can't operate, she can't work because there is no water. The taps in the area have been dry for about two weeks, and people in the area say they don't know when they'll get water again. Politicians say climate change and the recent heat wave are to blame for this latest crisis. Say, for well, many families the, struggling to get a light. These types of things over water? Mm. This is going to be... The, it's going to be like oil. Yeah. To keep, keep access to water and shit. A Japanese high court said denying same sex marriage is unconstitutional and discriminatory on Thursday. Nice. A verdict welcomed by plaintiffs supporting marriage equality. That's, uh, that's good news for Japan, this uh, historically very, very conservative country. So, you know, progress, I guess. I'm really happy this long awaited ruling start. stating that it violates the constitution has been handed down. I believe that this judgment was made possible thanks to the cooperation of many people on this lawsuit. It is the first such ruling by an appeals court on a matter that has divided the lower levels of the judiciary in the country. Japan is the only G7 nation without legal protection for same sex unions. Although 70% of the public supports having such unions, they are opposed by the conservative Liberal Democratic Party mm -hmm. of Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. The plaintiffs seeking compensation from what's that a democracy not representing its people crazy the government said the current legal framework does not recognize marriages between same-sex couples and that violates the country's constitution the sapporo high court said on thursday quote 
enacting same-sex marriage does not seem to cause this uh, It's also so are... wild that Japan doesn't have gay marriage, considering how uh, gay anime is. There's a few other, I think there's a few other things on Japan there, but... Yeah, yeah I'm just doing Asia. Yeah, I mean, just, you know... We still haven't updated the Senegal election, so... Like we, 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 we updated it with... I know, uh, there's videos on it, though. It's fine. To clarify the unconstitutionality of existing law, their lawyer said. In a separate ruling on Thursday, a Tokyo district court also acknowledged the right of same-sex couples, describing the lack of same-sex marriage status in Japan as a state of unconstitutionality. Speaking outside the Tokyo court, plaintiff Shino Kawachi. Okay. The first clue came from Toyota, with word that its workers were set for their biggest pay hike in 25 years. But now it seems staff at other Japanese firms could do what? just as well. Or ISIS better. is buying the Toyota's again. Top union grouping said mm -hmm. firms had agreed to average wage increases of 5.28%. That's the biggest number in 33 years. It was also Damn. significantly more than analysts had expected. While the news is welcome for workers, the effects could go a lot further. The Bank of Japan has been waiting for signs of strong pay rises before acting on rates. Investors bet the central bank will now soon bring to an end eight years of negative interest rates. Some think nice. a shift could even begin at next week's policy meeting. The government wow. is counting Global on economy, too. another W. deals at big firms will be copied <laughs> by smaller companies, which account for about 70% of the country's workforce. That could help spur consumer spending and help Japan to finally it's escape its crap. long battle with deflation. I bought so much shit raising from that wages a chronic labor shortage caused by a shrinking um, aging population. Union grouping Rengo said inflation and rising income inequality were other drivers. Auto giant Toyota is widely seen as a bellwether for the pay talks. Yeah. You can go to that North Korea missile because there's the Nissan Japan uh, PM uh, made an announcement there. It's a 54 yeah. second video. Not bad. It auto played. <laughs> Relax. You're auto played. I know. I knew it auto played. I was fucking with you. Sissy Vaya. That's you. You're the Sissy Vaya. See if he even says something or if this is a text video because I just added it. え、地元の北朝鮮の行動は我が国、地域及び国際社会の平和と安全を脅かすものであり、断じて容認することはできません。今回の弾道ミサイル発射も関連する安保理決議違反であり、強く非難をいたします。One more. Oh, the missile, the actual North Korean missile launch was above that last one. Yeah, we watched it. The US and Japan will unveil. Oh, we did already? The US okay. military command in the country in the face of I thought the F 35s weren't carrier bound. I thought they were sh uh, the Stovall ones specifically for the carriers. So they uh, take off short. So the they don't model, have to use catapults. The, the B model can do both, I think. Yeah, I, but I thought that they specifically had that so they wouldn't have to use as much catapults. I mean, I mean, we launch with catapults regardless. It's faster mm. for us, probably. Yeah. I, I just, you know, you would think that with a, a plane that can take off vertically that you would utilize it, right? Is the B uh, model? China. The, that's Isn't the B the one that has the fan in it? Yeah, it's the, the one that only American commander has. to oversee its units there. As a counterpart to the head of a proposed Japanese self-defense forces headquarters overseeing all the country's military operations. That could be a four-star general, the highest peacetime rank in the U.S. military. Right now, U.S. forces in Japan are led by a three-star general who has no authority over local troops. In neighboring South Korea, local and U.S. forces can already operate under the unified command of a four-star officer. On Monday, Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshiki Masahayashi would only say discussions were underway over how to strengthen cooperation with the U.S. and South Korea. He said the agenda for an upcoming summit... They're going to fucking US put President a four-star general, general in there that can have Kishida control over the units set. autonomously. Earlier media reports had said the defense plans would be unveiled... He doesn't have to, like, Putin clear it. The U.S. has strongly endorsed a major defense buildup by Japan as military and security activity between the U.S. and its major Asian allies has ramped up. 
More than a year ago, Japan pledged to double its defense spending to 2% of its gross domestic product and to procure longer range missiles that can strike ships or land targets. Tokyo recently called China's rapidly expanding military power a serious concern for Japan and the international community. Kishida wants a joint command headquarters to be set up by the end of March next year. Uh huh. They will be. <laughs> this warehouse is a crucial lifeline for some Nigerians amid a. Yeah, I'm just looking. Where'd you find looking. that one? Did you just control F Japan? Yeah, I'm just finding the Asia videos and I'll go to a helicopter Europe. hovers in yeah, the haze over a, a lake in northern there's Thailand. There's a lot of news with China in here. Yeah, so I'm just getting all the other ones that aren't China first. Then we'll do China and then Europe and then... And then uh, the elections in Senegal. Sure. That we've reported on... Three or four or five, six times at this no, point. No, we report on them every time there's an update. <laughs> and there's been an update. And we played a past thing that was last week and then didn't give an update after. Filling its tanks. It takes off to fight the forest fires that have filled the air with smoke. But the real problem is here, slash and burn farming across the lower Mekong region. With the corn harvested, the dried stalks and stubble are set alight. The remains ploughed back into the earth. I can save a lot of money by burning what is left over. Whatever is left, we make a good fertilizer for the land, and the land can be used right away. It's true. As the fire spreads, clouds of acrid smoke billow up into the air. Ash breaks up into fine particle dust, known as PM2.5, that's poisoning the atmosphere. Take what's happening in this field and multiply it by 10,000. In Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Myanmar, it gives you a sense of why this is becoming one of the most polluted parts of the world. Farmers who burn their fields in the north of Thailand are now subject to heavy fines, jail time, or both. Interesting. But enforcement is rare and offers no alternative solution for the farmers to handle their waste. And targeting farmers does little to discourage the huge agricultural businesses using the corn as livestock feed. I agree that big companies have to share some responsibility, but if things change too suddenly, the farmers will be affected the most. Thailand's Prime Minister Setar Tawisin, on a visit to Chiang Mai over the weekend, claimed that the pollution level had dropped by 50%, despite a hazardous air quality rating. And many point to the government's failure to pass a Clean Air Act, accusing it of acting in collusion with Thai companies that import corn from yeah, around no the region. Shit. No shit. It's fucking it's corporations. You have to have more strict laws when it comes to importation. Past. Those big companies don't have to pay taxes. This shows that the government's on the same side as the big corporations. Wow. The people of northern Thailand crazy. now live in a poisoned atmosphere that leads to multiple... That's you, the sissy via. North Korea's Kim Jong Un hey, oversaw our what state media called. It looks funny walking at one and a half times speed. speed. That's according to state news agency KCNA on Tuesday. Day. The drills came after a two-month pause in missile tests from the north ended on Monday. That's also when South Korea and Japan reported Pyongyang fired <laughs> short-range ballistic missiles. That was sick. <laughs> and it was the same yeah, there's day so much Secretary better at like Anthony doing this Blinken than visited Iran. Seoul for a conference on advancing democracy. It's not clear if the timing <laughs> advancing is democracy, However, huh? A conference on advancing democracy. Mm-hmm. Yes. They drills to assess the, quote, real war capabilities of 600 millimeter multiple rocket launchers to boost operator morale and readiness. State media said the drills involved <laughs> simulating boost. an air explosion of the rocket launcher shell, showcasing the unit's high mobility and accurate and strong striking power in a sudden combat mission. <laughs> and state news agency KCNA said that that drew praise from Kim. The South's defense minister on Monday warned that if that North Korea launches man. a significant number of conventional missiles at the South, it would be considered an act of war and lead to strong retaliatory measures. Yeah, why don't you just fuck The threat has grown. Um, and since the threat has grown, we must uh, do more. To, to defend our, our uh, territory. And uh, so maybe perhaps more context what, to this. that is uh, what we people people are seeing uh, is that a more robust defense of our- got to do the boat our, story before this. There's uh, China sprayed the boats. Okay. I'll do Hong Kong then. Oh, it's in there though. It just uh, I just don't know where. China spray boats. Here it is. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll just wait. I got it. I found it. It's fine. I'm sending it to you Hong so Kong's you can do it before that one. Hong Kong's passed a new national security bill on Tuesday. Critics, including the U.S. government, say this major piece of legislation further threatens the China-ruled city's freedom and could be used to eliminate the fear of arrest and detention. Boo! A package known as Article 23 punishes offenses including treason, sabotage, sedition, the theft of state secrets, external interference, and espionage. Sentences range from several years to life imprisonment. 
The vote came within a fortnight of the legislation being tabled. All a fortnight? Of present, including the legislature's president, voted to pass the bill. The assembly once had a strong program. Unanimously, you was say. Overhauled in 2021 to ensure only Chinese patriots could run for public office. Wow. Here's the city's leader, John Lee, after the vote. This Unanimously, the people who put these Hong people Kong's in power must be really settled on what they want their uh, uh, leaders to do. To... Unanimous democracy, huh? Uh-huh. Plug loopholes in the national security regime. That regime was bolstered in 2020 by another law imposed directly by China, which at the time said it was aimed at restoring stability after pro-democracy protests a year earlier. The new law will also have extraterritorial effect, giving rise to fears it could be used to intimidate and restrict the free speech of residents outside Hong Kong. Eric Lai is the fellow at the Georgetown Center for Asian Law in Washington, D.C. He spoke to Reuters hours after the legislation was tabled on March the 8th. Please give uh, anonymous power and discretion to the uh, law enforcement uh, to uh, deny the right, of, uh, the right to access to lawyer of choice of arrestees. And this is also a, a problematic uh, approach because uh, in comparison with other Western jurisdictions, such extreme conditions could only be used against <laughs> a terrorist. Hong Kong officials say the laws are no more severe than those yeah, in other countries. Yeah, that's why like the US it's funny what the Singapore. president says in that interview. And the state council Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office said the law would secure Hong Kong's... Boo! And there we go. He resigned after one year in office. The Vietnamese Communist Party Central Committee accepted the resignation of President Vo Van Thuong today. That makes him the second president in 13 months, but the fourth Politburo member in 15 months to resign. I don't think it means a lot for the Vietnamese public. The leadership of the country is very autonomous, but it does matter for the business community. No country has benefited more from supply chain diversification out of China, uh, decoupling or decreasing, whichever term you <laughs> the, want to use. The government is autonomous from the people is sure one way to say it's a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. Ain't that ain't that some fucking yeah. vocabulary? <laughs> Oh, here you go, Australia. Come on. The button. Oh, look, Australian cops baiting minorities. Cool. Love that. <clears throat> Fuck you, Albanese, you fucking rat cunt. <laughs> Where are these people? Are are no idea. Now the Chinese foreign minister oh, look, is visiting Chinese Australia Kong. for the first time in seven years. Australia and China are rebuilding ties following a period of strained relations. L. That Canberra called for an independent investigation. Australia L. Of Ooh, Penny Wong. In response, Beijing imposed tariffs on imports of Australian goods. The tariffs cost Australia's economy an estimated thirteen billion dollars. Mm, here, here's a here's a better idea of how to deal with that. Uh, Fire, stop Penny sending Wong. that shit to China. Oh, you want to put tariffs on it? Okay, we're not sending it to you anymore. Womp womp. Bye. Thanks for playing. Uh, and especially with the coal. You know, just be like, oh, oh, tariffs? Oh, oh, womp womp. Oh, you want coal? Oh, you're going to have power blackouts without our coal? Oh, so poor baby. I guess we're not giving it to you anymore. You're saying you should act more like China? I'm saying that we should give them a taste of their own medicine, yes. Uh-huh. We should also, you know, considering that they love communism so much, um, take all of their foreign-owned properties and uh, redistribute it to Australians. Yeah, you know, anything Can connected you to the if Chinese Australia government. Did that, how the I, I would be would react. ecstatic. Any any connection to the Chinese government, corporate or personal, no ownership in Australia. But think about it. The commies in line would be mad about it. And it's like, wait, I thought you wanted land re redistribution from land. <laughs> it would be very funny. <laughs> and I'm not saying just China either. I'm saying blanket ban on foreign land ownership. Just blanket. Corporate ban, personal ban, unless you live in the country for at least three months of the year. 
I don't think that's unreasonable. Never gonna I don't happen. think you should be able to buy property in a country that you don't live in. Too much capital. Of course there's too much capital. It's never going to happen because there's too much capital. But what it does is it inflates the housing market from the population to the world. And therefore the housing market cap goes from uh, limited to unlimited. You well, know? Yeah. And oh, what, what, what happens? Oh, housing crisis. Crazy how that how that magically just happens because everything that they've been doing has been leading to it pretty wild yeah it's well, almost the like the stock this number go up oh uh, yeah number on paper go up good this country is a joke the past twists and turns over the decade leaves us with lessons to draw on as well as valuable experience i think that fundamentally it's about staying committed to mutual respect China never interferes in Australia's internal affairs. We respect Fuck off. the system as the part. Fuck off. <laughs> he said that with a straight face. That's fucking hilarious. That Australia has chosen. And when it comes to China's sovereignty, dignity, and legitimate concerns, we of course hope that Australia will continue to abide by the commitments made at the establishment of diplomatic ties. What my reaction right there as soon as he said that is the exact reaction they should have in person. Laugh in his face. Start laughing in their faces. Just Chinese diplomats straight up lying yeah, to I'm people. I'm sure Penny faces. Wong will get right on Laugh that. in their face. Do it with the Russians too. Do it with them all. Just laugh in their face. Don't even take them seriously. Just laugh in their face. Like, why? Serious question here. Why do we take them seriously? Money. Why not just laugh in their face? Capital. That, that's not an acceptable answer. I want well, an actual answer. That is the answer, though. Money. People like green mo money. They make money. It's not green. Greenbacks. At ease. If this is Hassan, you know, it would be an hour long breakdown on the functions of capitalism and how <laughs> all these like functions go together. To instead explain of it saying, completely incorrectly. <laughs> instead of just saying, this is capitalism, this is what happens. And no. since then, to provide your respect and proper handling. And as Foreign Minister, I have emphasised that it is in all of our interests to commit to preventive architecture to reduce the risk of conflict and that communication never be withheld as punishment Look, or offered as reward. Greenbacks is what I'm talking as you know, about. Dialogue enables us to I don't care about your plastic money. We both know <laughs> it does not eliminate them. <laughs> Fucking Australia will always money. be Australia and China will always be China. Shut up, Penny. Quit your job. Now more than ever, it is important that we have channels to discuss upholding a regional and global order uh -huh. shaped by a As opening channels with a genocidal regime, you cunt. Well, Adrian Brown joins us live now from New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. New Zealand. Adrian, so how significant then is this trip to Australia? Why are we what talking about New Zealand? Have to say? <laughs> well, it's very important. Darren. Wrong country. It's, a lot has happened in the last seven years since Wang Yi was last here in New Zealand. Al Jazeera thinks that New Zealand's a state of COVID, Australia. Of course, <laughs> and Australia's call during COVID for there to be a full <laughs> investigation into the origins of the disease. That led to... Uh, China imposing punitive tariffs of up to 218% on Australian wine, as well as things uh, like see, beef everyone. and cotton. Now, that hurt <laughs> Australia's economy very much, as you pointed out in your introduction. It cost them something like $13 billion. Well, now it something seems like relations are finally it. easing. But as Penny Wong has pointed out, great challenges remain in trying to manage the relationship with China. Uh -huh. They're going to have to agree Don't. to disagree. Okay, Penny Wong says that Australia wants to cooperate. With We're going to have to agree to disagree. disagree. Okay, that's called just appeasing to... genocide, by the way. That's, exactly that's code for yeah. we're, we're just going to appease genocide. <laughs> Handshakes and smiles belie the high stakes oh, that the Australian government faces <laughs> in managing its relations with China. Australia's Foreign Minister Penny Wong conceding the talks with Wang Yi were unlikely to resolve their many differences. Dialogue enables no us to manage our differences. What it doesn't way. eliminate them. Yep. Uh, but this government, in the interest of... You know what all this did? 
it gave China better standing on the world stage. It gave them an ability to uh, protect themselves from criticism on the global stage because they're here shaking hands with Australian leaders. Thanks, so Penny. She, Doing she really penny fucking wanged well. it when she should have penny wanged it. <laughs> Australian uh, will always seek to manage those differences wisely. As up. I said in the outset of my meeting, China will always be China. Australia will always be Australia. Uh -huh. There was no joint media conference. Wang's only comments ahead of his talks. China, he said, never interferes in Australia's internal affairs. Australia should do the same. When it comes, I mean, that's a pretty funny. It's a pretty funny thing to repeat. To China's sovereignty, dignity, and legitimate concerns. We, of course, hope that Australia will continue to abide by the commitments made at the establishment of diplomatic ties. Regional security remains a contentious issue for Australia, but on trade, friction is easing. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, hopeful a 218% tariff on Australian wine will be lifted shortly. Punitive China... Stop selling it to them! Fuck... Me, why is this so hard? <laughs> money, money. Oh, I hate people. I hate everybody. Chinese tariffs on most other exports have already been removed. During the height of the diplomatic fallout, Australian journalist Chung Lei was jailed for more than three years. Oh, cool. And we're just going to continue dealing with China, are we? Awesome. Love how pathetic and weak we are. What an awesome display of pathetic, pathetic fucking... Oh, there's no words. There are no words to describe how pathetic this makes Australia look. Unbelievable. On ill-defined allegations of sharing Chinese state secrets overseas. Wow, you mean a, a China arrested a foreign journalist for made-up reasons and held them for three years for no reason whatsoever? Wow, this sounds like a country we should be dealing with. Idiots. Last month, an Australian academic, Young Heng Jung, accused of espionage, was given a suspended death sentence. Australia Refer to what I just said. Australians were shocked at the sentence imposed, and I made clear to him that the Australian government will continue to advocate on Dr. Young's behalf. Oh, like you've been advocating for Julian Assange, another one of your fucking citizens hey, that you've just important let rot, message. You fucks. Money! Money! <laughs> Since Xi Jinping became China's leader 11 years ago, <laughs> He's made one repeated pledge. Someone should have fight any one challenges sided. to China. One sided host is one sided. I didn't say that. That never came out. Whoops. In a sovereignty. A sovereignty enforced, say analysts, by intimidating Square, Taiwan, right? <laughs> claiming ownership of almost all the South China Sea, and establishing a security presence in the South Pacific. Mm -hmm. where China now has Security. the largest diplomatic presence in the region. Uh -huh. While Wang Yi has been talking up trade in Australasia, his US counterpart, yeah. Anthony Blinken, has been deepening alliances with old allies, South Korea and the Philippines. Many smaller nations in the region, though, are wary of both the United States and China and don't wow. want to be forced to pick sides in what analysts Crazy. say could be the beginning of a new Cold what War. What a revelation. Adrian Brown. This is China's new security aspects, by the way. <laughs> Water cannons. The Philippine fucking boats can't get a break. You know, mm. they in their own waters, they're getting cummed on. Other waters, they're getting seized by Houthis. Yeah, they kind of. Didn't they claim break. Indian land? The Chinese? Yes, they have. There's uh, the border contested, uh, as mm -hmm. well as Kashmir. It's contested yeah. by all three states, but yeah, they're um, they actually. Um, um, the Chinese beat to death a, a bunch of Indian guys with rebar clubs because it's a demilitarized zone. So yeah, they, they just carry of, fucking uh, medieval maces yep. to beat each other with. And they beat these guys to death and threw them off the mountain. And then Jared went to fix it. 
Yay, Jared. Yeah, they sent Jared. And he fixed it. Mr. Mm -hmm. Kirshner, all of this must have a cost. He said it never happened. He said the Holocaust never happened. Thank you, Jared Kirshner. China's Coast Guard fired water cannons at Philippine ships in disputed waters of the South China Sea on Saturday. Actions the Philippines called irresponsible and says. provocative. Whale Wars. I Philippines love this show. It a civilian supply mm -hmm. vessel being doused by water cannons, which the country's task force on the South China Sea said uh, they're going to crash into them too. and injury to personnel on the boat. The civilian vessel was hired to resupply a small number of Filipino troops. The Philippines should outfit their fishing vessels with massive metal spikes and ram the Chinese ships. <laughs> Sink them. <laughs> Stationed on a grounded ship, the Philippines or used... go, hey, Ukraine, can we have some of those sea boats? <laughs> oh, they're talking about the, the grounded <laughs> ship. That they crashed in there to lay claim to the island, yeah, which like is the funniest way to lay claim to hilarious. an island. This is yeah, like they such have a, a military thing, you know? There. Yeah, like a like a ship that's crashed, and that's where the military mm -hmm. is based out of. Yeah, like they literally have a marine detachment on the ship to claim mm -hmm. the that's land that is about. literally in their EAZ. This <laughs> is to reinforce its sovereignty claims was being escorted by two Navy ships and two Coast Guard vessels, the Philippine military said. The Philippine Coast Guard said one of its Coast Guard vessels was also impeded and encircled by a Chinese Coast Guard ship and two Chinese maritime militia vessels. China claims almost the entire South China Sea, including the Second Thomas Shoal. Which it's is so funny the what they two. do to like not invoke a war. It's like, oh, we're going to mm -hmm. deliberately block you and encircle your fucking ships and be a dick to you. Like, to, to yeah. order something so childish, you know? Yeah. Like, to... This just goes back to what I was saying before about Australia. Right. To bend the knee and look so pathetic to a country this childish is just pathetic. Like, honestly pathetic. You would have a better shot going to the Philippines and saying, hey, we'll send some of our patrol boats out there to help you guys. You'd have a better shot putting a child to deal with yes diplomacy in general yeah yeah and and you know that did happen it worked out well send in jared <laughs> j-man 200 mile exclusive economic zone a 2016 ruling by the permanent court of arbitration found that china's sweeping claims have no legal basis china's coast guard said the philippine no. vessels ignored repeated <laughs> warnings and forced their way in it says all responsibility oh, for the incident lies what with do you, the Philippines. What do you mean? The water the borders don't China enforce sea themselves? Task force said the country will not be deterred by veiled threats or hostility. The threat has grown. Um, and so the what? U.S. has weighed in. It constantly points to Article 5 of the Mutual Defense Agreement, mm -hmm. which was signed in 1951. It now says that it now extends to all armed conflicts, mm. armed attacks mm. in all, in any area of the South China Sea. In practice, mm. what exactly does that mean? That oh, uh, okay, an, sir. A, a incursion, for example, uh, to occupy, uh, which has already happened, but we are still trying to, 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 to keep it uh, uh, peaceful. Uh, but you see, we are avoiding <laughs> We avoid, as I said, we think about peace in the, in the national interest. It is, it does not serve any purpose to heighten tensions, to say, okay, I am invoking now the mutual defense treaty, and uh, that that I don't think anyone wants that unless, unless you asked a very difficult mm -hmm. question here. Um, whoa, 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 hang on, unless, uh, unless start unless a war with the, China, nobody wants that, unless. The effects are such that it is a threat. It is. It will become an existential threat to the country. Then Do you have any I episodes with Lena? I've been to trying to get that Lena that to come on that would, forever. That would. Change. She's too shy. Uh, like um, I reference her. I talk about her all the time. Mm -hmm. I like. She's. She's also hilarious. Uh, like she. Like she does these threads. Like politicians if they were garbage cans and stuff like that but she'll also do it with jihadi groups and like what cocktails they'll be and stuff 
she's fucking hysterical but she won't she'll i she refuses i i I try to i literally have like tried to pressure her into it like you know (laughs) like not like uh over the line oh like you're doing this okay you know still (laughs) nothing trigger um the the mutual defense treaty the agreement between the united states and the philippines how confident are you about U.S. support? How far do you think the U.S. would go Could be to louder. support the Philippines? All right, let's just keep moving. Oh, well, hang on. I want to hear what he says at that. That's a good question. What will the U.S. do to support them? In the South China Sea. Well, th- thus far, uh, we, we oh, can say thus that far. the United States has been very, uh, certainly very supportive in every in every way. And um, and it has... Is it, this is Bong Bong, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. The United States has really uh, shown uh, that it takes very seriously these agreements that we have. And so, but it is dangerous for one to think in terms of when something goes wrong, we'll run to Big Brother. Uh, mm-hmm. th- that's not the way we treat it at all. I say, we, Based. We, okay, we, we can move on. We do Great this answer. For ourselves. Great answer. This, this is our country. This, this is we're not a puppet in the United States. Let's turn our attention away from markets. Great it's going to South China Sea, of course, a flashpoint. Uh, I'll be back. I'm just going to leave this running, but I'll turn it down so you can uh, talk over it if you need. I mean, to. I can always take over. Increasingly, so for tensions okay. in the Asia Pacific what here. Is so country- it's the one that you sent, yeah, and the okay. one that I was going to go to after this was. This one. So for tensions in the Asia Pacific here. So you have countries, and here's a fantastic map here for you, including, well, you have China, the Philippines, Malaysia, and Vietnam all have, as you can see, overlapping claims. And this massive waterway, Beijing, though, has claimed nearly all of it. Research-rich region here, including, of course, parts that Manila of the Philippines asserts that it actually belongs in an exclusive economic zone. So if you've missed the news recently, you've seen Chinese, well, just in case, Chinese and Philippine Coast Guard vessels have actually collided at least twice, twice in September. Uh, the Philippine Coast Guard says a clash in early March actually left four people injured. That happened off this disputed second Thomas Scholl, which is a claim not just by two countries, by several nations as well. But it isn't just Manila and Beijing locking horns. Last year, if you recall, the U.S. military accused... You're trying to figure out what she used to do as a job, private... She just says private security. Well, private security is, uh, you know, it's uh, a lot of things. That means, like, mercenary, though, you know, when people say private security. A Chinese fighter jet of coming in so close. Coming, the f- Chinese fighter jet, they edged it. They to an American it. bomber over the, that area that it nearly collided and caused a mid air accident. The US estimates that South China Sea holds trillions of dollars of offshore oh, oil and gas. It's home to some of the world's richest. Oh, I just want to point out that he said multiple countries. It's more than multiple countries. Um, the. South China Sea is literally split between like nine to ten to possibly twelve different countries. The South, uh, the South Thomas Shoal, Shoal or whatever the fuck it's called, I can't remember exactly its name. Thomas Shoal or something like that mm-hmm. is contested by about six different countries because it spreads over about six of their EEZs. So it's a lot more complicated than uh, people say, and how he uh, made it sound. It's very complex. I mean, the map is literally on screen on the screen at the start ground so. and also a major trade route washington also estimates that a waterway carries some three trillion dollars worth of goods annually which actually works out to be get this one third uh, of global trade all that in mind and all that at stake let's bring in Linda amin she spoke exclusively of course the philippine president bongo marcus has how was the conversation Well, it went really well. Uh, He was pretty frank in his uh, comments. You talked about how uh, there's been rising tensions in the South China Sea. And according to Marcos, uh, China has been pretty aggressive, forcing the hand of the Philippines, forcing the Philippines to respond in a bigger way. And that's not because uh, Philippines wants to provoke China. It is about national security, national sovereignty. So he has to make the moves. The moves have been more visible. The Philippines has been more vocal intentionally it is about his people he says but you know what he says in the end he does not want war he wants peace he wants uh relations to go back to an even 
kill his words. And he also said that he does not want to poke the bear. So you come away thinking he wants to uh, bring down the temperature. Take a listen to what he had to say. The threat has grown. Um, and since the threat has grown, we must uh, do more to, to defend our, our uh, territory. And uh, so maybe perhaps that's what that is, uh, what we people people are seeing uh, is that a more robust defense of our of our territorial rights uh, as uh, recognized by the international community through international law through the UNCLOS um, and, and we 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 hew very close to that we we do not we do not leave uh, very. And we, not, we have not instigated any kind of conflict. We have not instigated any kind of confrontation. The U.S. has weighed in. It constantly points to Article 5 of the Mutual Defense Agreement. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the United States stands by its commitment to defend the Philippines against armed attack in the South China Sea. Blinken is in Manila, where he's been meeting with the Philippines foreign minister. Tension has been rising with China over disputed waters in the South China Sea. These waterways are critical to the Philippines, to its security, to its economy, but they're also critical to the interests of uh, the region, uh, the United States, uh, and the world. <laughs> I love how flat out they're just saying it. Like, they're cr the, the water is critical to the interest of the United States. Like, he just said it flat out. World. Uh, it's why we stand with the Philippines uh, and stand by our ironclad defense commitments, including under the Mutual Defense Treaty. Article 4 extends to arm attacks on the Filipino armed forces, public vessels, aircraft, including those of its Coast Guard, anywhere in the South China Sea. Okay, well, Barnaby Lowe is live for us in Manila, and we heard a little bit there uh, about what Blinken had to say, but uh, did he also go into a little bit more how the United States will defend the Philippines from China's increasing aggression in the South China Sea? Bombs! Well, Tom, both U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Philippine Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Minado made clear that only an armed attack by China or any third country in the South China Sea or elsewhere would trigger the mutual defense treaty between the United States and the Philippines, wherein the United States could come to the rescue and um, act militarily on behalf of the Philippines. But that's not what's happening in the South China Sea right now. Um, analysts say that what China has been deploying are what's known as gray zone tactics. Uh, for example, military grade laser, the use of water cannon. And so short of um, activating the mutual defense treaty, Secretary Blinken said that the United States has been helping the Philippines shore up its defense capabilities. And in fact, the Philippines is the biggest recipient of military assistance by the United States in the Indo-Pacific region, amounting to about $1.14 billion worth of um, warplanes, for example, and military equipment from 2015 to 2022. And there's more to come in the form of drones uh, and air and um, coastal defense systems um, in the future. Now, Secretary Blinken also said that the U.S. has consistently condemned wow. what it views as harassment by the Chinese Coast Guard of Philippine uh, Coast Guard vessels in the South China Sea. And to that end, Secretary Blinken said that the United States has been building bigger alliances that include the Philippines. And these countries that are within these alliances, they've also condemned the actions by China in the South China Sea. Tom. And, and Barnaby, the, the White House has just announced a summit next month uh, between leaders of the U.S., Japan and the Philippines. What more do we know about that uh, meeting in Washington? Well, both secretaries did not provide uh, many details about the trilateral summit that's happening in Washington, D.C. Of course, we know that's happening next month on April 11th, and that will be between uh, the leaders of the U.S., the Philippines, and Japan. But what Secretary Blinken did say is that this trilateral summit has been a long time coming because the U.S. and Japan, the U.S. and the Philippines, and the Philippines and Japan have been building their relationships separately. President Marcos, since he became president in 2022, has met with U.S. President Joe Biden 
Joe times, Biden. And Marcos has also been to Japan to meet with Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. Kishida was here just last year. He addressed Philippine China on Wednesday launched a satellite bound for the dark side of the moon. It's meant to be a signal relay, a communications bridge for an upcoming mission and marks a new phase in Beijing's long-term lunar exploration program. Data transfers from the far side of the moon are impossible as there is no direct line of sight. The new satellite Tiaqiao 2 will orbit the moon and relay signals between Earth and a robotic mission to the moon's hidden side that is set for May. The mission aims include retrieving samples from an ancient basin. If successfully obtained, they would be the first lunar material acquired from the far side of the moon. By 2040, Beijing envisions Tiaqiao 2 will be part of a constellation of relay satellites. The constellation would support China's research station planned for the moon's south pole, as well as host communications for eventual crewed lunar missions or exploration on other planets like Mars and Venus. Dick Rocket. Their rocket literally looks like a bunch of plumbing supplies from Home Depot. <laughs> security. Dick Rocket. That comes. Chinese military and state-run media have accused the U.S. of threatening... <laughs> no. That comes days after Reuters reported Elon Musk's SpaceX was building hundreds of spy satellites for a U.S. intelligence agency. Uh -huh. SpaceX's Star Shield unit is developing the satellite network under a classified $1.8 billion contract with the National Take it away from him. Office, or NRO. That's according to a report released on Friday by Reuters, citing five sources familiar with the program. Ah, oh, fucking hate that. The social term. media account run by the People's Liberation Army or PLA said the SpaceX program exposed U.S. You hate what? That term. What term? Familiar with the source. Familiar with the source. And double standards. Washington has accused Chinese tech companies of threatening U.S. security. The editor of a magazine overseen by the ruling Communist Party was also quoted in the Global Times as saying the satellite project posed a challenge to global security and stability. Another company run by Musk, EV maker Tesla, has a large manufacturing presence in China. Neither the PLA run social media accounts or the Global Times mentioned Musk or Tesla. Wouldn't it be funny if he goes to the Reuters story China and then arrest them on the national security law because he's doing bad business? Systems. But it declined what? to comment yeah, on the extent uh, of SpaceX's involvement. I said, wouldn't it be funny if he went to China and they arrested him because he's doing business with foreign enemies? That would be funny, actually. <laughs> the world's largest satellite operator also didn't respond to several requests for comment about the contract. China has said it also plans to start building its own satellite constellations. SpaceX, NRO, and the Pentagon did not immediately respond to requests for comments on China's reaction to the contract. Someone shattered a glass. Haunted objects all around the globby. One sided, one sided. You're a globby. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you know what Australians call blowjobs? Blobbies. Gobbies. <laughs> <laughs> There's one for you. Uh, what do we want? China? China. Uh, Senegal elections. No, we need more China. There isn't any more China. Yes, there is. Lots of China. No, just stuff. Okay, this Russia's is Russia's Mossatom is close to completing Turkey's first nuclear power plant. And it's China in the says title. it has plans for the construction of a second Russian nuclear power station. With Russia under increasing sanctions by Western governments, analysts say nuclear power is key to breaking Moscow's financial isolation. Rosatom is not only in Turkey. They are also okay, in send, Hungary, send the other one. Send Finland, the last bit for the Egypt, actual one. Saudi Arabia, and therefore... They hmm? want to see the Turkish project. There's uh, just Senegal. Just control F Senegal. Yeah. You put it in there. There's a bunch of them. It's it's sorted by newest is at the bottom. So the, the newest election results will be at the bottom. The old news is at the top. Is 
There's a bunch. There's a few videos. We only need the update. Well, I think there's one about the girl who also ran. ...has won Senegal's okay. presidential election, according to provisional results released on Monday. That confirms what many of Fai supporters had already... Isn't that fucking celebrated. crazy? As results began trickling in on... I missed it. What happened? What they were doing. The, the torches that they had. Sunday A bridge just evening. collapsed. Okay. That confirms what I mean, obviously, oh, we didn't see it. What the fuck? We're sitting here. Celebrating as results began trickling in on Sunday evening. On Monday, the Electoral Commission announced Fai had secured 53.68% of the vote, based on tallies from 90% of polling stations, compared to 36.2% for the ruling Benno Bokia Car Coalition's candidate, Amadou Barr. My felicitations au président Diomaye Fai. Barr had earlier conceded defeat. He'd been backed by incumbent President Macky Sall, who is stepping down amid a drop in popularity after two terms marred by economic hardship and a violent anti-government protests. It's hoped that the vote will bring stability and an economic boost after three years of... You'll never, you're never going to guess what the first turmoil. thing to come up for that bridge That's collapse was. It's just You're happened. right, I never will. What was it? <clears throat> XQC. What the fuck is that? It's XQC. I don't. I have no idea who that is. He's like this. Oh, what am I looking at? He, he, he's like the sniper wolf of male React content. Oh my god. He just sits there and goes, "Whoa, crazy!" and doesn't say anything. <laughs> he's, he's like the worst reactor. Yeah, literally, yeah. like literally, it gets to a point where it's more like content theft. What is this? Ship collide. A ship collide with this bridge took out an entire bridge in Baltimore. Not the best source. Awesome. What the fuck? <laughs> Bro, that's a whole ass bridge. But how much does it cost us to build a bridge? A, a classic XQC, bro. <laughs> so, uh, that's not going to be good. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely going to come out of the federal budget to fix that thing. The backing of opposition leader Usman Sonko, who was barred from running due to a defamation conviction. <laughs> The two had campaigned together under the slogan, DMI is Sonko, and have promised to tackle corruption and prioritize national economic interests. They are particularly popular among young voters, in a country where more than 60% of people are under 25 and struggle to find jobs. Sonko and Fai's campaign was also buoyed by police crackdowns on protests, the government's failure to cushion rising living costs, and the authorities' failed attempt to postpone the election by 10 months. Senegal's international bonds rose on reports that Fai was close to being declared a winner, reversing sharp falls from earlier in the day. However, investors are also wary about a change in leadership to an anti-establishment government. Sonko and Fai have said they will introduce a new currency and renegotiate mining what? energy contracts in a country that is set to start producing oil and gas later this year. Okay. Good luck. Introduce a new currency. Welcome back. More on our breaking news now from Baltimore in the US, where a ship has brought down a road bridge. Miley Hogan joins me now from America. Miley, what's the very latest? What the fuck? Mark, good evening. This story is developing bit by bit. What I can tell you is that the Coast Guard has confirmed that it received a report of an impact at around 1.27 a.m. local time. That's around two Holy hours shit. ago. Now, local radio, we've been it? listening I, in there, and a number of people have been really called up saying oh. that they heard a large okay. bang and a large boom. Now, a number of authorities are rushing to that area. Roads around that bridge have That's now nuts. been blocked off. They are asking people to stay away from this area while they try to respond to this you can clear what the fuck 
was the boat driver doing? Yeah, Do you, and you think asleep? nobody? Uh, I mean, you think nobody on the ship was like, "Hey, you're gonna crash into that bridge, bro!" Like, what the fuck? Were there people driving on it? People had to have died, right? Like, there's no way nobody died. Look at that one I just saw. Clearly see in the vision of that collapse that there are cars on that bridge. There, there are multiple reports that there are now vehicles oh, in the water. Dead. A number of emergency crews <laughs> are now heading that way to do what they can. Well, I hope that guy enjoys prison. Look at the one I just sent you. Jesus Christ, that guy is going to jail for life. And that company is paying for that bridge. <laughs> We're right next to the key bridge. Oh what my god. Fuck? Like, what all the people on the bridge died, dude. What the fuck? No, oh no, my god. That's insane. How is there so much footage of it? Well, one was the key bridge footage. sinking. The bridge is gone. How crucial is this bridge to Baltimore? It was a big bridge. <laughs> like, does this connect two halves of the <laughs> center part of the city? <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell. Insane. What in the fuck? All right, back to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Women in power will not forget to actually help those women. And you know, once you solve the youth's problem, such as um, having access to jobs, as I always say, 50% of women's problems will be solved. In my first term, the first five years, I'll be creating five million jobs for those five years for all young people, I would say. But two million out of them will be dedicated to women. Yeah. Africa always looks As such a vibe when they're captain. fucking... I've doing their happy shit, women. like their festivals Financing and them. elections Training and shit. Them. <laughs> Showing them more opportunities. And those women, they are now the one talking for me. They say, Anta Babakar has helped me in the past. So if she's a president, she will help more women. Like, it's not just a female candidate, but it's a, like a hard line, like feminist candidate. Mm, you know? Yeah. It's probably very unusual in these countries, which is probably sh why she got squashed. <laughs> but I like the hustle. Respect it. Hello. Hello. You like Africa. <laughs> Maintenant, c'est les femmes qui vont diriger ce beau pays, le Sénégal. Mm -hmm. On doit construire ce Sénégal sur des valeurs, sur l'autonomisation des femmes. Yeah, they look like they're like uh, they're like diff there's two different closures, right? So they have the standard like small hoop, and then the bigger mm. hoops were like because like normally you would um, wear those in stretched ears. 
-hmm. like that type of large hoop, but because they okay. had like the small ring here and then it threaded mm -hmm. through that ring to like dangle. Mm -hmm. Smart. Mm. That's not Senegal. I mean, that's it. We can. All right. I think we've pretty much hit everything so far. Uh, Europe? We can come back to global stuff too. True. Oh, good. We've shortened down the list. It was yes. at, uh, much higher. But you, uh, you look through if there's anything that's global that you still want to talk about. Okay. Anything that's above like seven days, I'm going to delete it. Mm hmm. I'm just going to pick a video to play. Oh, yeah, there's different ones. There's... Three of the world's top tech giants face investigations oh, in one. the EU. Antitrust regulators said Monday Apple, Alphabet's Google, and Meta will be investigated for oh, potential breaches. Right, so let me explain market. what's going on. Let me explain what's going on. Um, you know how like um, Apple owns the App Store? Mm -hmm. That's illegal in the EU. Oh, uh, really? That's basically what they've determined. Yes, they must divest the app store to be owned by someone else in the EU. Huh. And and this could piggyback up to uh, be a policy that America does pick up, which would be hmm. great. And what does that mean? It means things like Fortnite and shit can go back on the Apple devices? Well, they... Uh, um there's a lot of reasons for why they ruled this like because like they charge for it they make like it like uh they were giving themselves inflated reviews through the app store for their own stuff they're giving themselves priority along mm -hmm. all this stuff <clears throat> and so that's like not fair practice okay so that's the it's not so much it's not so much that they were using the store to transaction but everything that they were doing that was over the line from there yeah okay how do I sort? But this, this, I've known about this coming for months, though. I mean, mm -hmm. like, um, we were pretty sure it was gonna the the court was gonna yeah. pass it for months now. But anyway, let's finish it. See what, if they explain it better than me. What did I do? Oh my god, we're all good. We're fine. The law became effective from March 7th. It has strict rules for six gatekeepers, which are companies which provide services like search engines, social networks, and chat apps used by other businesses. The gatekeepers must comply with mm. guidance to ensure a level playing so, field for rivals. So, so, yeah, so specifically what choices. they're saying is that these apps are used by businesses for business. So you cannot be using that to shortcut those businesses. Fair. It's fair trading practice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Violations hey, genocide company. result in fines mm -hmm. of as much as a tenth of the company's global annual turnover. The European Commission said it suspects the measures put in place by these gatekeepers fall short of effective compliance under the Act. EU antitrust chief Margrethe Vestager. These decisions. We need antitrust open chiefs in our union. Compliance investigation. They come only uh, two weeks after the implementation deadline has passed and show that the DMA compliance is something that we take really seriously. The EU competition enforcer will investigate Apple's rules on steering in Google Play and self-preferencing on Google Search. We will also look at Apple's rules on steering in the app yeah, store. Yeah, which we said. Oh, this, <clears throat> for Safari. this will fix broken Google. Interesting. Because Google's broken because you can just pay to be at the top. Well, that might I get think, rid you might I have think to get that part's it. fine. It's the fact that Google inflated themselves. Right. Meta's pay or consent model has also caught their attention. <laughs> A Meta spokesperson said the company was working to comply with the Act's guidance. Google said it would defend its approach in the coming months. Apple said it was confident its plan complied with the Digital Markets Act. 
Regulators aim to wrap up the investigations within a year. I mean, this is just, you know, going to U.S. This is also fun. You got to love yeah. people who have lost their jobs and then come back to finally like sort of, you know, get into like a, a, a Bullworth type of situation where they get to uh, speak from the heart. And here is Sean McCarthy. Man, he looks psychotic. <laughs> uh, put that put that picture up. Like, I get really like what? <laughs> I mean, he's in a lot of pain. It's either right Sean now. McCarthy or it's like a cutout of Sean Kevin, McCarthy. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin McCarthy. Sorry, Kevin McCarthy. I don't know where I get the Sean. You're thinking of Hannity? Yeah, it's Sean. Community. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> um, but uh, here he is with Jesse Waters. And um, Sam can't tell all the Irish guys apart. No, I can't. So, actually, everyone so, I knew named McCarthy. So bigoted. Everybody I knew named McCarthy in Worcester was named Sean or, or Seamus. Or Kevin. Or Kathleen. No, not Kevin. Okay. No, no. no. Um, so here's Kevin McCarthy, um, former uh, Speaker of the House and former congressman. And uh, in many ways, responsible. They just fucking waffled on for another fucking minute. Jesus Christ. Well, I don't know what they're doing spending now, but when I became speaker, I instituted a 72 hour rule that got not just the members the opportunity to read the bill, but America as well. You never waive it unless it's a continuing resolution, something you're already doing so people would know. I, I think it's always helpful to allow people to read the bill. <laughs> still allow around. America yeah, he didn't go bill. anywhere. And really, this comes they down to what's happening in Congress speaker. today. Goes back, <laughs> back to when those eight. Republicans led by Gates partnered with every single Democrat to decide who could be speaker. That's when Republicans lost the majority. Jesse, remember what we were able to do in a small majority the first nine months, the strongest, most conservative border security bill, energy independent. We did a parent's bill of rights. We stopped DC from decriminalizing. We stopped the pandemic officially. We stopped them from kicking out our men and women in the military who refused the vaccine. We had the biggest cut and savings voted on American history, more than two trillion dollars. We got welfare care. reform. God, we yeah, got twenty yeah, billion of that boring. from the IRS oh, that was going to hire to go Lord. after us. Very huh? Oh, bored. Successful when you work together with a small boring. majority, so, and all those bills. Next, have... let, let's see what they have to say. No, no next, we'll, we'll see what they have to say. No, boring. Okay. Boring. You add this shit. Hey, I thought it would be funny, and they because. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's just Fox News ramblings. You're not coming back, bro. Give up. Law enforcement sources are telling ABC News that right now authorities are carrying out searches Hitler. at properties associated with P. Diddy. This is all part of a federal investigation into Hitler. human trafficking. They also say sure that this investigation now. has been ongoing now for but now several it's months. P. P. Diddler. Yeah, I don't know. He's changed his name a couple of times, right? I, uh, I yeah, now it's Diddler. An arrest <laughs> does not appear to be imminent at this time, but what you are looking at right now is live video of one of these uh, searches being conducted. Now, this is a search that is happening at Sean Diddy Combs Los Angeles homes is in the Beverly Hills area. Uh, so you can see a tremendous amount of law enforcement present there all around that home. Uh, so this search just began here. There's also, as we understand, another search being conducted on the other side of the country uh, in Miami because we are hearing from Homeland Security uh, that there are investigations going on using the assistance of HSI Los Angeles and HSI Miami, along with local law enforcement partners. Uh, we do understand that they will provide us with updates as possible, uh, but this goes into um, multiple allegations against Sean Diddy Combs over the years. There's been several civil suits against him as well, uh, including 
human trafficking, all Mint. of which uh, he has denied, as this has been ongoing. But again, clearly an escalation that we are seeing play out live right now in Los Angeles. I want to bring in our ABC News contributor and trial attorney, Brian Buckmeyer, who I know, Brian, you have been following this case for many months, uh, and you bring it up to me all the time. And now I wouldn't call this the culmination. In fact, probably this is just the beginning, right? So what do you make of the fact that they've decided to carry out these two searches simultaneously and on other sides of the country here? So, Kayla, you're right. I've been talking to this about this for too long. But what, what does it get you? What does a person need to have the ability to search a home? Probable cause. So what I'm doing is I'm looking backwards. How could a judge grant the ability to search these two homes and why would you do it simultaneously? Probable cause being the belief or at least having the quantity of information that a crime either did happen is happening or is going to happen. That's how law enforcement must have to prove uh, to a judge or a court why yep. they have the opportunity or the legal ability. Bro, to why are they there? We get you... how a search warrant works. <laughs> I'm sorry for scaring you, Sapata. Please don't scream and cry at me. Do it in conjunction from one property and another at the same time. Law enforcement typically does this because they are worried that information or property or evidence may be hidden away or destroyed while you're searching one property. And so they're looking for something to corroborate the belief that they have that a crime did occur. And as you pointed out earlier, he's facing multiple allegations of sex trafficking. So perhaps that is a crime in which they're investigating. Perhaps that is what they're trying to seek more information from. But in order to search a home, you have to have probable cause. The only question is probable cause of what? Probable cause. And so, Brian, as as you look at this and you watch this and we'll shout if we see anything, any more movement on these screens. But it is important to note, right, that this is all being what run out of the Southern District of New York here. So there is a tremendous to amount time, of coordination happening uh, within law Why are they there? The like, come on. That's Absolutely. why we're and watching. The why, the why is it happening? You've been following this case for months. Tell me what the probable the cause is, Manhattan is a lot of. You would think that they would get to it sooner, right? No, they they are also searching hours. a home simultaneously uh, in Los Angeles in the Beverly Hills area at the exact two. So since we don't know kind of what they're looking for, I can give you. Okay, great. Fuck well, me. that's that story. Great. All right, we're just going through random stuff now. <laughs> it's no real particular order. Um, we, there's looking. So at I am resigning as president well. and leader of Finnegale effective today. What? There's Gaza ceasefire on the Gaza list as well. Okay. And will resign as Taoiseach as soon as my successor is able to take up that office. Leo Varadkar said on Wednesday he would step down as Ireland's Prime Minister and the leader of the governing Fine Gael party. In a hastily arranged news conference outside government buildings in Dublin, he said there is no real reason behind his surprise departure. This is departure. literally Joe okay. Biden visited him and he resigned right after. <laughs> the coup. Today celebrates uh, 100 years. That's right. 100 years uh, diplomatic relations uh, between Ireland and America. Just days also, before St. Patrick's Day. He like US just Biden into his Biden face. And Irish like Prime the Minister speech he gave was, was like Friday. super like enabling genocide in Palestine type stuff. Mm -hmm. Which is not something we see like uh, France has done that before with some other country. Yeah. I remember we were laughing at that once before. <clears throat> Let's to work together to secure a ceasefire in the Israel Hamas conflict. We're working together to increase humanitarian assistance in Gaza, and we both know that a whole lot more has to be done. We need to have a ceasefire as soon as possible uh, to get food and medicine in, to get the hostages out. And um, we need to talk about how, how we can make that happen. and move towards a two-state solution, which I think is the only, the only way we'll have lasting peace. During Friday's meeting, Biden also reacted to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's call a day earlier for new elections in Israel in his harsh criticism of Prime Minister Benjamin <laughs> Netanyahu. What a great picture to pick for him. ...speech, and I think he uh, expressed a serious concern, <gasps> not only by him, but by many Americans. The focus on a Gaza truce comes as Biden, you see who prides himself in his Irish Catholic heritage. Yeah, he did you hear what he said right there, though, the specifically? No, I missed it. He said you, that he's back in what... You too loud. I said, <laughs> I was gasping. I'm saying Chuck... Sh he said Ch he's backing what Chuck Schumer said 100%, basically. Interesting.
Oh, look, there's Ghoul Man right behind yours. <laughs> the United Nations Security Council on Friday turned down a U.S.-led resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and Why? an Israel-Hamas hostage deal after Why? Russia and China vetoed the measure. Why? The move White House spokesman John Kirby said was hardly a surprise. Why? The resolution called for an immediate ceasefire lasting roughly six weeks that would protect mm. civilians and allow for the delivery of humanitarian assistance. Mm -hmm. 11 of the 15 member council voted for the resolution. The vast majority of this council voted in favor of this resolution. But unfortunately, Russia and China decided to exercise its veto. U.S. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield told the Security Council that the two nations had cynical and petty reasons, saying they opposed the resolution simply because it was penned by the U.S. and criticized both countries for not condemning Hamas's October 7th attack on Israel. What? Russian oh Ambassador Vasilina Benzia said the resolution was exceedingly politicized and contained an effective green light for Israel to mount a military operation in Rafah, a city in southern Gaza where more than a million Palestinians have been sheltering in makeshift tents. Zhang Jun, China's ambassador, said the U.S. resolution fell short of expectations by only setting preconditions for a ceasefire and echoed Russia's comments. The U.S. has wanted any Security Council support for a ceasefire to be linked to the release of hostages held by Hamas in Gaza, vetoing three previous ceasefire resolutions put forward by the Council. Friday was the first time Washington had backed a text with the word ceasefire in it, reflecting a toughening of the Biden administration's stance toward Israel. The Council will reconvene on Saturday morning to vote on an alternative resolution drafted by elected members of the Security Council, diplomats said. Elected. Vice President Kamala Harris visited. They said Harvard. elected. Elected. Wacky politics. Russia and China have Whack. vetoed a U.S. led U.N. resolution on Gaza ceasefire. Over and over and over again, the U.S. vetoed previous efforts at denunciation or action with regards to what's going on in the Gaza Strip. And this time, and Russia and China tag teaming Wait, to drop hang, the elbow. Hang on, hang on. What did you the... say? With denunciation or action? They they vetoed ceasefires, bro. What are, what are you saying? Use English words. I don't know what he means the by strip. that. And this time, Russia and China tag teaming to drop the elbow on the U.S. Red, uh, US led resolution. Yeah, the UNO reverse card. How the turntables. So this is a fascinating one, but it's also one that makes a lot of sense if you take a second to think about it. Uh, like so the way uh, the like goblins get drawn in porn. They're all like thick short stacks. Explanation that has been given by China and Russia that the U.S.-led resolution was exceedingly politicized and contained an effective green light for Israel to mount a military operation in Rafah, a city on the southern tip of the Gaza Strip. This is just the article version Quote, of the video we watched. This would free the hands of Israel and it would result I in... Admit. Yeah, but so I still want to hear okay. Vash's interpretation of All this. of Gaza and its entire population having to face destruction, devastation, or expulsion, Nebenzia told the meeting. Now, of course, that was going to happen anyway, right? The invasion of Rafah. Basically, what Russia and China's reps are saying is, why don't we go with some of these other ceasefire deals, right? Like pointing at all the other ones that have been proposed. He because those ones didn't have hostages the in them. Drafted mm. an alternate resolution and said there was no reason for members not to support it. China's UN ambassador, Zhang Jun, I assume I mispronounced that, criticized <laughs> the text proposed by the US for not clearly stating its opposition to a planned oh, military nice. operation in Israel by Rafah, which he said could lead to severe consequences. So basically, Russia and China's officials are saying, we don't want to sign off on this one because there are better ones. Uh, the better ones would provide more protections. Now, this is dishonest from Russia and China, of course, because Thank they you. know that this was the best they were going to get. The United mm -hmm. States has made it pretty clear that they don't have the balls to stand up and support any kind of UN condemnation. Basic, real basic thing to be able to see point. through here. So we're basically in a position here where Russia and China are daring America to be better while knowing they're not going to be. So why then no, would but, Russia and China do this? Why put does, America is he going to miss that the, to all they did is actually kick it to, to an elected legislative body within the council to draft? So oh, that did way they? Yeah, that's all they said is that they're... Oh, that it's so, free from American influence? Yes. So yeah. it's it's going to be drafted by the elected body. 
an alternate Maybe. version of what America put forward specifically, yeah. though. Okay. This half man voice scares me. Yeah, it's the horse in him. He's got that dog in him. <laughs> to be therefore allowing no resolution to go through instead well i think at this point it's because russia and china both understand that what's happening in the gaza strip right now makes us look awful right now american international order is tanking because we are essentially stomping I mean, on this a is a okay take that we claim to uphold yeah. to defend i think Israel. it's a i think we it's just are a little validating more petty and stupid in many ways i wouldn't to put too the, much um, credit to their thinking and plotting <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they're not they're not thinking ahead they're just like oh what's the next thing that we can do the global community one of the most obvious examples of this would be the fact that right now america is like tanking any potential opportunity for uh peace in the middle east in the future right our ability to get along with uh the houthis in yemen our ability to get along with uh, you know, uh, 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 Hezbollah or Iran or any other like regional power going out the window. That's just one. But the rest of the world, again, with the exception of like Western Europe and a few other countries, the it's rest of the world really doesn't poly, like what Israel is doing. It, it makes us look bad as well. So that's it. Therefore, that's all it is. Russia and China kind of benefit from this destabilization. You know, they benefit from us hampering ourselves in that way. I, I think there is like the possibility of sincerity here, but to me, it's most likely that at this point, like Russia and China are both holding our hand in the fire. You know what I mean? Like they're basically saying, oh, we fun. know you're not going to go for a better ceasefire resolution because you suck. So we're going to let you <laughs> suffer with none at all. You know, you're going to own up to this and you're going to defend it when it happens too, because we know that you've been so bad about this. You're probably not going to turn back now. Yeah, exactly. You made this cake, now eat it. Now, it is possible, of course, that America actually steps up and backs one of the other proposed ceasefire resolutions, and that would make us look good. It would make Russia and the China other ones look good, don't too, have because hostages they would have in them. It's that successfully simple. Successfully negotiated us into a better deal. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think America's going to go for that. Made, you know? made like by that for a reason. So just using a genocide for brownie points. You already there. figured well, it out that this denigrate. one was to make America look mm -hmm. bad. Great us on the global stage. Yeah, they are calling our bluff to an extent. <laughs> Why are they so stupid? Russia and China are actually doing the smart thing here. They are. Keep in mind, like this is all real politic. Very rarely do big, powerful countries care about human life in other countries. Mm -hmm. What are you, insane? Yeah. Are you a child? No, of course not. Uh, Every big nation at some point in order to not like this man, or extend you know, no. its power is going to have to put millions of people's lives on the scale against something uh -huh. else. They <laughs> China and Russia have both done this many times. We have done this many, many, many times. Just, yeah. Well, I guess China's done it the most because they've been around the longest, but whatever. We've all done this, what? okay? Uh, the lives of the Palestinians in the eyes of Russia and China are worth a lot less than the claps of global support for the American-led <laughs> world order, right? So they are, in in my opinion, intelligently, it's in their best interest. They're trying yeah. to, you know, force us to eat the cake that we've made for ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, like in a moral level, it's quite bad. But also, mm -hmm. in fairness, the UN-led ceasefire isn't going to do very, or sorry, the US-led ceasefire resolution isn't going to do very much you know again it's a pause for ramadan uh it doesn't actually stop the conflict i think mm -hmm. that america is also just desperately trying to cobble its uh you know it's 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 optics spaghetti and pull it back up you know and put it in its pockets i don't think they're yeah. going to successfully okay. looks like the rafat attack is going to happen soon yeah it seems so sometime during ramadan yeah probably. i'm bro oh, they've Kowalski, been saying that I it's going to happen USA tomorrow this, this entire the time UN. i'm just saying it's been a month of them saying stuck. rafa tomorrow um, but they're as bluffing. long as we're going to use the un as like a tepid uh you know half-hearted attempt at delaying the optical consequences of what israel is doing russia and china are taking advantage of this in a way that benefits them you know but i i don't think it's surprising really uh it seems like a pretty straightforward extension of their material interest. Mm. Just curious, mm -hmm. how would I mean, you directly, directly stop the IDF invasion? I don't know. I, I, there's not much more to say, I feel. Yeah. Was there anything might, else about might... Gaza specifically? Yes. The ceasefire that happened. 
this is the ceasefire that failed. There's already a new one that passed. Okay, where is it? It's in there. I mm -hmm. key searched ceasefire and they were all that came up. Are you on the Gaza list? Yes. Okay, it's going to be at the bottom. Maybe you're spelling it wrong. Got it. The draft resolution has been adopted as resolution 2728. In a rare break of decorum, the Security Council chamber erupts into applause, perhaps a sign of relief. It was moments after the council adopted a long-awaited resolution for an immediate Ramadan ceasefire in Gaza and the expanded flow of humanitarian aid. Okay, but what if Israel could just be like, fuck off. And then what? Were they just going to finger wag at them? Or are they actually well, going to send people in there to tell Israel to fuck off? I mean, off? what else? It's, it's just another diplomatic pressure point that they're going to do. So nothing's happened. Basically. I mean, it's, a, I mean, it's, a, it's considering how little progress has happened. It's a lot of progress considering on that metric, you know? Sure. It may so have just moved an low, inch. Yeah. It may have just moved an inch, but it took a month. You know, it took months to move yeah. that one inch. The vote was decisive. Fourteen council members voting in favor. The U.S. abstained, allowing the resolution to be adopted. The fighting must stop. The killings must stop. The suffering and collective punishment must end. After more than five months collective of a war punishment. of utter terror. Mm -hmm. and destruction. A ceasefire is the difference between life and death for the hundreds of thousands of Palestinians and others. Riyad Mansour, the Palestinian ambassador, got emotional. This must signal the end of this assault of atrocities against our people. A nation is being murdered. A nation is being dispossessed. A nation is being displaced for decades now, but never at this scale since the Nakba. The Israeli ambassador said the council is biased against his country. Of course oh he my this God. Council, Israeli blood no, is cheap. We don't care what you have to fucking This is a travesty, from. and I'm disgusted. Uh huh. We don't care. In the last few months, the U.S. has vetoed three separate draft resolutions demanding a ceasefire. Why? But this time was different. Critically, a ceasefire and the release of hostages will allow much more humanitarian aid. What? I said, I said, keep going, why? Because they don't include the uh, context that's appropriate for that. Right. To get into Gaza at a time when famine is looming large. When UN Security Council resolutions are adopted, they become international law. But during her remarks, the U.S. ambassador made a curious and surprising comment, saying that the resolution would be non-binding. After the vote, when asked about this, a U.N. spokesperson said that the U.S. appears to be wrong. <laughs> All the resolutions of the Security Council are international law. So, uh, yeah. so to that extent, uh, they are as binding as international law is. In a post on social media, UN Secretary General said the ceasefire resolution is long awaited and called for it to be implemented, saying failure to do so would be unforgivable. Gabriel Zondo, Al Jazeera, like the United the Nations in New York. Council? Uh, it changes. Oh, okay. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to no. get the latest news from Al Jazeera. I already am subscribed. Leave me alone. <laughs> We finally got a ceasefire, guys. America abstained rather get, than blocking it. his take on it again. Yay. I guess. Yay. The Security Council demands an immediate Gaza ceasefire. What are the conditions of the demand? Now, guys, we've finally done it. The United Nations is, is, is finally ready to take action. Yeah. The famously effective United Nations. And, and again, to point out here, I just want to be clear. 
because it's just like how they fuck how Russia uses that map that's literally just like these are the countries that voted to keep Nazism mm -hmm. around, but it was just the anti-Ukraine bill that was yeah. like a um uh, performative bill, right? Mm -hmm. So these resolutions that they brought up in the past, they knew they wouldn't pass because they didn't include the hostages in there. Mm -hmm. So if you if the US said, Oh, we're not gonna vote yes if there's no hostages in there, and then you do it two more times with no hostages in there and it still doesn't pass. And the first one that actually moves forward is the one that's drafted by the US and then turned over to the elected council that's elected among like the states, right? So it's like it's those countries' representatives, like they're they're like yeah. um so like different um people inside the security councils. Like they have like um, observer states and stuff. So like the observer yeah. states, I think, are the ones that wrote it. So like, um, like you know, African countries helped draft the new one, right? But it was based off of what the U.S. had already presented. So basically, they repackaged the exact same ceasefire, and it passed. And the U.S. <laughs> abstained because they wouldn't stand behind it. That's because hilarious. they have to be petty too, right? Uh huh. Failure would be unforgivable, and it's pretty severe language from UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Uh, Netanyahu said the failure of the U.S. to veto the resolution was a clear retreat from its previous position. That is true. No, it's and not. Hurt Israel's war retreat? efforts and mm. bid to release more than 130 hostages. The position has always been Our the hostages not... need to be there for the ceasefire. Yeah, it's not changed, Netanyahu. It's been mm -hmm. the same. And I repeat, that does not represent a shift in our policy. White House spokesperson John Kirby told reporters, nothing has exactly. changed about our policy, nothing. Exactly. Pathetic. John so Kirby is right. Pathetic. Nothing has changed. They're so, it's the they're same so demand. locked in the cuck corner. You know, even when they shift from blocking no, these UN... No, they're not, Vosh. It's the same no, we're not demands changing any... they've always like, had. Jesus. Ridiculous. Israel canceled a visit to Washington because of this? I'm sure, uh, you know, nothing would have gotten done here anyway. Watch the resolution, don't mind if I do. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S-2024-254 please stay, raise their hand. What the f*** is on his ear? They all speak different languages, guys. It's the UN. <laughs> they all have teams oh of translators God. who are listening Bro. in from an alcove above what the an uh, security council chamber. And they, uh, if they can't speak English or whatever other language is being spoken. Those are against. Abstention. U.S. abstains. The draft resolution has been adopted as resolution 2728. Everyone in the room is happy. They were all waiting for, uh, yeah, sweating, flop sweating as they stare at the United States representative. Mm -hmm. Security Council has just passed a new Gaza ceasefire resolution. The U.S. abstained from the vote, still significant though, it did not veto all other members of the Security Council voted in favor. This comes after the Security Council failed to pass a resolution put forth by the U.S. on Friday. This new mm -hmm. resolution was put forth Crazy by some of the, the non-permanent members of the Council. Mm. New text demands an immediate ceasefire leading to a permanent, sustainable ceasefire. It also demands... Wait, permanent? I didn't realize it was a permanent one. Ends quote, the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages yes. so and the, that all so barriers are lifted the to provide. Main change, the main change in wording from the U.S. one. Mm. Can you play it back? What did he what did he say? I need a refresh. So the new text demands an immediate ceasefire leading to a permanent sustainable okay. so that's ceasefire. The new text. It also demands the new text specifically is the immediate ceasefire leading to a permanent ceasefire the u.s said i think it was just immediate and sustainable that's what uh, the green light thing that they were talking about yeah right because it doesn't say permanent yeah 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 and so all they did was add the word permanent okay and they changed one, they literally changed one word. Yeah, okay. And America's like, oh, but it's not the US. Exactly the US didn't what pass it was. This. The US didn't draft yeah. this entire document. Okay. okay. Ends quote, the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. Fair enough. 
and that all barriers are lifted to providing humanitarian assistance needed for Gaza. Those all the issues that have been brewing over this question for. Well, that's fine. Obviously, if there was going to be a permanent ceasefire, you would also want the hostages to be released. How much? Yes, this Bosh, it's well, almost it's like UN, that's why so. America vetoed so are all the three times. members of the council who don't get a veto just for show. No, no, no. They still vote. They just don't have the uh, veto power. You know, they 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 still weigh in on any vote, but they're not part of the big five. So basically nothing will happen. Well, not necessarily. There's a reason why Israel has been so harsh on the UN, the UNRWA, and why they've demanded that America shield them as uh, since we're in the Security Council as a permanent member, uh, you know, so uh, so aggressively. Yeah, the, the UN is now Hamas, of course. Betterment had a deranged response. That's not surprising. It's appalling that the US allowed passage of a resolution that fails to... Holy shit. I'm so glad I picked up this phone call. You'll have, you will not fucking believe this. Oh my god, I hung up. I'm so disappointed. So it was a it was a call from like a home phone number in Terelgan, which is like in Gippsland. It's forever away. Anyway, I pick it up. Here's something. I'm like, oh, that was weird. And it starts speaking Chinese. I'm like, this is very strange. <laughs> and it repeats the phrase. It says, Chinese embassy. <laughs> so I might call this phone number back. I'll be back. <laughs> they, they, no, no, no. They knew. No, come on. They knew you were watching anti-China stuff on, on the channel. <laughs> I'm fucking losing my mind. That's hilarious. <laughs> Condemn Hamas. Ah, they, they forgot to put that part in. The UN has always been unwilling to condemn this group of terrorists, cowards, and rapists. We must stand with Israel, stop pandering the political fringe, or Hamas apologists. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Fetterman. Thank you. Um, Very, good. Very good. The UN literally wrote are a, dying. pushed the thank report you, that sexual violence happened. That Remember when that happened, Fetterman? That was a big report that they backed up. Oh, Does this mean we are Hamas? We've Israel been Hamas is for a long Palestinians? I did not. Well, of course they are. I mean, yeah, that's to be expected, right? Exactly. Time, I feel. We've been Hamas. I got accused of being Hamas since I we, you know, we all raised money to donate to the uh PCRF back in 2021 after the uh, uh Israeli, you know, missile strikes and on, on uh, you know, across uh, uh, the Gaza City. Has Fetterman condemned Hamas? And perhaps he's pointing the finger at others so people don't point the finger at him. Has he ever condemned Hamas? Literally one Google search and I found the Secretary General condemning Hamas. Oh, shucks. Well, yeah. You know, anyway, they canceled a visit the to Washington. The U.S. is talking about Russia and China having not condemned Hamas, not the fucking U.N. The oh, US Fetterman did, though. Fetterman the is the dumb one. He's... Decision to canceled the trip Sorry. one u.s official told cnn scrapping the visit was an overreaction that likely reflects netanyahu's own domestic political concerns yeah of course netanyahu did not communicate directly with biden over the decision. Is a cry you, bitch, uh, are you are you guys reporting. ready for uh biden to cravenly uh you know demand or beg attention from netanyahu after being screened like this and the president has no plans to phone Netanyahu to discuss the matter, the official said. Well, that's nice, at least. Separately, it's Israel crazy. agreed to a it's U.S. It's crazy pro- how he made an assumption, and then immediately after that, it says the U.S. is literally just done. And he, it's like, okay, are you going to correct the assumption you just made, bro? He literally backed up Schumer. We get we gave the green light to oppose Israel on this. Proposal on a prisoner hostage exchange, according to CNN analyst Barack Ravid's reporting on the recent round of talks in Doha. The reported deal could see the release of around 700 Palestinian prisoners, among 100 serving life sentences for killing Israeli nationals in exchange for the release of 40 Israeli hostages held by Hamas in Gaza. We'll see how much action this actually leads to. So what's this thing that was linked to me about um, Guyana? Until October 2023. It's a five month. Okay, this is Guyana talking about the previous ceasefire proposal that got shut down by China and Russia. Of war How's this in relevant? Gaza? and the horrific attacks of 7th October 2023, this council has still not been able to adopt a text that addresses all the dimensions of the conflict in a manner that impacts the situation on the ground and upholds the rule of law. 
Contrary to some media and other reports, this resolution does not call. Okay, wait. Yeah, this is for the previous one. All right, this is out of date now. There's not really much point in learning about the specifics of the previous ceasefire resolution if this one isn't the one that even got put forward. Looks like uh, Russia and China actually got I vehemently exactly what disagree. They wanted. Their decision to veto the previous yeah. So one I think the U.S. said wrote a sustainable and lasting ceasefire. So their issue is they wanted immediate and lasting ceasefire. Yeah, right. That was the word. It was one word yeah. that they wouldn't accept. That's all. Mm -hmm. Led to this. I mean, that, that seems like a pretty obvious dub. I love how narrativized even still that CNN article is. 700 prisoners, 100 serving life sentences for killing Israeli nationals when most of them are women and children. Yeah, also, by Israeli nationals, do they mean civilians or soldiers, right? Like, nationals, okay. So, if you mean soldiers, then then they're just equal combatants. Or, like, what do you mean by that? Yeah, the, the system for detaining Palestinians is, is pretty psychotic. Maybe lack of a system, you know? Or settlers? Yeah, well, I guess it would depend on who started it. Still, this is really good news. The White House sees the public of Israel over UN security resolution as an artificial crisis manufactured by Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu for do, uh, domestic political reasons, three US officials told. My story in Axios. Yeah, so let's think about this, right? I didn't expect the United States to go ahead and like let Using their hands off the table and allow this to go through, which makes me wonder to what extent is this being calculated, you know, or, or, or planned for by Netanyahu, you know? It's possible that Netanyahu understands that at this point he has been openly fascist for too long. Uh, he has sort of lost the mandate of heaven, as it were. The United States <laughs> is nominally supporting Israel, but we're not providing the kind of like zealous support that Netanyahu wants. So maybe he's consolidating. Maybe he's doing some juicy shit, okay? He's going to like pull back and say like, ah, the United States has abandoned us, you know, and try to rally the domestic base by by contrasting their will against that of the rest of the world. It could be like a victim thing. Do you check? Like, like North Korea. It was a joke. Yeah. So you mean a even fascist, fascist thing? Maybe. Is it worth funding Israel if we also get Ukraine aid? It really sucks, but like, depending on the ratio of money being delivered, I think that's usually acceptable because Ukraine really, really needs money and Israel yeah, doesn't. Uh, don't forget Taiwan aid was in there too. Monetarily, kind of like um, a virtue signal thing. Israel already has a ton of, of 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 people and weapons and ammunition they run low on some types like iron dome uh you know replenishing but in terms of like raw firepower ukraine needs it a lot more against russia than israel does against hezbollah or hamas still it's not great a u.s official says the white house was perplexed by what it sees as an overreaction by netanyahu two hours after uh netanyahu announced he canceled the delegation conservative minister gideon Saar. What a Star Wars ass name said he is resigning and his party is leaving the emergency government. That's interesting. A veteran Israeli minister who joined Netanyahu's emergency unity government after Hamas's October 7th attack said he's been resigned after not being included in the highest level war cabinet. So he's been sidelined then. I wonder if him leaving is going to uh, open the path for more relatively moderate net, uh, or sorry, uh, is, uh, Israeli no. politicians to leave. Saar was once a rival to Netanyahu in the right wing of the Kud party before joining a more centrist bloc led by former military chief Benny Gantz. Uh, entered the emergency government. Now to become a member of the small form distributing war cabinet. Yeah, all two of them. Yeah, I don't I don't know how many moderates there are in the emergency government. His resignation did not come as a surprise that Saar had broken up the alliance with Gantz earlier this month. Okay. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. That well, not to say it's not a big deal. Maybe it's not like an unexpected. You know, it's it's it's, it's it was obviously going to happen. Centrist is a bit light. Is the Israeli version of centrist the American far right? Centrist is always a relative. Here we term, go again right? with the scales. Yeah. It's also worth pointing out, of course, that stop measuring even if the Israeli right. government Fucking is morons lunatics. You know. The average, it, even though the average Israeli citizen is also like 50% Hitler, basically, Netanyahu is very unpopular. So the more people indicate public, yeah, uh, you, you know, the more, not unpopular. more people distance themselves from Netanyahu. Alphabet's Google was fined $271.7 million by the French competition watchdog on Wednesday. The regulator said it punished the firm for breaches of EU intellectual property rules in its relationship with media publishers. 
It's also cited concerns about the company's AI-powered Bard, since rebranded as Gemini. Google mm-hmm. has pledged not to contest the facts as part of settlement proceedings, according to the regulator. It further said the company proposed a number of remedies to certain shortcomings. The fine is linked to a copyright dispute in France over online content. The case was triggered by complaints from some of France's biggest news organizations, including Agence France Press, or AFP. The dispute seemed resolved two years ago when Google dropped its appeal against a fine of more than $500 million at the end of a major investigation. But on Wednesday, the watchdog said Google violated the terms of four out of seven commitments agreed in the settlement agreement. That included conducting negotiations with publishers in good faith and providing transparent information. The watchdog in particular cited Google's AI chatbot Bard. Again? Uh, this is PBS. I Welcome to, see- to the news hour. There okay. is a public break tonight between the United States and Israel after the U.S. refused to veto a U.N. Security Council resolution calling for an it's immediate It's going to be the same information. I just wanted to see how PBS Israeli hit Prime the Minister angle. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accused the U.S. of changing its position on the war in Gaza and canceled a planned visit of his top aides to Washington. Oh, what a disappointment. Oh, I'm sure everybody's so disappointed. Nick, what is it that happened today that led to this very public disagreement? The UN Security Council today, for the first time in more than five months of war, demanded a ceasefire in Gaza. And it did so because, as you just said, the U.S. abstained on a vote. Resolution 2728, quote, demands an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan, respected by all parties, leading to a lasting and sustainable ceasefire, and also demands the immediate and unconditional release of all the hostages. So while we keep up that text, just a few points. One... The holy month of Ramadan is already halfway over, too. The word Mm -hmm. lasting was replaced because the U.S. asked for it rather than the quote, than the word permanent. Uh, And three, that paragraph there refers to a ceasefire and hostage release. I was was partly right. I was partly right. I was trying to remember what it was. There you go. Thanks, Mm -hmm. PBS. Same paragraph. That's what it was. Earlier draft allowed those two things to be split. And that is what. Uh, the reason why the U.S. abstained today, according cool. to U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Lyndon Thomas Green. Great. Thanks, PBS. Ah, oh, Kamala jump scare. Critics are going after Vice President Kamala Harris after oh my she God, warned is this, Israel why do we need about so much fucking fanfare? Gaza. She warned. Right. Like, you know, I'm like when you go to the movies and it's like it's like you go on the popcorn ride. You probably don't mm. have that in Australia. Did you have the popcorn mm. ride? You go to the movies and it's like, welcome. And then it's like, go look at the lobby, look at the Coca Cola projects and uh, buy popcorn. And sure. it's like, you're like a, it's like a roller coaster thing. But it was made in like the 90s, but they still play it in front of uh, Regal Cinemas today, which is, is it just I, like a video I, thing. Yeah, it's like a shitty CGI thing, but it's like, I think it's, it I was like really cool. Do something like that. It was really cool point. when it first came out, though. Yeah, I, I think The Simpsons did so because it sounds vaguely familiar, but we never had anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I think The Simpsons did a parody of of it at some point, and that's, that's the only it. Thing just reminds me of that remember. type of fanfare. Yeah. Like, it's like look at this whole graphic screen that they yeah. have to have here. This curved graphic screen that they're not even going to use. <laughs> it's just for the pan in shot after uh-huh. they did a fucking flash thing. Super fucking expensive, too, I guarantee it. She seemed to suggest a red line with this advice to our greatest ally in the Middle East. Here it is. We have been clear in multiple conversations and in every way that any major military operation... Uh, and allegedly Russia Kamala and Biden clash hard have... on this. And Kamala really? is way, way to the... Biden is too pro-Israel and Kamala is the other way. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that Kamala is against Israel. Study the maps. There's nowhere for those folks to go. Are you ruling out that there would be consequences from the United States? I am ruling out nothing. Social media media lit up, as you might imagine. Here's one shameful. Another one of the world's How many comments? Great I don't give like a fuck. This Twitter's not a real place. How many- <laughs> we are so blessed. Yeah. How many interactions? And this kick means rocks, nothing. Kamala. 
Israeli Prime Minister they put Benjamin that, that was the headline. Kick rocks. Okay, so hang on. Now we're done with this. I just want to pause and break down what this story was, okay? We have yet to see a reporter even on screen. Mm -hmm. Okay? And what does it say? It says, Kamala Harris torched. Literally, it's them reporting that people on social media, one guy who knows how many likes that post got, told her to kick rocks. Mm -hmm. in response to her saying very neutral speech well you could literally look this up and see bro how much interaction it has okay let me but the let me point just, is, is that this that. is an entire story framed around they literally put mm -hmm. it in the title kick rocks so who yeah. maligned israel oh three people on twitter <laughs> hold on i actually blame kamala very curious I'm curious about the interactions. So you could just type in kick rocks, comma, Kamala, and it would probably come up. Because <laughs> there's no way more than one person has typed that in, right? Got it. So it was a retweet. It got 2.6 thousand views, three reposts, 46 likes, and a bookmark. Oh, it was literally a retweet of somebody else's. Bro, 46 likes, mm -hmm. a single bookmark. Epic, yeah. bro. This guy has 66.6K. Yeah, those are fake. <laughs> those are not real. <laughs> oh, but he's a columnist and author at the Daily Wire. Oh, he's got, he's a contributor at Fox. That's why he's there. <laughs> That makes They put sense. my tweet on the big screen. <laughs> I'm my career is looking up now. <laughs> Who is not asking for hers or anybody else's permission? It is impossible okay, to defeat the sheer evil by time. leaving it intact in Rafa. As in ancient times, like our brothers, we are also united. We are fighting and will be victorious. Uh, Macarena. Maybe this helps. Here is AOC on the House. Um, but I think that the, it's a smart tactic. Here, here's that speech. Mr. Speaker, I know a man, a decent man, who said that preventing genocide is an achievable goal, a goal that requires a level of government organization and engagement that matches Ooh. in its intensity, the the brutality, and efficiency required to carry out mass killing. Is she using a Joe Biden quote? That would be fucking awesome. If she quoted Joe, Joe Biden while he's selling weapons to Israel. <laughs> that would be awesome. Too often, these efforts have come too late. Well, I just want to point out After how American, the, best the American political system works, right? Yeah. So Sh Schumer meets directly with Biden. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's his role, right? So Schumer and Biden clearly had to have discussed it's time to start cranking the rhetoric out, right? Uh -huh. And then Schumer, and Schumer discusses... Who was better to be the head on the block? Yeah, well, the he's block. the highest ranking Jewish member of the government. Yeah. So, and he's also a, the one of the biggest pro-Israel guys, too, from New York mm. as well, yeah. right? Um, so then that goes down and it starts the, like... Democrats in Congress basically get the green light from Schumer that it's like going down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a trickle effect. Yeah. It's the only time trickle down actually works. Yeah. <laughs> and least costly opportunities to prevent them have been missed. The man that said that was then vice president and now president Joseph Biden. I fucking called it. And he was right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I rise to say that such a time is now. That's awesome. <laughs> As we speak in this moment, 1.1 million innocents in Gaza are at famine's door. A famine that is being intentionally precipitated through the blocking of food and global humanitarian assistance by leaders in the Israeli government. 
This is a mass starvation of people engineered and orchestrated following the killing of another 30,000, 70% of whom were women and children killed. There is hardly a single yeah. hospital left. Yeah, it was and literally this is all accomplished. Much of this of bombing, accomplished. Or, uh, bombing Serbia. Like, think about like, um, hear the language she's specifically using as well. Yeah. She's no, it's, literally it's, like it's, laying it's, out and presenting the case yeah. point by point for why it leads up to genocide. But like, yeah, it needed to happen much. Fucking well, you earlier. can tell that she's been waiting to fucking come yes. out and go on the floor and be able to do this. Yeah. With U.S. resources and weapons. If you want to know what an unfolding genocide looks like, open your eyes. It looks like the forced famine of 1.1 million innocents. It looks like thousands of children eating grass as their bodies consume themselves while trucks of food are slowed and halted just miles away. It looks like good and decent people who do nothing or too little, too late. It is against United States law to provide weapons to forces who block United States humanitarian assistance. Is that actually a thing? And that is exactly what is happening right now. Huh. So much so that the president himself stated during Impeach the him. State of the Union Impeach that the United him. States must and will be building its president own Kamala. port to let aid through. It will be too late. The time is now to force compliance with U.S. law and the standards of humanity and fulfill our obligations to the American people to suspend the transfer of U.S. weapons to the Israeli government in order to stop and prevent further atrocity. Honoring our alliances does not mean facilitating mass killing. We cannot hide from our responsibility any longer. Blocking assistance from one's closest a, allies to starve a million genocide. people. She, she definitely mm. wrote genocide there originally. It was like, don't <laughs> implicate the U.S. government in genocide. Got to roll that one back. <laughs> that should have been facilitating not, genocide, though. Yeah. You can give it the concept. Yes, I can yell at her for getting for not saying it there. I guess. Sure. We have a responsibility to prove the value of global democracy, enshrined in the upholding of civil society, rule of law, and commitment to human and civil rights. This is not just about Israel or Gaza. This is about us. The world will never be the same. And we will never be the same. And we must write our story in this moment of what it means and who we are as Americans. And our story must be not that we were good men who did nothing. You're a woman. But that we were a committed democracy you know that did something. Do you know what she's invoking when she's saying good men who did nothing? Um... I've heard it before, but I can't specifically it's remember. all that, that is necessary for evil to exist. Mm. It's for good it's men, for to, good do men to do nothing. Yeah. Who, what was that from? I'm looking at it. Uh, <laughs> stolen from Ayn Rand. No, Ayn Rand stole it <laughs> from someone else, though, basically. Oh, uh, did she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's this old guy, Edmund, falsely equivocated to Edmund Burke. Okay. Uh -huh. French Revolution. It's uh, falsely appropriated to the French Revolution. Mm. Where is it from, though? I don't know. Not important. Doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, I'm looking it up. Sure. We got it. If you find it, let us know. And we <laughs> must prove that now. With that, I yield back. Thank you. Cool. Okay. okay, that was a good speech. Well done, ASA. I'm glad they're finally stepping the rhetoric up.
Anything else before we go to the last one? The one you wanted to watch? Champion. Um, hang on, I'm dealing with a fucking annoying ad blocker. Um, not that I can think of. I, okay. Besides the like um the child tax credit thing, but I don't really care about sure. it that much. All right. Him up because he talks so I really him. like this because mm. the whole time they're fucking calling it a federation. I'm like, okay, but y- there's no top pat where you're a confederacy, guys. Mm. Yeah, and so yeah. The, so Caspian report is just like we're just gonna call them a confederacy, and I was like, <laughs> oh my god, that makes this report so much better. Yeah, it makes so much more sense when you explain it like that too. Regime change is a funny thing. When I one nation stumbles, really others brace for the fall. Afghan- I think it, he was the one who made the Afghanistan video about mm, ISIS yeah. and the Taliban yes, that I was yes, like freaking yes. out on. So yep, yep. this video is much better. Africa is the ultimate testing ground for this hypothesis. What started as an ethnic insurgency in a remote part of Africa soon resulted in international military intervention, which then turned into a series of military coups affecting Mali in 2020, and then Guinea, Burkina Faso, Niger, Chad, and Gabon over the next three years. But revolution fuels revolution. Now, the new military rulers of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso are drawing up plans to form a confederation between them, conjuring a country unlike any other. The terms have yet to be fleshed out, but the new confederation would see diplomatic, economic, and military integration. A mutual defense pact has... Mm. Okay. The... The the origins are debated. So, it's known that he wrote it at one point. Mm. Um, So, basically, what it is, is that's actually a meme. That's hilarious. Nobody knows exactly where it started. That's so funny. That's actually fucking hilarious. Already been signed between the three, while the local lawmakers are considering ways to create a monetary union. But revolution does not happen in white gloves. Violence has surged in all three countries since the military takeovers, (laughs) spreading to coastal neighbors like Ghana, Togo, and Benin. Still more, militant groups have grown in numbers, and the situation is seemingly... Never fucking heard. Is this normal speed? Yeah, well, it's I mean, 1.25 because he speaks slowly. Oh, because he's, I thought he speaks a little fast, but yeah, it's fine. Deteriorating. Considering the circumstances, it's safe to say the objective of the Confederation I is to pool one resources of together. To adopt and- a blue beret. Yes, I agree. I'm going to say the guy with the dark green one because I think the lighter green yeah. works with the lighter red. Yeah, well, the guy's also, yeah. he's got green uh, shoulders as well. Yeah, yeah. And reinforce political power under the respective military hierarchies, notwithstanding the regional downturn. Numbers, after all, nourish nerve. Goose stepping. That doesn't mean anything. You can't just like pull quotes out. <laughs> How? How do numbers nourish nerve? What does that mean? Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Fuck you that spans the long breadth of the northern you know half of Africa. Remember how long it, it runs from Senegal on the Atlantic. Ulalau to explain what the Shahal is in these countries. Yeah. Where, <laughs> it was like five minutes. I was like, I mean, this <laughs> video is fine. Moving on. To, to the Red Sea coasts of Sudan and Eritrea. It is a place contrasted by its adjoining geographies and as such is considered a transition zone. To it's, it's north rocket. lies the arid Saharan desert, a true testament to nature's austerity. To its south lie subtropical savannas, which are more favorable to human settlements and agricultural practices. The Sahel region itself is generally flat, and with few major geographic features, it has historically sustained nomadic herder groups such as the Fulani, Tuareg, Berbers, and others. Surviving in this troubled geography you know the is Tuareg difficult. Are important? Coups, revolution. Uh, I think he goes over it in the video. Do you know who the, Do you know someone is a famous Tuareg? No clue. He's behind everything that's wrong in Africa. Who's be who fucked up Africa? The and, French. And, no, the French. and the, the guy, a specific guy, created all these criminal organizations and militia groups. Oh, I have no idea. Bit bit. 
Dar, dar. Zanga, zanga. Ferd, ferd. So Gaddafi was a tourist. I was not so, thinking about Libya. So he, so that's why, that's why this is important because Gaddafi is a Tuareg. So he, okay. um, like, uh, basically empowers other uh, people of that uh, nation. Okay. They're not the Bedouins, are they? They're, that's more like they're, Iran. They are or... all. They're all migrants, though. They're all that cattle ranching type okay. background. So okay. they're all similar uh, people who have coexisted. Poverty and famine are just a few of the everyday hardships faced by the local nations through which the Sahil runs. But there is strength in numbers, and after having recently distanced themselves from French influence, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger now look to create a political and economic confederation to establish much needed security and stability. However, countless barriers stand in the way. For one, all three nations have significant populations of traditionally nomadic peoples within their national boundaries. The porous nature of these political borders across the Sahel region accommodates pastoral nomadism. Enforcing the national borders too strictly could split the nomadic communities and then violently backfire. So the Sahel governments oh, have look, learned yeah, to I make do without repentance. There's the ethnic map. See the Tuareg yeah. go up into Libya. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. It's funny how they it like clumps and pulls, but it doesn't necessarily spread out. It's kind of interesting. Secure well, national just, borders. Well, On the other hand, however, this, this lack. Too. Yeah. Of what's, border you know, enforcement. What's that one that's a sliver between the? Uh, you know, well, that's just you know because it's. Mm. Yeah, the, between the overlap. The it's the overlap mm. in Niger there. Yeah has also aided the operations of local jihadist groups. As luck would have it, Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger are entirely landlocked. They are the only countries in West Africa that have no direct access to the open oceans. Wait, seriously? Niger and Mali rely heavily on the Niger River that flows through both their countries and their capitals, Bamako and Niamey, respectively. Part of south-central Niger also depends on the Sokoto River watershed, which eventually flows into Niger's southern border with Nigeria. The various oases to the country's south and southeast sustain life in the Zinder and neighboring provinces. Burkina Faso's population centers, meanwhile, sit along the watershed of the Black, Red and White Volta rivers, which empty into Lake Volta in Ghana, making Burkina Faso the most population dense of the three. It is mm -hmm. with these widely incongruous geographic well, considerations also, that's what we that also in have September... to think about, right? Mm -hmm. So, like the place, the, like the all three of the capitals are really right next to each other, right? So, the place yeah. where most of the people are is a very small place, right? And it's not like you know these countries look huge, and it's like, but the thing is, is that they're so close together that they can have delegations with each other mm. pretty easily because Quite they're so easily, close yeah. together. The capitals are so close together. Where the insurgency is, is out in those unpopulated zones. Mm. It's easy. It's easily defensible. The population centers. Exactly. Exactly. Of 2023, military hierarchies governing Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger signed a mutual defense pact dubbed the Alliance of Sahel States. We'll call it the Sahel Confederacy for convenience. But this confederacy yeah, wasn't right? just a spur of the moment here. idea. Its origins trace back to the Libyan civil war of 2011, when former strongman Muammar Gaddafi provided arms to ethnic Tuareg militias in exchange for their support in fighting off the rebels trying to depose him. When the war ended with Gaddafi's death, Tuareg fighters crossed back into Mali. Armed to the teeth and brimming with real-life experience, Tuareg militias swiftly overran the northern parts of Mali. The coup that subsequently materialized in March of 2012 was both a domestic response as well as a direct catalyst for further Tuareg advances. Mm. Meanwhile, that same flow of fighters and weapons bolstered Islamist groups such as Ansardin. After the regular Malian forces were forced out of the north, Tuareg militants and transnational jihadists proceeded to turn their new... So these are just like violent incidents, right? Like nobody lives out up in here, mm. right? So, like, see, it's all these territories right here being being lit up. Um, yeah, all like, the north of Burkina Faso. But then there's, a, if you look at this little resource here, 
you can see like this is like all the area of operations they're in mm -hmm. so okay. like it's and they're almost taken over niger that's that's nuts this is because nobody nobody lives in these regions that they're mm. in right so then they go down into burkina faso to do these attacks but yeah. they're they're like outside they're staging from like mali and mauritania and shit and this is probably an old graphic too who knows how old mm. this is from but it's still you know relevant weapons enough. yeah on each other in response to the mayhem, by October, Mali petitioned the United Nations to send a peacekeeping force led by France to restore security to the region. Yet, despite the UN-led French intervention, the conflict spread to neighboring Burkina Faso and Niger by 2015, as local jihadist groups coalesced and joined forces, many of which organized under a unified jihadist banner and conducted their first attacks outside of Mali. Since then, all three countries, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, have been embroiled in deadly civil conflict centered predominantly in their mutual border regions. The 2020 coup in Mali, the 2022 one in Burkina Faso, and the 2023 coup in Niger all occurred in the backdrop of this persistent insurgence and perceptions of corruption and ineptitude among the country's elected civilian leaders. Security or lack thereof, is one of the reasons why, in December 2023, lawmakers from Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger announced further plans to create a confederal arrangement between their states. In essence, a Sahel Confederacy. The blueprint towards that confederacy... Dude, just, I just love them just being blueprint. like, it's a confederacy. Mm -hmm. They're not going to call it a confederacy, but it's 100% a confederacy. Yes. Bank and a currency union, in addition to the military we alliance say it would already in place. Africa. Economically, the Sahel Confederacy would run into major headwinds. Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger are all part of the political and economic grouping called ECOWAS, or the Economic Community of West African States, but their memberships are currently suspended due to the recent coups. ECOWAS, established in 1975, created a free trade area, a common external tariff, and the right for nationals to settle in each other's countries and establish businesses, at least on paper. ECOWAS aims to fabric. integrate its members by introducing a common currency named the What? I said it's about fabric. The ECO and establishing a more open formalized border system to facilitate freedom of movement. If the Sahel Confederacy comes into being and depending on what specific terms are employed, the result could be the exit of Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger from ECOWAS. The Sahel Confederacy and ECOWAS are unlikely to coexist in the same space. In fact, the military leaders of the Sahel nations announced as much in January 2024. More precisely, proposals for a customs union have been floated, but the Sahel countries are already part of the ECOWAS bloc. To form a new Sahel customs union, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger would have to follow through on leaving the current customs union managed by ECOWAS's common external tariff. Meanwhile, I, the proposition for a currency union this is the would last mean video. abandoning the... How's it going? This is the last video. <laughs> West like, African CFA thing. Frank. Yeah. This is the last Fuck one because uh, we're also, yeah, we're going over world stuff and this sort of explained. Oh, uh, this is just a really good video. Yeah. About a very, um, and like the fact that he was able to get into and like break down the um, tribal group so easily. Because mm -hmm. like, it's uh because like with the graphics it's easier because we like um yeah for we sure. talk uh, like we have like a read copy about him and stuff but mm -hmm. which again all three countries are currently members of as are five other predominantly french-speaking countries in ecowas however despite its ambitious single market ecowas is no clone <laughs> of the european union yeah undemocratic unlike the power parity between france and germany in europe ecowas's population and gdp are dominated by nigeria yes. africa's economic and demographic giant yeah i think intra ecowas video, trade and even trade between nigeria and the, the research you know mm. and it's just something you have to research and you can write and that's why he it's so well done as compared to the afghanistan one because like yeah. the research on it is like all like fronts they present so much stuff mm -hmm. that is like just not reality underneath yes. like the airs that they put on you need like experience yeah need to know what you're looking for mm -hmm. rest of ecowas is relatively low with one notable exception being burkina faso 
which trades heavily with its southern neighbors. Multiple reasons explain the lack of intra-regional trade and development. One is the lack of economic specialization among ECOWAS states in general. Most produce raw materials for export, which, even in advanced extractive economies like Australia, result in little direct benefit for the average citizen. Unfortunately for the Sahil Confederacy, none of the rivers that give them life are commercially navigable, thus restricting their access to global markets through sea and river trade. What little they infrastructure exists in the ECOWAS region, yeah, including the Sahil Confederacy, is geared primarily towards the export of raw materials as opposed to greater interconnection between regional... Seems like they fucked up. Oh, ECOWAS? Oh, come on, it was like a fucking set up by the United States and shit. To no, 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 no. I mean, th these guys, they're like, oh, we're going to do our own thing. Uh, we need help to access water, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a mistake and subnational markets all they need is that that togo place to come in and then they can just use it as a, a thoroughfare well <laughs> that's the thing is if, if senegal um failed its elections it's technically in this region mm, true it's literally it's right, right there, there isn't it yeah, yeah it's next to mali likewise there is a noticeable absence of major rail lines in the region and almost all of them are aimed at connecting yeah. those countries to export markets yeah the kaya abidjan yep. line See, running rails, from northern they don't come from cities to city yeah they go from the mine to the port mm -hmm. you know just like in venezuela yeah. mm -hmm. i was um i was watching it might have been the newest one the top gear guys on their amazon show did a did a one in mauritania and they rocked up in senegal to leave as the all the protests were popping off they're like, oh, we can't go there. We need to go back. <laughs> but that was in, um, they got their, their cars off a train. And they're like, oh, there's a train stop here. Train wasn't stopping. It wasn't stopping for the people. People were getting on, but the train wasn't stopping for people. And then they got their cars off the train because the train is literally just a cargo train. And I guess people just hitch a ride from town to town when they need to. Because the, the trains are kilometers long because it's just full of iron ore <laughs> yeah there's a big uh, like hitchhiking culture in a lot of these countries mm. but also that yes i think they descend from nomadic yeah craters and stuff and yeah. herders mm -hmm. that's why also or like Faso you know, they talk to you about like uh the cow economy no yes i because i talked about how the one general wants to romance uh maloney by giving her a cow I the one crazy, so. the one crazy Ugandan general who loves Georgia Maloney and says he'll give her Ugandan. a cow. That is vaguely familiar, yeah. I think, vaguely, very vaguely. You tell me a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just funny. Takes a couple times for it to really sink in. Yeah, this is this one's been a while, right? <laughs> yeah. So. It's also very obscure. <laughs> so it says, I would give her 100 Nico ca Nicor cows immediately for being <laughs> fearless and true. And so, like, people reacted to this, being like, What the fuck? You'd give her cows? And then he referred, He's like, For my Italian friends, these are Nicor cows, the most beautiful cows on earth. I know Europeans give girls. <laughs> They like flowers, question mark. I've never understood it. In our culture, you give a girl, you like a cow. <laughs> but like the like there's there literally is like um just like how like uh in the west you'll have real estate economies right so they'll just mm -hmm. buy up land yeah they they um will buy cattle and they will not like use them as like a food product oh they just hold them yeah it's currency <laughs> so like the wealthiest people in some of these places are just people who have the most cows i love that that's great <laughs> um but like obviously when you get into the, like the more like um urban areas it's like regular mm. currency shit yeah yeah you know this is just like um some, is like, cattle rustling a big thing it's like bank theft <laughs> uh well so like um south sudan <laughs> specifically because they don't have an economy um mm. they all have ak's to guard their cows oh that's hilarious based 
because like there's so many guns that poured into the country yeah anarcho society Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's also a place um there's a refugee camp and Mm. it just happened to be where the like migrant caravan stopped but it's um it's they live on a graveyard okay that's random yeah Post is one such example. Due to the landlocked nature of the Sahil Confederacy, the only alternative is to transport goods by lorry on difficult, often unpaved roads, regardless of whether the trade is intra-regional or international. At large, Mm -hmm. the Sahil economies suffer from the dual problem of being too far removed from global markets and having little comparative advantage as large segments of the population are still subsistence farmers. This, in effect, commits the countries to a cycle of poverty and insecurity that is mutually reinforcing and difficult to break out of, even under the best of circumstances. If the Sahil Confederacy were to fulfill the pledge to leave the single market of ECOWAS and thereby lose access to the Ivory Coast, it would deal a severe blow to the Sahil economies. For added context, the Ivory Coast is the most significant player in the CFA franc area, accounting for almost two-fifths of the CFA franc zone's GDP, despite having 20% of the population. It's so funny. The local BRVM stock exchange, all, which lists... It's all in, like, one guy's pocket there, you know? Seriously. Oh, my God, yes. Just some rich asshole in a oh, massive mansion. It's, bro, the people, the, the wealth disparity in the Ivory Coast is insane. Mm. Yeah. And it's because he owns the port, I'm guessing? No, it's like the king, basically. The uh, emperor, you know. Sake. <laughs> it's all in the government. Yeah. Okay. It's companies operating throughout the CFA Franc zone is headquartered guy. in Abidjan, yeah. the country's main economic center. This then makes investment in Mali, Burkina Faso, record. and Niger highly dependent mm-hmm. on the financial markets in the Ivory Harris Coast. Maps. I agree. Upping the stakes, Abidjan is also home to West Africa's second largest port, Burkina Faso, and to a lesser extent, Mali, are heavily reliant on these port facilities to export their goods to global markets. The everyday use of the French language for business purposes further amplifies the benefits of integration among the French-speaking states of West Africa. The advantages that Ivory Coast offers the Sahel nations are unmatched within the CFA franc zone and perhaps within the whole so, like, of ECOWAS. If I showed you a picture of this integrating... right there, and I said, what country is this? Show me. I go back one. So the, uh, and I said, what country is this? Uh, I would probably say somewhere in Asia. Maybe like rural Thailand or something. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Very. I smart. wouldn't guess. I wouldn't guess Africa within the CFA franc zone and perhaps within the whole of ECOWAS. Integrating Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger into a single market (laughs) would get off to a slow start. If they leave the ECOWAS market... No. Don't go on another side tangent. I need to go. It's it's just... uh, It's the... What's the island? It's like where there's like a disconnect where the Buddhas or something. Yes, off Sicily. Sicily. It's like a, it's like basically like a ten foot disconnect, but yeah, I guess Sicily. like it's right on like a tectonic plate or something, or like oh the, it's God. literally unable to build a bridge, and That's it's like hilarious. right there. I don't I know specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah but... I was right. It is Sicily. Hey, look, there's a Syracuse in Sicily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God, it is tiny. It is not a big gap. But that's fine. Just use ferries. Yeah. Well, they they that's this is a big thing, is mm. to to build this bridge. But it's it's funny how independent Sicily is as a culture, though, compared to the rest of Italy. It's really interesting. Anyway, market the circumstances would be even worse. The truth of the matter is that the Sahil Confederacy, or any regional organization in general, would need decades to build up the level of economic integration that exists within Mm -hmm. ECOWAS. That is a time frame in which even the best-made plans can go astray. However, while economic integration will take time, military integration usually takes shape at a faster pace. Alas, even in this section, the Sahil Confederacy has dropped the ball.
Even mm -hmm. though the three nations signed a common military alliance in September 2023, no joint exercises have been conducted so far, and no significant steps have been made towards interoperability or an integrated command like that of NATO. This Admittedly, establishing hilarious. or an integrated command like that of NATO. Admittedly, <laughs> establishing interoperability would take more than a few months. But considering how much resources the ongoing jihadist insurgency is eating up, military integration may not be a priority at this moment in time. As a result of the recent coups and the exit of France, the Sahel nations have since enlisted the help of mercenaries working with the Russian private military company Wagner. Under the arrangement, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger exchange natural resources, such as gold, diamond, and uranium oh, look, they, for Wagner uh, equipment they and not notified their own symbols. Just yeah, like now a, it looks like a like a subway sandwich place, a place where you <laughs> get a sandwich, you know? How thus replacing the dwindling French troops and special forces that remained active up until that point. But if lessons from elsewhere are to be learned, Vietnam, Afghanistan and Ukraine, it is that even heavy weapons and high quality training do not guarantee military victory. There are doubts as to whether Wagner can provide even a fraction of the support required to transform the armed forces of the Sahel Confederacy. Been fighting in 2019, ISIS, for example, Wagner mercenaries were employed oh, in Mozambique bro. to fight Not Islam. Just ISIS. In Mali, Al Qaeda has been clapping them too. Really? And they've yeah. not, not been doing well? Uh, they, uh, Al Qaeda took out an entire Wagner base with car oh, my God. A car bomb and took out an entire base. Epic. Yeah. <laughs> Al Qaeda is just more, uh, but like the thing is, is that there is, so if you look there, we talk, me and Ace talk about it all the time, but if mm. you look back, there's like, um, like Wagner massacres where they just kill 200 people in Mali because that's what they're, uh, yeah. that's what they went there for is to just wipe out entire villages mm -hmm. just because like, Wagner specifically. Yeah, just because those yeah. villages might be associated with Daesh. Right. Okay. There's just, yeah, and people there's, people criticize America and fucking literally America. wiping out like there's there's like <laughs> uh, there's like accounts of them like killing two hundred people and like multiple Wild. massacres. Yeah, but ISIS killed you know one hundred and thirty Russians. <laughs> yeah, almost insurgents. That operation turned into a total yeah, disaster, and Mozambique, about Mozambique terminated its contract with Wagner thereafter. What? Nobody talks about Mozambique except mm. us. Yeah, and apparently Caspian Report. Right? We always, me and Ace talk about it all the time because it's the mm. most slept on of like all the slept mm -hmm. on things. Sure. The more time passes, especially as Wagner fails to produce results in the face of jihadism, the less influence both they and Russia will have over the long term. Crazy brutality in doesn't politics. work on jihadism. Crazy. However, the devil is often in the fine. You should have watched Zero Dark Thirty. Violence doesn't work I mean, on extremists. Well, yes, Ace and I talk about it all the time. These guys were made in the prison system through torture. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's meaningless. It does nothing. I don't know what they this, think they're doing. This is this is what creates it. Mm -hmm. It makes it worse. Print. Quite a few confederations have existed in Africa in the past, proposed and actual. None of them succeeded, however, for any length of time. Among these were the Senegambia Confederation between Senegal and the Gambia and the short-lived Mali Federation with Senegal and Mali, respectively. See, Both these unions Senegal fell apart. used to be attached to Mali. Mm -hmm. So that's Part why the... I was worried that Senegal's election going south, like if like a coup grab or something happens. Mm, could go into this sort of thing. Incompatible yeah, political and economic visions the respective lawmakers held frankly unification Who's between previously sovereign right, entities the these guys the al-qaeda the the african insurgency is is something else but the the guy who um orchestrates these bomb strikes he's like um the engineer something what do they call him engineer michael or something it's like engineer mohammed or something but he is like Al Qaeda. They um, contract work, right? So like they have like a really good like uh, sniper. They'll move them to different branches, right? So this mm -hmm. bomb maker, he moves between um, Al Qaeda branches in Africa, mostly Al Shabaab and um, the Al Qaeda uh, Confederacy coalition in West Africa, and like um, 
when we're interviewing Scott, he's talking about it. Like basically a guy came in from Al Qaeda and I think it was in Nigeria and overnight they went into a vehicle born IED. They had no capability of a vehicle born IED and then overnight, boom, they had one. So that's what they do is they actually, they also have a lot of, um, we talk about it a lot with the Scott episode, which is how to save Afghanistan. And then the world, it's a little bit of an earlier episode, but we go through like how they have manuals. I show actual manuals, terrorist training manuals in this and stuff. I also go into a little bit more about it. I think in that Iraq episode too, but Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, they literally will, they offer courses. (laughs) Like they literally offer courses. You can get like scout badges and everything with the jihadi groups. I'm not kidding. It's not easy given the plethora of often long running social, political and economic factors. Pre-union complications do not simply go away just because a new country is created on paper. Worldwide, there are more tried and failed unions than those that still exist to this day. There is no indication yet that the Sahil Confederacy would be any different. Despite seeing over 200 coup attempts between 1958 and 2018, at the dawn of 2019, there were zero African countries where the military yeah. exercised well, direct control been, like, over day to day government. And like, so this expansion of the FBI law that they had where they can do searches on you. Like, that's what they're talking about. It's like back in the day, terrorists were like the only ones using the Internet for international communication like this. You know, now we're just sending dick pics and shit posts all around the world. Before it was just the terrorists. So it was a lot easier for him to track. But like um, like one guy in Britain, they actually arrest him for having one of these manuals. But like you can literally find them online. The FBI mm-hmm. posts them now. Like you can. <laughs> But most of them like aren't, you know, they're in Arabic and stuff. But there's like, um, I like in one of those videos I show their actual chemical weapons training stuff, and uh, the it's like shows how to like make chemical weapons in the manual and stuff. And operations, it's just not practical. Even strongmen like Egypt's Al Sisi have nominally headed Strong civilian man. governments. The result is that direct military government is often here today and gone tomorrow. True. After a formal handover. The military power broker will typically retire to remain a powerful influence over the political environment of the country and leave civilian affairs to the civilians, provided that the civilian government doesn't overstep its bounds. This leeway, granted to a post-transition civilian-led government, could ultimately prove to be the Sahil Confederacy's undoing if the new government and the military don't see eye to eye. Staging a new coup to restore the Confederacy would harm the country's political stability even further, which was the whole point of the Confederation in the first place. If the Sahil Confederacy came into being and the military leadership handed the keys to the civilian overseers, the next democratically elected government could very well renege on the arrangement with the military power brokers. That's precisely what happened in Mali. The military coup in 2020 was followed by another coup less than a year later which goes to show that the long-term stability and political commitment required by a federal arrangement are highly questionable. This places ECOWAS at a dead end. As a geopolitical bloc... It's really funny because I started, like, my first proper article when I started doing my own thing was on Burkina Faso's coup. (laughs) Um, Whooping Russian forces in Africa. I mean... Um... The thing is, is they have a very limited contingent of uh, forces there, limited resources that they're operating with. And like these guys just live out there. So it's uh, it's it's largely what they're up against. But like um, like uh, ISIS in Nigeria, you know, like one of the big things that they're lacking is like proper medical training, stuff like that, that would really um, accelerate them. But there is there's different places like wagner did awful in mozambique that's they got booted out of there and then there's each there's different sections of isis and i swap which is more of the nigerian side of things but it is also um you know it's kind of the entire west african thing at this at this moment it's i think we put it at like basically the best terrorist organization of last year pretty much yeah they're powerful. They're re- mm-hmm. they kill a lot. They kill hundreds of people every week. They're just ECOWAS members can't sit by and allow more coups in their periphery, lest they risk undermining the stability of the common union. So far, economic sanctions have proven ineffective due to the lack of deep intra-regional trade. 
at the same time, attempting a military a intervention against Mali, yeah. Niger, and Burkina Faso would only backfire and create a power vacuum in which jihadists would flourish. Yep. Hence, the only alternative ECOWAS members have is to begrudgingly engage the Sahil nations and try to discourage other militaries from seizing power. But however one looks at it, African integration is fraying. The more countries rebuke their membership in groups like the African Union or ECOWAS, the well, weaker like, uh, the overall system gets. I swap so, literally beat Boko Haram. Like Boko Haram is like mm -hmm. not a thing anymore. They used to be the third most powerful terrorist group for years. Yeah. Go and on. then in the last few years, I swap basically just kicked the shit out of them. And now, mm -hmm. like it's like transitioning to a new war. I think there's a splinter group of Boko Haram or something. We talk about it in that mm -hmm. terrorism tier list. Aces, Ace knows more about this region than I do. Yeah. If the Sahil Confederacy fails at its mission, it will inadvertently leave a legacy for the worse. In effect, it will cast a shadow far longer than its physical stature. I don't know about that. I've been your host, Shirvan, from Caspian Report. So if you haven't yet subscribed, all right. Like, come on. Like, there was, there's already been multiple coups. I don't think it's going to create that big of a vacuum for ISIS. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh no, the government got cooed again again yeah yeah like like at, at this point if a coup coups a coup who gives a shit yeah so i don't know all right let me uh... you're missing it God. but baloney didn't miss it she understands it perfectly <laughs> baloney. Watch. gentlemen 